Factor. And I'm here to talk to you today about how to stop that shiggity, okay? We're gonna use that word because I want you to know the importance of how you stop doing something that's just as important as how you start. Have you ever noticed you do things on a regular basis that make you happy or feel good? It's really hard to stop something, a habit, even if it's not serving you well. You know why? We'll talk about that. But I want to tell you a little bit about me and a little bit about why I can tell you how to stop that. We'll just keep using that word because <laughs> I don't want to cuss because that's a habit I've been trying to break. But I'm an organizational psychologist. I work with people and the organizations they work in to help them begin doing things that serve their business goals, personal and interpersonal goals better. And a common denominator to my work has always been, people always want to start something without stopping something. And two things going in the opposite direction, you're not gonna get anywhere, right? So I like to teach people, start at the beginning. What do I need to stop? What do I need to stop doing? Before you start thinking about what you wanna start. Because that's the fun stuff to think about new things instead of how to stop doing old things that aren't serving us well. Now, there's a lot of studies out about our habits. And the fact that 60% of our time is spent doing things on autopilot. But the great thing is that brain of yours, that wonderful organ we have as a brain, it is set up as a single processor, which means it likes to do things one at a time. And it will recognize a new thing and give you all this energy and thinking power and focus to start something new versus stopping its auto program that's just running around in our minds. And experts have said there's three things to a habit. The first thing is a reminder. There is something that triggers what you are doing like when we learn to tie our shoes, most of us remember what our mom taught us, how that shoe, you sit down, make a rabbit ear, rabbit ear, turn it around, pull it through. How many of us learned to tie our shoes that way? You don't have to think about that, do you? Your brain doesn't have to make you think of those steps. And if it does, it processes it at the speed of light. That's because you remember. And memory is a great thing. That's a whole other talk that I love to talk to you about. But today, let's focus on that second R. It's routine. You perform a habit by doing something over and over and over again until the brain, that single processor, sticks it back there and it's just on autopilot. It's routine. It's what you do every morning. It's what you do every day. It's how you speak to yourself every day. You form a routine that's very hard to break without some of the things I'm going to teach you later on in this talk. And the final part of that R, there's three R's, reminder, routine, and then there's reward. Did you know your brain is focused on rewarding you for anything you do, even if it's a bad habit? There is a juicy reward in whatever you're doing. And that juicy reward is why you keep doing the same things over and over and over again. 
And the funny thing I've learned in doing the work that I do, that reward exists globally, corporately, in families. We develop routines that have a habit of rewarding us for whatever we do. And that's where we're going to focus today. How do I stop doing that? How do I stop doing things? Do you know what stop means? Stop means to cease all motion. And the best way to stop doing something is to stop. Did you know that? Did you catch that? So many times we want to figure out something when it's a very simple answer to change your habits and to stop doing things that don't serve you well and start doing things that you want to. So let's get into it. First thing I want you to do is to start tracking your habits. What do you do every single day without fail? And how do you do it? Is it something that gives you the rewards that benefit you? Are they things that subtract and detract from what you really, really want? But you keep doing them because of the three R's. Tracking your habits is as simple as getting up in the morning. What is the first thing you do? Because that's going to stick with you. And that's your most rewarded thinking. Is what you think about when you wake up, when your eyes open in the morning, what's going on in your mind? Can I tell you something? Many of us have extremely negative self-talk. And inside our heads, we are reinforcing those habits that don't serve us well. We're reinforcing the things that we do because they're a habit and they're comfortable and we get the reward from doing it and we don't stress ourselves having to stop doing that thing. And you know what that habit is and you know what those thoughts are. So start to track those things with that first thought of the day and don't complicate it. Just think about what you're thinking about and think about and track your habits. The second thing I want you to do is focus on one thing about that habit. Whatever it is that you want to stop doing, focus on one thing. A lot of times there's a reward in focusing on everything, getting overwhelmed, stopping, or procrastinating. And I got taught in a business class once, how do you eat a frog or an elephant one bite at a time? You can do anything if you try it one step at a time. Yes, there's a lot of teaching about goal setting that tells you envision your life 10 years ahead. Well, many of us need to stop that sh because you can't even figure out today. So stop that and focus on one thing, okay? Can you do that? And then the second, third thing, I want you to start telling yourself yes more than no. You wanna know why? Because your brain is wired for reward and habitual things. It never pays attention when you're going, no, 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 no. Stop that. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. That's not what the brain pays attention to. It pays attention to the yes. So ask yourself, how many times do I tell myself yes during the day? And I'm not talking about rewarding bad behavior. I'm talking about how many times do you stop with the negativity of no? and start with the positivity of yes. Telling yourself yes will get you to do more things that bring you those great rewards than anything telling yourself no. And I know that sounds opposite 
the stopping that shh. But we're talking about habits versus how we think and how we face our goals. Because I'm not about goal setting. I stopped that shh a long time ago. I'm about goal meeting, achievement. And I have learned if I focus on one thing and that one thing only, I'll reach a good conclusion. I've learned if I tell myself yes to what I want instead of no to what I don't want, my focus is different. There's so much reward in yes. Okay? Tell yourself yes to what you want to do or what you want to stop doing. Find your yeses more than your no's. Mindfulness, having reminders of what it is you're trying to achieve. And I do this in one of three ways. Besides my focus, I leave post-it notes. I write myself notes. I journal, which again, I don't want to give you the normal, usual things you hear out there that everybody is saying, but yes, there's power in the brain, writing, hand-eye coordination. You remember things better when you write them down. And what you write down normally will get tracked. So practice of mindfulness, being in tune to what it is you really want, your yes, and the habit you want to form more than the habit you want to stop. Keep your mind focused on achieving. And that gives you the reward that helps you keep going. Mindfulness, there's so many ways to learn how to be mindful that work for you. How I'm mindful may not work for you. I do journaling. I do post-it notes. I talk to myself in positive reinforcing ways. I have a habit of stopping negative thinking, negative talking, and negative people. I keep my environment positive. Would it surprise you to know I rarely listen to the news? I stopped that sh a long time ago too because I found it programmed my mind away from being mindful of my goals and what serves me best and what I want to achieve. It distracted me to all chaos and, and lack of peace that's in the world. So I stopped it and I became a much more positive, much more focused, much more achieving individual. Now here's a big one. Our next tip to help you stop that shh, recover from slip ups. Here's what catches most of us. We want perfection and we're imperfect. Did you catch that? We want perfection while we're imperfect. Perfection is something that you need to just leave out of your whole entire mind and behaviors. You will never achieve perfection. Whatever perfect life, goal, whatever habit you want to form that you think will make everything perfect and right and good, stop this. Shit. Stop it because it's not real. Perfection isn't real. What is real is that you can get over what isn't perfect. And you can get somewhere, even if it's not perfect, simply by starting what you want to do and stopping what doesn't serve you well. You can then get to less than perfect but you'll reach your goals. Recover from slip ups. Stop beating yourself down when you mess up. A fail is just a reward you didn't like because you learned something. I'm either going to learn, or I'm going to earn, but I'm definitely going to recover. Get up 
from your slip up. Stop focusing on the no and the negative. Start focusing on recovering from a slip up. And you know when you slip up, like you try to stop smoking. And then something happened that stressed you. And that day you had a cigarette or two or three. You know what you can do? Okay. This was not a good day for the habit I'm trying to form. But you can't get up from that when you start beating yourself down and you load yourself full of guilt and shame. Those are horrible emotions to keep swirling around for your goal setting and goal meeting. So recovery means you tell yourself, yes, this was a slip up. And yes, I can recover. And yes, I can stop this. And yes, I will start again. Okay, so recover from a slip up. Do that best by looking at your successes. Do you ever pat yourself on the back? Do you ever toot, toot, toot your own horn? Do you ever tell yourself, go girl, you did that, you did that. Do you ever talk to yourself like that? If you don't, I want you to start. And if you do, I want you to increase it. We do more succeeding by succeeding than we do by being negative and down about things that don't work out the way we want to. And here's something I tell people I help a lot. How much in your life goes exactly the way you plan? Just think about that for a minute. How much in your life goes exactly the way you plan? If I'm thinking about that, rarely. I can't think of the last time I made a plan and it went exactly the way I wanted it to. I just moved. And let me tell you something, nothing went according to plan. Not the timing, not where things were. I mean, nothing went according to plan, but I learned to accept it and celebrate the success. I'm moved, I'm in a beautiful home. I'm in a beautiful neighborhood. I'm enjoying being in a new environment with all the new habits I have to learn how to do things in this environment versus where it was. And that leads me to my final thing of helping you stop that shh. And that is change your environment. That is a good thing to do to break habits, to stop doing shh that doesn't serve you well and start doing the shh that does. It's to change your environment. Now, a lot of us can't move. We're placement and that's okay because you know this wonderful brain I told you about earlier, it can take you new places without your feet ever having to move. You can go somewhere new in your mind just by simply changing your habits. You can change your environment by simply doing things differently. I have a regular habit of not going the exact same way someplace every time. Because remember that autopilot I talked about earlier, how the brain likes a challenge? It will give you all of those juicy rewards and make you feel better when you simply change your environment. Change the direction you go somewhere. Change hands when you're using your mouse on your computer every day. Don't always use the same hand. Brush your teeth with the opposite hand. Now I do have a little bit of an advantage because I am ambidextrous, but for those of you who aren't, you can still learn to use your opposite hand. Do you know that changes your whole brain's environment and functioning? It's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's not what we normally do. Let me do this. You can change your environment by simply doing dinner different. If you're used to grabbing a meal, sitting down on the couch in front of the TV, 
take that meal outside. Go sit on your balcony or your backyard. Eat your meal slowly, chew slowly. All of these things change your environment and you don't ever have to move your feet. And it will help you as I go down my list again to tell you how to stop that shh. And you stop doing that shh by ceasing on motion. Start out by tracking your habit. What are you doing all the time that doesn't serve you well or help you reach your goals? Focus on one thing that you want to change, that habit that you want to stop that shh. And stop it for good. Tell yourself yes. Remember the brain works best in positivity. You change yourself best in positivity. In yeses. In reward. The brain doesn't like negative. It pushes you away from it. It pushes you to lack focus. Be mindful. Of what you need to stop. Focus in on reminders, focus in on your successes. Focus in when you have a good day doing things that serve you well, thinking well, and feeling good, exercising, eating right, sleeping, drinking your water, and being at peace with other people, even if they're not at peace with you. Track your successes, recover from your slip ups, remember, Failure isn't fatal unless you want it to be. Unless you want that to be where you get to stop doing something that might be hard. And you can do hard things. Tell yourself yes to that. I can do this hard thing. And then the final thing, change your environment. Stop doing things the same way expecting different results. I know you've heard that quote before, but do you realize that's what habits are? It's doing things the same way so you get the same results. So when you want different results, stop that, sh change your habits. And these are some things you can do that will help you. I know they will help you. They're the things that I do to regularly reach my goals. And you can do it too, because nothing I said is hard. It just takes effort to stop that shh. Cease all motion so you can do things that serve you well. I'm Cheryl Carr, your work doctor. I enjoy being able to spend this time with you. There are ways that you can reach me if you need help stopping that shh. Just get in touch with me. I can help you. So much love, y'all. So, so, so much love. Y'all see, I had to put my hair up. I had to put a knot up here. I'm like, woo, woo. Like, she took all the edges. Let me let her chop my neck, okay? <laughs> I need all of it. Um, Dr. Cheryl Carr is a gym, y'all. She is in the comments. I see y'all. She's in Guatemala. Okay. She's in Guatemala doing all the things. The pictures are absolutely beautiful. I'm telling all her business now. Excuse me, Dr. Cheryl. Her, her hubby surprised her with a, a, a trip. Okay. So she's doing all the things. Um, so I'm not sure that she can come to the stage because the tech is kind of janky. Um, I see you out there, Dr. Cheryl, but I don't see you behind the stage. I know we talked about this already yesterday, already yesterday, and that you probably can't come up. <laughs> but if you can hear me, okay, just hit the hand button under the stage. It looks like you're on a laptop, but I can see from my end that your your mic and your, uh, your video is not working, okay? But we'll try because I love you. I love you. Um, y'all, that was so, 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 so beautiful while we are waiting to see, right, whether Dr. Cheryl can, um, raise her hand at least to come up. I want to hear some of your, some of your reactions to that, right? Um, some of your raw reactions. Again, leadership is about getting comfortable with the sound of your own voice, right? And all of you are leaders. So submit, 
Hey, Dr. Cheryl is here. I was just about to call your name, Samia, but we, we have the goat in the house. Hold on, let me let her come up. Wait, but Dr. Cheryl. Okay, I see you in the chat. I see you in the chat. You found a Wi-Fi spot. Can you hit the hand button at the bottom of the screen? Because your profile behind the screen doesn't work. If nothing else, though, Dr. Cheryl, because you are here, I could at least try to hit the hand button, though, under the stage if you see it. Um, if nothing else, I can at least put the questions on the screen. Oh, here we go. Oh, no. Okay, yeah. Now you have to hit the hand button, Dr. Cheryl. Something about the setup right now is janky. Maybe you need to refresh. And then if you see on your laptop, Dr. Cheryl, a camera in your browser, that means you're not, you're not allowed video, right? If you see like a camera button, in your browser at the top right, it means you haven't allowed video. So just hit it to try to get it to, you know, allow. But she's in the house, y'all. She's in the house. Uh, okay, so Mia, back to you, mama. Uh, what are your reactions to this? Pulling you up. Just blown away. I, I don't even know. Like, I'm like, whoa, what just happened? <laughs> that was amazing um i yeah i'm gonna have to take some time just to sit just with the whole summit period but there are certain ones and this this is one of the ones i'm gonna have to take time to just sit um with and i would like if we have time i would like for a little bit more of elaboration on how I can tell myself yes more than no. My brain was like, what are you talking about? And then if she gets a chance to elaborate on being at peace with people, even if they're not at peace with you, um, that would that would be helpful for me if we get the chance to go over that. Oh, there she is. <laughs> I can't hear you. <laughs> can you Thank you. Okay, now I can hear you. Uh, we're so happy to have you, Dr. Cheryl. Uh, you are glowing, so I can tell your vacation is good, and hubby is taking good care of you. Uh, we have a question from Samia. Samia, can you re please repeat the question directly for Dr. Cheryl? Just the question itself. Go ahead, Samia. Oh, maybe she can't. Can we lose her? Um, so maybe you're on mute. All Can right, so I'm gonna try to. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead, Samia. Okay. It's fast because we have another session coming up. Really fast. Okay. Okay. Can you elaborate, whichever one's gonna be quicker, on how to be at peace with people, even if they're not at peace with me, or if the quicker answer is, can you elaborate how I can tell myself yes more than no? Whichever one's going to be quicker. Um, I'll try to be quick about both. First of all, having over responsibility for how people act is what lets us feel like we can't be at peace with them. What they do is on them. You're only responsible for yourself and how they respond to you is their responsibility. So it's dismissing that responsibility for people being at peace with you that will help you to be at peace, whether they are or not, if that okay. makes sense. It's yes. it's something you do inside. It's it's not something that happens outside of you. The okay. second thing about how do you, what was the question again? I want to make sure I answer it. How to tell um, yourself yes? Yes, more than no. Okay. That goes back to training yourself to focus on what you want more than what you don't want. We are gravitate towards negativity. That's how we're groomed. That's why I don't listen to much news. I don't read much newspapers. I don't fill my mind full of stuff that's not helpful. If you do that, if you have a regular diet of acquiring gossip, information, negativity, things like that, that's going to put you in a negative state. And when you're in a negative state, you're always saying, no, 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 no. It's never positive. If you want to start telling yourself yes more, focus on what you want to happen 
less than what you don't want to have. It really is a mind thing. Okay. And if you track yourself, you will find you tell yourself yes to what rewards you out of habit. You have to learn how to tell yourself yes to what you need to change because of the reward that will come when you get to your goal. You have to go through the journey. Okay. And it, it's not fun and it's tough. And few people do this inner work. We like the comfort. And if you get my little book, Stop That Ish, which you can find. I put the link tree in my chat. Please go get that book. It's going to teach you how to think outside of the comfort zone. And I hate cliches, y'all. I hate cliches because it turns your mind on autopilot and you start telling yourself cliche shiggity. Um, I'm trying to stop cussing. Uh, it's a hard habit to break um, because it just feels better. Sometimes you have to meet people where they are. And sometimes I shock people when I cuss them. But um, <laughs> learn to focus on what you want and learn to tell yourself yes more to the things you like and want in your life, you know, regardless of other people. Then you'll start telling yourself yes more than no. Thank you. Okay. Yes, ma'am. You're so welcome, sis. You can do it, too. All right. Thank you so much, Samia. Great question. Uh, I'm so happy we got to see your beautiful face. I love you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> that was amazing, Doc. Y'all want to see Guatemala? Yeah, look, Y'all want to see Guatemala? Mad. Mad. I'm going to They're going to be mad at me now about, about the next session. <laughs> Here. <laughs> there. Oh, Guatemala, y'all. Yeah. Tell her something. <laughs> yes, more than no. Yes. We love you. We yes, love you so I said much. yes. Thank you so much, Doc. Oh, thank you. Enjoy your trip. Bye. Bye, y'all. Bye. Uh, she's a, a gem, y'all. She's a gem. All right. So I told y'all that we have uh, docs in the lineup today. Legit docs in the lineup today, and the next session is no different. The next session is coming from Dr. Tamara Beckford, and she is speaking on self-care, your superpower. I'll see you in the next session. Hey. Could self-care be your superpower? Mm. Well, let's figure this out, right? So who would have thought that me, Dr. Tamara Beckford, an emergency medicine physician, would be here talking about self-care? Let me tell you something. Now, those of you guys, you kind of have an idea of the whole path that it takes to become a doctor, right? You have the high school, and then you go to college, and then you go to medical school, then you do your training in residency, and then it's real life, right? Now, one of the things about this whole process is that you're going, 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 going. For those of you guys who remember P. Diddy, can't stop, won't stop, well, that's me, just going, going, going. And then I'm in emergency medicine. For those of you who've ever been in the ER, one thing, right? Oh, I tell you, I can taste the jerk chicken. I get a taste of oxtail. The Akian saltfish and washing it down with some Ooh, refreshing coconut water. Mm, mm, mm. Then boom, pandemic. Don't leave the country. As a matter of fact, don't leave your house. Most of you were quarantined, but those of us like me who worked in the ER, boom, had to keep going, going, right? And then I had to realize that if I just kept going like that, I would not make it. I need to figure out another way to do this thing and in comes self-care, right? So I started looking around and I recognize a lot of my colleagues are getting burnt out. Why? They're going and going and going. So I decided 
that now that we are shut down, right? Now that people are buying their Peloton bikes because everybody's ready to work on their body from the outside in, I'm going to work on mine from the inside out. And that's how I began incorporating self-care, right? Self-care is, there are three pillars to this whole thing. It's aligning your mind, your body, and your spirit, right? So for me, working on my mind from the inside out was very important, right? It's just something different. When you wake up and you're reading your email, reading social media, reading the text message from your family, that's just getting you very upset. And you are responding. You're not responding. And as a matter of fact, you are just reacting to everything. Everybody's getting on your nerves. They're pissing you off. That's the opposite of entering into your day. So I decide to do it the other way around. When I wake up, I am inputting positive information into my mind. I'm putting devotionals. I'm doing gratitude practice. As soon as I wake up, before the phone messages, before the social media, before the email from my job asking me, where is this particular thing? I don't know. I didn't take it. Why are you asking me? You're getting me upset. So do I want to go through my day being pissed off? Or do I want to go through my day knowing that I'm in charge of how my mind works, right? That's self-care. So I invest in my mind. Motivation, inspirational quotes, stories. There's just a difference in your mind and the way you approach your day. When you're reading the inspirational story of Michael Todd talking about crazy faith and how he got the keys to the transformational church in Tulsa, Oklahoma, right? Your day is just different. When you enter into your day after hearing the motivational stories of Lisa Nichols, when she was told that she was the worst writer in her class, and then she moves from that to becoming a best-selling author of multiple, multiple, multiple books? Really? Now, when you have all of that in your mind, you are entering into your day. Your day does not enter into you. So you use that and build that foundation for your day. That's part of the self-care. So that's working on the mind. Now we know self-care is alignment of mind, body, and spirit. So we've talked about the mind. Now we're going to talk about the body, right? So self-care incorporates movement. Now you notice I did not see exercise and I was intentional. Now, some of you got your Peloton bikes, right? Your team Cody, right? Cody is talking about the 888, right? Eight ounces of water, make sure you get eight hours of sleep every day. And you're drinking those eight ounces of water eight times a day, girl. Is that you, team Cody? Or are you a team Tunde? where she's just giving all this motivation before she gets on that bike and you get that ride of your Peloton life, right? Or maybe your movement just incorporates getting your family walking around the block, right, briskly and spending time with your family, right? Is that your movement? Movement is just so important. Why? Many of you guys were stuck on Zoom. You were stuck in Zoom meetings from the morning till night. You just went Zoom crazy. Well, how do we combat all of that? Movement, right? Movement is so important because it releases all those beautiful endorphins, those beautiful hormones. It's that runner's high that you get, but you don't even need to run. Some of you, like I said, with Team Peloton, but the other you, maybe your movement was not just organic exercises, but dancing. What about the soca people? Yes, all my West Indian passe, all my people love the soca. Or maybe you were zook, right? All my Haitian masse, were you zooking? Or were you there doing all those other dance? Like for me, the dance hall, yes. Getting that heart rate up, right? Getting that sweat, all of that helps to release those beautiful hormones, endorphins. And it's so important. It's important that we know that exercise, it is so important that the American Heart Association 
it recommends 150 minutes of exercise per week. 150 minutes. So you don't have to do it in the standard way, going to the gym. Maybe you're running. Maybe you're biking. Maybe you're dancing, like we said. Any way that it is, get that movement in. Release those endorphins. It's also important because it helps with another part of self-care, which is sleep. But we'll talk about that another time, right? So now we have talked about the body. We've talked the importance of movement. Now let's get to the third pillar of self-care, which is alignment of the spirit. Now I know you're sitting here thinking, what? Spirit? What is she talking about? All right, let me tell you this. Let's get back to Sophia from the Golden Girls. Picture this. I not only work in the emergency room, but I only work at night. Mm -hmm. So I work night shift only. So one of the last shifts of my week is usually on Wednesdays. Now, if anybody has like not heard of Wednesday being hump day Wednesday, you have had your head in the sand. Wednesdays traditionally have been one of the most challenging days of a work week. And mine is no different. I finished working that Wednesday morning. I get my kids from school to Wednesday afternoon. But one of the most pleasant days of my week is Wednesdays because I have this thing that I look forward to. I get to meet up with like-minded people every Wednesday evening. That renews my spirit, right? So although I'm the most tired on Wednesdays, I have something to look forward to. Yes, I get to bond with people who are like-minded people who are just as crazy as I am. Now, everyone else looks at me like I'm crazy, but these people look at me like, you too? Yes, that's the alignment of spirit, right? So do you have people who are thinking like you, who are going places like you? You know that your network is your net worth, right? So who are you aligned with? That's the spirit portion of the self-care process, right? So on Wednesdays, stressed out by Wednesday night, feeling fine. Why? Alignment of spirit. Now, being able to align your spirit does not mean that I'm sitting here and judging you for those who you were hanging out with. No, but you do have to ask yourself this question. How have you felt over this past month? And how have you been aligning and who have you been aligning yourself with? Are these the people that are getting you towards where you want to be? Or are they people who are getting you to the past where you did not want to be, right? No judgments. This is for you to decide on your own. Because self-care is really a process. It's internal. It's a process to restore your mind, body, and spirit to get you to the next phase in your life. And that's why it's your superpower, right? So if you would like a guide to help you starting on this self-care process, I invite you to download my free self-care starter kit and you'll see the information right at the bottom of the screen, right? Self-care is your superpower. Self-care can get you there. If self-care got me, who I'm an ER doc in the middle of the pandemic where my colleagues are looking at me and saying, why are you so Zen? And I say to them, because I practice what I preach, right? Aligning my mind, my body, and my spirit. Now remember, self-care is one of the most important assets that you can provide for yourself. And therefore, you can be there for others, right? You are your most important assets. And therefore, on this journey, you need to decide are you going to tap into your superpower? Now, you might be wondering, well, what's next for her? Stay tuned.
Happy Juneteenth, Dr. Tamara. Thank you so, so much for being with us today. Hey, hey, everyone. Thank you guys for joining in on the chat. Yes. How you doing? Yeah. Happy Juneteenth, y'all. <laughs> Doing good. Self-care is definitely a favorite topic in the Blaze community. Um, I would say that's something we challenge ourselves with all the time to go even beyond what we've seen our our mothers do. So um, mm -hmm. it's always a necessary reminder before we part ways to do to, to do the Lord's work. Uh, so I'm going to give uh, people a chance to speak to you, ask questions. So you all definitely hold a hand, right, or hit the hand at the bottom of the screen um, to give Dr. Tamara her flowers to ask questions, whatever you want to say, right? You have this opportunity. <laughs> and, and while you are queuing the hands up, I just want to uh, reiterate that Dr. Tamara definitely does have a free gift for you. So definitely go to blazevirtualsummit.com slash freebies to grab mm -hmm. it. Blazevirtualsummit.com slash freebies. No catches, literally gifting you um, from the goodness of her heart. So we appreciate Absolutely. you for that as well, Dr. Tamara. Yes. All right. So let me pull up. Uh, first, we have Demetra, and then we'll have Tierra come up. Hello. Thank you for your presentation and being here. Um, I have two quick questions. Um, mm -hmm. First one is I, I missed the first pillar of self-care. I got second uh, being movement and third alignment of spirit. Mm -hmm. My second question is how do you balance between only doing surface level self-care acts instead of like deeper work with yourself. Okay, so um, <clears throat> I'll answer your first question and then I'll need a little bit of reiteration as to <clears throat> what your second question means. So the first um, pillar is mind, aligning. So you're aligning your mind, your body and your spirit. So aligning your mind, which is basically how is it that you prepare yourself for the day? What are you inputting <clears throat> into your mind? Ooh, I'm losing my voice today. What are you inputting into your mind? You know, so I gave um, some pillars for you to do, especially at the beginning of your day. And I intentionally did not say in the morning, because as I mentioned, I work nights. So my day starts in the afternoon. So I align my mind by inputting positive information. Just so I was actually listening to Dr. Cars and you see when she talks about even decreasing the amount of news that she reads, because it's not going to consistently align and have you working towards whatever it is that you're doing, which is self-care or goals. So I get up and the first thing that I do is that I read a devotion and then I read something positive or I listen to a positive um podcast. I listen, I input positive information that sets the tone for my day. When I do that, the day is set. Like you are rarely going to catch me off key at that point. So whatever it is that you try to do to me, it bounces off because I've already set that foundation for my mind. And your mind is the most powerful, one of your most powerful tools, right? So once my mind is set, I respond to the actions that occurs within my day versus reacting to it, right? So that's the first pillar. And then um, you said, how do you balance yourself only repeatedly doing surface self-care acts? Um, do you mind elaborating on that question, um, giving me an example of what you mean, Demetra? Um, yes. So um, um, I guess more so, how do you, what what are more examples of aligning with spirit and moving away from just um, like bubble baths and face masks? Oh, okay, okay, good, good, good. All righty, perfect. Love, love, love. Love this question even more <laughs> that you've done. So with alignment of spirit, it really is an internal looking at where you are and who you want to be around and where you are and where you want to be. Now, Alignment of spirit, which I think is very important. I'll give you a great example. Now, I know during the beginning of the pandemic, a lot of people who were introverts, they're like, yes, Woo, introverts unite when we're told, hey, stay in the house, can't go anywhere, you're on shutdown, right? However, within approximately a month, some introverts were going stir crazy. Why? Because human beings are social beings right? So we still need to be around people. Now, the important aspect is, who do you want to be around? 
So your spirit and those who propel you forward, who helps you to release that positive hormones that we've talked about. Um, we have two hormones that actually uh, um, gets released when we're around people. One is the bonding hormone, which is oxytocin. And you guys have probably heard about that. That bonds like mom to child, that bonding hormone that gets released. That's the same hormone that gets released when you're around people. And that's why you get that connection when you're just like, oh, that love connection with somebody, or I just like being around that person. And then there's also that dopamine, which is a reward hormone when you anticipate being around people who you like. Now, those hormones are not indiscriminate. So you will bond with the wrong people if you just keep being around the wrong people, right? And you will anticipate being around those people and still release your dopamine if you do that. So now you have to intentionally decide who aligns my spirit to where I want to be. And that's the alignment of spirit. Like, how is it that I feel when I'm around these people, part one, and am I going in the direction where I want to go? And I look forward to being around those people because of all three. I feel good. I'm going in the direction that I want to go. And I now have peace. So I hope that answers your question, Demetra. Yes, it does. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you so, so much, Demetra. And next, we're going to kick it over to Tierra Davis. Hi. Thank you so much, Dr. Tamara. Um, you started me off super hungry. Now I'm looking for my nearest jerk restaurant so I can get some oxtails, curry goat, or something. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you so very much for that. Um, my initial question is centered around like the stigma of that the the less well at least it's to me with everyone that i'm around like the less self-care you partake in is like the stronger you are mm. so like people mm -hmm. really they they like pedestal this whole thing of like just being on go mo go mo go mo i don't need mm -hmm. to do this i don't need to do this for myself i don't need to do this i'm super strong yes. so how can we like debunk that within our community and show the strength in caring for ourselves absolutely that is such a powerful question and i'm, I'm glad that you've stated that because one of the things within our community is that we pride ourselves um busy is like if it actually no matter what portion of life you're in, busy is like the word to use, right? I cannot do that because I'm just too busy. I really would help you out, but boy, I'm just busy, you know? And the busyness is abused as a pride. Um, and even taking on excess work is considered like another source of pride. And even within our own community, in our jobs and so on, taking care of ourselves, unfortunately, has been placed lower on the totem pole. Now, it is important for us to highlight that within, and it probably takes small steps because we've had people within our families who this is just how they are. And you'll always hear that rhetoric, back in my days, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that it's correct, right? It's important for us to highlight how important taking a break is for us because it propels you further. One of the biggest, and I didn't talk about, um, I just highlighted about sleep as being another portion of self-care. Entrepreneurs, that's one of the things that we at times even have an issue with, which is taking a break to just rest. And, you know, I think the best um, analogy for this was um, one of my colleagues, when we're talking about music and about um, the tangle, like fast, fast, slow. So there are periods in our lives where we're moving fast, 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 and then there are periods that we're moving slow, right? There are periods we're going to be moving fast, and there are periods we're going to be moving slow, just kind of like dancing. So once we understand and acknowledge that we will have slow periods in our lives, but we must have slow periods in our lives in order to regroup in order for us to restore and to rejuvenate. And so once we do all those 
three R's. We propel ourselves even further. So taking time to rest, taking time to slow down, taking time to do self-care is the is those it's a pillar that's important that helps us to propel ourselves even further. Continuously going, 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 as I mentioned at the beginning, it's not going to get us anywhere. Think of a motor that just keeps going. Doesn't the motor need to some time you have a car and the motor is just going, going, going consistently? Boom, after a while, what? It breaks down. It needs repair. It needs to slow down. Think about our computers. Our computers are on. What it is, hey, I'm too hot. Shut it down, right? We all need periods where we have to slow down in order for us to get further in life. That's just it. that's just the fact. And I'd say that the way to get through to those in our communities who can't understand it is probably using some of those little experiences and also using some of those analogies, like even just like a motor, just like a car. At times we need to slow down. I hope that helps, Tiara. <laughs> that did it. I know we got a schedule to keep, so I ain't going to say too much more, but that did it. That did it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Tiara. Um, Tiara, why did I go back to Tiara? I'm sorry, friend. Um, so, Dr. Tamara, thank you so, so much for these gems you've dropped, dropped not only during your, your talk, but, but hereafter. I think your clinical perspective adds so much um, needed diversity to this discussion, right? Um, it's given us a whole lot to do homework on as well. So, love and light to you. Uh, happy Juneteenth. I hope you have a beautiful rest of the day, but we appreciate thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you all. Of course. All right, ladies. So uh, we're going to keep things going. This is the final day of the Blaze Virtual Summit. We will not be here tomorrow. OK, this platform will not be here uh, in this way <laughs> tomorrow. You will have access to the replays for all three months. So I do want you to soak all of this in. I know, Chandra, but it's over tomorrow. So two very powerful communal things are about to happen, right? Um, one is about to be a, man, a Sunday. I'm about to cuss though, y'all. So, okay, I ain't gonna cuss. Okay, so uh, one talk is coming up. It's a panel discussion from the Dope AF Coalition, 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 and the topic is Black Women Are Dope AF. Black Women Are Dope AF, okay? And then right after that, we're gonna welcome the very first male to ever grace the stage of the Blaze Virtual Summit, in a fireside chat called Caping Hard for Black Women. And this is necessary now more than ever because as we take up, in, up space in the world as leaders, we cannot have those next to us being quiet and not coming in the ring with us, okay? So I want y'all to tap into those, right? Those are coming back to back and I'll see y'all on the other side. Peace. Women around the world. It is our day, Juneteenth, baby, and we are free. We are here, and most importantly, we are worthy. And I could not celebrate today with a panel of women who are dope, dope, dope. I mean, dope as fuck. <laughs> we have uh, a, a, a coalition that many may not realize that are actually named Dope AF, right? So uh, this is at the core of what they do every single day. They are sisters for real um, and they cape very hard for Black women. So um, I want to give them the chance to um, introduce themselves and, and essentially explain, you know, how their lives intersected. Uh, let, let me give y'all a chance to do that. Let's start with you, Amber. Um, what, what led you to this group, right? And, and who are you? Um, I, I'm Amber to call your favorite diversity specialist, but I'm a kick it to the visionary that that got us together which is coffee um so she started us here so coffee okay what's up um my name is coffee davis i am the founder of the march for black women and girls term project is the umbrella it falls under and um i started this this project back in the term project started in 2006 but i got the idea for the march for black women and girls which is what brought us all together collectively 
in 2018, I was noticing that there was an uprise in um, violence against black women and girls. And I wanted to do something, something to bring awareness to it because I felt like nobody else noticed. So I decided to do this march and I met um, Bernice King through a mutual friend. And we just, uh, we just from day one, we just, we just vibed. We climbed a mountain together. We shared our um, different ideas. And one of the ideas that I shared was the March of Black Women. She was the first one that jumped on board. She was like, she just owned it. She was like, you know what? I'm down. Put me down. And we started meeting. And I had already met Amber through a mutual friend. Amber came to one of my classrooms to do a discussion with some of my students there. And we just, we, we vibed instantly. A lot of times they think when Black women come together, it's always strife and conflict or, you know, different things like that. But we actually, without knowing, knowing each other, we just kind of jumped on board each other's mission. Carissa, I met during a uh, march for Breonna Taylor or um, a memorial for Breonna Taylor. And she did her poetry. I just fell in love with it. And I knew that she had an organization. And I was looking for Black women that had organizations also. So Bernice had hers going, Amber Heard had hers going. And me and Tina, we just go way back. We were, we were doing theater together. We were doing um, um, my um, stage play, Freedom. I'm also a writer and I do poetry and plays and stuff like that. And she was one of the actresses in my play and she, Amber brought her along. And I was like, I already know this sister. So it was just, it was really, um, it was just serendipity. It was, um, it was just something that just happened. We came together, we naturally felt each other's vision. And I, honestly, we were all, even though I was doing the March for Black Women, everybody centered Black women in their stuff and everybody had a vision at, to some degree to doing something specifically to center Black women and girls. So it was match made in heaven. That's super, super dope. I mean, I think just very casually, right? You showcase the the power of network, like having one to start in the first place, right? Because they pull in right. their folks, they already vetted, you know? Um, and I, I think that's super, super dope that each of you have a heart for Black women individually. I can only imagine the exponential power that has. Super, super dope. I am Gianni Olamide. I'm your spiritual plug. Um, we heard Coffee mention Carissa. Um, in my former life, I was Reverend Carissa Rogers, um, artist, um, healer. I just really believe in um, helping us get what we need so that we can do what we need to do and get where we need to be. I run an organization called the Alternative Tribe. Um, and I, cause I call myself a community leader. Sometimes people call me the chief, but you know, it's a collective effort as far as I'm concerned. So, so yeah. thank you, Gianni. Um, I'm Amber Nicole, your favorite diversity specialist. Um, and I am just that, I'm a inclusive thought leader and i am paid to help co-create cultures of inclusivity uh around the globe so we are uh, the owners of the diversity booth and uh, it just so happens that there's a play on words because my last name is booth and uh it, it works and we do good work and i'm katina right. latrice i'm the i'm the executive director of her healing empowering ratchet and restoration our time squared, but I have a background. I am a K-12 educator, a STEM educator at that, robotics educator at that. And I've always had a passion for um, girls that look like me, um, exploring their opportunities, exploring their gifts, their abilities. And so uh, we use this space. And when I ran into Amber, we were talking and we knew coffee where it's going to do the march. And uh, she, we have something called Miss Her Magic. And I'm like, this is an opportunity to collaborate and build with Kofi as a visionary. And um, so like, this is how organically it started. Um, so our hearts are pure and our, our motives are pure. We definitely want Black girls and Black women to win at all costs. And heal. And heal. And that to me is part of the winning. Yeah. Ashay, Ashay. Bernice, what about you? All right, um, Bernice Nazare. My organization is Place for Resources, and which is a young adult uh, life skills program where uh, I'm trying to fill in the gap as young young people are evolving into adulthood with confidence, communication, hygiene, career choices, uh, and opportunities, um, and things like that, and um, so I really appreciate this group because they, they keep exposing me to a uh, need um, that maybe I wasn't even aware of or to add to the program to address, to help to enhance these uh, young people's lives. 
Super dope. Super, super dope. Thank you, ladies. Uh, sincerely for what you do individually um, and collectively. And, and, and you're all based in which state? Tell the folks. Little Rock. Oh, Little Rock. Yeah. Little Rock. Little Rock. I can't do it. I can't ever do it right. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, I'm just gonna put on for Arkansas. Super <laughs> dope. Super dope. Um, so yeah, and your name is 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 powerful, right? It's disruptive to be very honest. And I'm sure it holds symbolism um for anybody that sees it, right? Especially when they're black women. Um, can can one of you share where the name came from? We said, well, it came from the fact that we said, if, when we do things, it was like, damn, you so damn dope. Like, like if any, it doesn't matter what's happening. And if one person is sharing, it's, you're going to hear it 20 times. It like when we were, you know, first interacting and such. And so I was like, well, we're going to turn this into an acronym and throw it on a shirt. Like, let's do it. Um, and, and so we became dope AF. Like it was, it was like this collective. So we're going to be dope. Yes. Like, it, like, did we just yeah. become best friends? Like that fast. Like everybody. Oh right, and and it was like a natural conversation of like, dang, like we would be astonished, like, oh, Gianna, you do that shit, like, damn, we don't we hung out for months, we hung out for months without knowing other job that what the other jobs were, like, like we, dang, <laughs> you doing like. You can you can do a whole yeah. website for me, like yeah. damn, that you dope as hell. Like, what you come up with? Like, it, was. it was like an organic conversation. It kept yeah. we kept saying dope, like, and it was a. It was yeah. internal, and we were like, "Dang, she dope as hell. She dope as fuck." So it's just that's basically where we we started, and then we started coming up. We came up with the name eventually. And then for clarification, I, there's this public thing because you know a lot of people think the AF is for as fuck, but it actually is for amazing I'm with females. It. Amazing females. Yes. Amazing <laughs> females. <laughs> So we're gonna carry that with us no matter what. Always, it's always it's an affirmation too. You know what I'm saying? Like always, at black yeah. women, we are dope, amazing females at all times. We dope as fuck at all times. Like affirm that divinely, us, divinely us, operating period. in purpose and excellence. That's the dope. Divinely operating in purpose and excellence. Because absolutely, yeah. I mean, like the, the the organic way that we say it came together is one thing. But the missions and how the missions align, but it's also that spiritual aspect. Like we'll be together and we'll be in a room and someone comes and we're like, like we can feel energy shifts as a unit. We're like, oh, like we're not gonna, you know, like and it's but we still welcome all of like right. when I say everybody is welcome, and all we're saying is we just want you to be you. That is the only requirement to be in this session. We hope. We have one coming up this Saturday. You're welcome. I mean, Sunday. You're welcome to come to the Black Girl Healing Session. You know what I'm saying? Like, we talk. We unpack things. We have. It, it's not just a safe space. It's like real spaces where you get to be ugly. You get to be unhealed. You get to be. You know what I mean? Like all of those things, and know that nobody's running away. Everybody's gonna still be there at the end of the session, just waiting on you. So. That's that nice. feels good. I mean, honestly, like, as y'all talk, it feels good. And I think that means every <laughs> everything. Y'all write real spaces in the chat. Like, affirm that. Like, you know, you, you're that's hearing true. it. Write it down. You know, say it aloud. Real spaces. Um, I, I think that's the power that comes from us being a collective because the things y'all are saying like feeling energy when it comes in the room we don't we don't hear that in corporate spaces it's not a priority or a, you know or a qualifying but, we, it the room, but right? we feel it in corporate spaces we feel energy shift exactly yeah. right exactly right um super dope ladies thank you so much so um you know i have to say and, and it's already been mentioned in this in this format you know one thing that struck me when i first met you all as a collective was that you emphasized the fact that you are black women coming together and getting along and are, you know, being real sisters. And yes, this does happen in real life, right? Um, and, that, and that stood out to me, right? And especially because it was at the forefront, you know, of how you portray yourselves. Can you speak to, you know, what stereotypes might exist, right? That counter the story you're telling. And, and, and if you could, you know, give a lens on why you think these stereotypes exist. Uh, I think it would be great to unpack that as well. Um, any of you can start. I think that we we like to do some, though not like that, Tina. I think that <laughs> what 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 we know for a fact is that uh, a lot of our community leaders, and we've seen them. I mean, regardless of of their gender identity, don't do the self work 
a lot of times that they're out there and they're ready to, you know what I'm saying? Like the, to hear the beat of their own drum and be in front of the crowd. But like, we genuinely are going to come for your edges. If you come in for yourself, you know what I'm saying? Like if you like, my, right. like Gianni, Gianni called me out when we were going on the way to the March, you know, what I'm saying? I said something mean about myself and she was like, how about you don't do that? Like, like we want to make sure that you're not even saying mean things about yourself. We work on, we unpack stuff. So that narrative that you hear of that black women don't get along, that's, to me, when it comes out of black women's mouths, is the internalization of misogyny. That's that's right. what I hear. I, I hear the internalization of, of misogyny noir because black women's spaces and black sisterhood is so lit. It's so lit. I, I mean, like I can't imagine how many arguments I've had with black men about my black experience, but right. I don't have to argue with black women about my black experience because they understand the intersectionality of gender and race. Right. And I just I just want to jump in there and say that it's also it's a myth. It's not it's untrue. From um from as long as I've lived, I've known that uh, black women have supported me whenever I begin to create something. Just like with the march, when they come together, the first thing that I notice whenever I do anything is how many black women come and they say, "Oh, that's what we're doing now." And they pull up and they pick up and they put in the work. And it's always when I look around, it's always a sisterhood. It's all it always has been. But I think that sometimes, as Amber said, sometimes people. Um, will internalize and regurgitate these these non-truths. But when we start speaking it, we start noticing and you open your eyes and you start seeing that the sisterhood has been there in, in beauty salons. It's been there um, at schools when you're struggling trying to get through grad school. It's been there when you when you have your when When they put that, scar that blanket over at you at church. Right, <laughs> it's been there. It's just that when you recognize it, you tap in. And what we've done yeah. is we've tapped in. When I look around at yeah. the march, it's not just us that's there. We're the core, but it's black women vendors, it's black women um, speakers, it's black women politicians. It's but all we're doing is pulling in people we already know that's already been supporting us, and we support them. Yep. I think me and with I, my background, I grew up. I grew up. My mom was a single mom, so it was, and it was a coalition of women that worked together. For them to raise their children together and so and it was married women and single moms and i remember one time when we got sick we had we had the flu and it was like my mom two kids got the flu her married friend <laughs> had two kids they got the flu and what ended up happening they built a coalition of like i'm gonna take off one day you keep the kids you take off the next day you keep the kids but that has been my community of coalition of black women together, working together to make sure things happen. And I look at Dope AF as like, if we're entrepreneurs and though I'm in this space that I have a collective of women that make sure that I keep moving and that we move together and we're collectively making impacts in our community and our, in our world. So um, it's just taking what I've already seen in my community and now we just upscaled it and just like, hey, but this is what we do for each other anyway. So we're doing it now as entrepreneurs. And strangely, and it, it's my resolution. The only time that we don't work together is when there's some element of competition in the room, right? So when there is a shared value of creation and of building and of camaraderie and of empowerment, and that's the spirit that we're in as Black women, it, we gonna always be good. The only time that I see us not operating in that vein again is, is when something has, has caused us to feel like either it ain't enough or I need to do this over you or in spite of you or instead of you or, you know what I'm saying? Some divisiveness and all of that, in my opinion, is also ruled by capitalism and patriarchy, other systemic things that we've internalized in ways that don't support us, but we're not our systems to begin with. So just wanted to slide that Wait, in there. Yes. <laughs> And I, and I right. would like to say that even in this space, when you feel like when there's some insecurity happening, you have a, you have, we have a space where like, I, I'm not, that's not like, even just this past week, I was like, y'all feeling this? That's not a mirror for me. Right. And we were able to talk it out. They were able to support, but that's what this, this space is of like, I can't match our energy right now because I'm in this space. And they're like, this is your, and, you, and it was the encouragement. It was the encouragement and the pouring into to get me back to where I needed to be in my mental space. But if this is the coalition to help me make that, you know, make that change. And so I'm just appreciative of Dope AF. We have a Google Doc with affirmations in it. 
purposefully each, each person goes in and get and you know affirms the other person like there are days where on bad days that's a dope document to read but not just about yourself like when you get to go read the entire document like i get to hang out with these people like these people call and i'd be mad you know like you get, you get busy during the day if it's a day that they got like 30 messages in the group me and i got to go catch up i'm mad because i know i've missed some good stuff i know i did like it's just, it is and I, when coffee was talking about the march there are black women at this march and you're gonna find the organizers of that march dropping it low at the, at the you know what i'm saying like we're going to be who we are at all times and i like I like that part of it. Like you can, we can coordinate a statewide march and still back that ass up at the same time. Uh, and just to piggyback off of what the other girl said, I know one of the challenges that I had um, was I felt like I had to be superwoman that I had to figure it out all by myself um, that I had to do it and I couldn't really depend. I shouldn't really depend on other people to make it happen. And what this group has shown me is that um, they do come through step up even when i'm like no no that's okay i don't need any help i don't need any help they're like yes you do or you still gonna get it and so i appreciate that for not having to feel um you know um guilty for asking for and receiving help and it's helping me in other areas of my life to receive that same help so um and that's one of the stereotypes I didn't even recognize that I had until it was exposed in this group. So I appreciate them for being the group of, of friends that I never even knew that I needed. So she said she loved us. Did y'all heard it? She said she loved us. I do. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> and that's how we've been making stuff happen because we all have our individual programs, and when we're just sharing what it is. People yeah. are jumping in like, well, I can help with that. Or you, do you need help? Or like Tina was saying, you know, how was your day? Or what is it that we can do to support you? And when I first started seeing that come through the thread, how, what can I do to support you? I was like, oh, wow, okay. Um, this, as uh, the group is called, we sit different because we are, because we are a supportive group of people. And even if you didn't know how to do that, they teach you how to do it uh, just by their actions. And so then you can go out and carry that to the rest of the world and help other black women um, be, be that for other black women. So we're passing it forward just in our actions. Black sisterhood for us is a, con a full contact sport. It is not a spectator sport. Like we, we jumping in, we, we tackling, we running them off. Like it's, it's, we in that thing. So. Yeah. Um, super dope. I love the diversity of all, um, you know, your perspectives, right, and what you pull, because uh, obviously we are not a monolith, right, but but I hear that Dope AF is a proclamation, right, it is a reminder, <laughs> right, it is a goalpost for a lot of people, right, so to, to, to unlearn some bad things and, and relearn what is true, um, because like Coffee said, it's a myth that we can't come together. Um, super dope, and, and I know a lot can resonate with this, right, like I first realized when I came into entrepreneurship to serve Black female entrepreneurs, that so many people were telling me about my experience, right? They said black women are too competitive for you to help them, right? Black women, you know, they they they're not ready for this type of help, right? Like they, they don't know how to ask and be aggressive like men, right? And, and that's what I initially saw. So I was combating against combating against that. But literally today, this morning, for the first time in years, I remembered myself 20 years ago as a preteen, right? And I remember how I would say to my friends, I usually don't mess with girls because mm -hmm. they can't. Mm -hmm. I didn't even remember that until today, right? When I got to high school, I, I told her, you know, like, you know, I keep my circle small because, you know, dudes, they're not emotional, you know? But somebody told me that, right? Over mm -hmm. and over and over and over again. So one hurt transitioned into everybody. Everybody. And, you know? Um, so I, I love what y'all are doing. It, it is so healing, right? Um, thank you so much, for real, for, for gracing the stage. So, um, I know you mentioned on Sunday you have a healing circle. I just want to, you know, see what else y'all are up to. If anybody's in the Arkansas area, or even if y'all have some, you know, some virtual opportunities, like what projects are y'all, you know, excited about right now? 
No, go so ahead. working on this retreat that's happening this October around actually creating a physical safe space for our sisters to be able to come together and for us to be able to do this work in community. It's somewhere beautiful where, you know, it's going to be warm, but we'll be dropping details about that early July. So yeah. make sure y'all are following Marshall Black Women and Girls on Instagram and Facebook so that you can get that information from us. All of us have respective programs, but the March for Black Women and Girls happens every year, um, and it'll be happening again next March. It'll be our third annual, and it keeps getting bigger every year. So we're excited about that. Um, and then, you know, I said we run respective programs through the year. So myself, I have a program called Girls Talk for girls 12 to 17. I'm around cultural education and programming, basically helping them learn what it means to 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 know who they are and their purpose in the world. Um, so really um, moving towards that Amos Wilson idea of culture, um, not just arts and dance, but using art and dance to address social issues, to be able to address uh, like behaviors, manners, thoughts, um, the way that we show up to spaces, the way we treat each other, the way we talk language, um, all of these things, just very self-reflective, but also, you know, expanding a, their, their minds. Um, also got another workshop coming up in mid-July too called mm -hmm. Finding My Way Back to Me. Um, that's based on helping people literally do their self-work and unlearn what really is, it's a repair and reprogram, you know? So relearning, unlearning and relearning, you know, a lot of the ways that we've been taught. Uh, because all we got is what we've been given until we go out and we actually get something else for ourselves. Um, I know Tina is well, she she been busy running STEM programs all summer long, okay, for the kids. Coffee well, so does yeah, the trauma informed yoga. Look, I'm I'm finna just start telling everybody. She started telling apparently, everybody. Apparently, apparently. Yeah, we everybody. see what, but, well, everybody. everybody. <laughs> Can you participate in that every year with with the diversity booth with Tina and I and Miss Her Magic? Miss Her Magic is an initiative that we started uh, at the one year um, of, like memory of the death of the murder of Breonna Taylor. Um, we know how much black women contribute to society, period, point blank. We drag culture and society along and then we get to where we go and nobody thinks to hand us the mic. But we know if black women just didn't say anything, which is what Miss Her Magic is. We ask all black women on March 13th every year to say nothing. And I want everybody to think about, like, if Black women globally, the chaos, people ask us questions because they don't know their job and they get paid more than us. The, the Our church ladies, our yo mamas, your aunties, just nothing. I just genuinely think that the impact of that would be crazy because we are missing magic. We're missing magic when it comes to implicit bias and they're killing us in hospitals, whether there is police violence, domestic violence, like that's why. That's why black women have to be focused on because everybody has focused on every we focused on everybody else and now it's time to turn that inward so every year we also are excited that that pro, that that initiative was endorsed by brianna taylor's mother miss tamika palmer gave her blessing before we even continue to you know to do that we wanted to talk with her before we launched it in her daughter's name so miss her magic every year <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry <laughs> so um beginning in august i'll be doing a trauma-informed yoga training which will be um it's for it's it's all inclusive. Um, anyone can come. Anyone that wants to learn to teach trauma informed yoga. So I've been doing yoga now for four years. And one of the initiatives that I have alongside uh, literacy is also um, fitness. So I do a lot of um, fitness fitness um, activities and things like that. I do a rise to five k that's coming up. But um, I'm really excited about the trauma informed yoga because not only are we going to be doing yoga and and um, adding um, the trauma-informed piece to it, but also it's the teacher training. So everyone that leaves will be equipped with being able to teach that to the community also. And that's starting in August. I'll be going to Washington, D.C. And um, I think we may be going as a group, but we're going to be going out there with Black Femicide and um, and doing the March of Black Women on Washington in August also. Yeah, that part. And I and I I'm in I'm in the process of right now on my on my other job that I have that I'm I'm establishing two I mean nine STEM age programs across the state of Arkansas in like four or five in five different sites so I'm working on that but in the meantime my original work what I want to do what I'm in the process of creating is a workshop teaching consent and boundaries utilizing hip hop for young girls and young boys. Um, okay. 
to, we got to, they need to understand what consent is, what boundaries, we're losing too many. I've lost four. I've lost about, I've lost three, two in the last two months, black girls, black former students from intimate partner violence. And um, we got to, we got to start teaching them about setting boundaries and knowing what consent is and when to leave when those boundaries are disrespected. And so I'm going, um, I'm in the process of creating a workshop for that as well. Put me in the game, coach. And I'm, <laughs> all hands on deck. Right. And I'm and I'm hoping Tina starts a program to um, teach other teachers uh, STEM, even virtually, uh, even like daycare centers. And um, I, and I say that because I have another friend who has a daycare, and she would love to be able to offer that to, you know, her students. And because Tina has such a unique perspective, uh, of, approach to this where she uses hip hop. If y'all go on to uh, UAMS Pathways Academy on YouTube, y'all gonna see the cutest videos. They gonna make you laugh and cry. You're gonna be celebrating these kids and you're gonna be like, I want my kids to do that. So hopefully um, I am really pushing it. Tina hasn't necessarily agreed to it, but um, I'm gonna try to hit, I'm gonna, I think she open to it, uh, but she I'm gonna try to hit you somewhere, Tina. She volunteered you somewhere. I did, I did. <laughs> Cause Tina gotta spread this magic. So they, Tina, they, over there, Tina over there blinking like, but see, this is, and, this is what, and this is the, this is what dope AF is. Cause I, and let me be honest. I am, I am a newbie in the entrepreneur field. So, um, and hanging with these ladies pushes me uh, just a little bit further to step out just a little bit more, create and expand a little bit more on my workshops and ideas and skills and abilities that I've been having over the years. So um, a lot of times we think we got to make an impact by ourselves, but we have a group of people that got us and you can't, I don't know, to me, I'm a, I have a collaborative spirit and I don't think you can make movements without individually, you need a group of people and Dope AF is my people. My tribe. Um, oh, oh, we have the anthology. Don't, don't forget. Oh, yeah. we got a book. We got a book. We got a book. Dears. Dear Sis, I Love You is an anthology on Black sisterhood. It is going to be the dopest, dopest book around because Dope AF is a part of it. And so many other dope Black women. And you can't go wrong. I mean, like, literally Black women and art, is never you can never go wrong there. So you'll catch us on uh, Amazon and all the places and all the things. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be nice. It's going to be nice. I'm excited. We are, we are really excited. And then Katina and I will put out a children's book later this year called STEM Looks Like STEM Me. STEM Looks Like Me. STEM Looks Like Me. Wait, look for that video on, on the UAMS Pathways Academy uh, page on YouTube. And I'm going to tell you, you're going to be crying and dancing and laughing. But I just want y'all to know, we do have, we usually have like a weekly Zoom meeting. Uh, it's, and we, it's supposed to be a strategic planning session where we're supposed to be executing ideas but we have to keep um, extending because it turns into fun. It turns into fun. Tina keeps us on schedule um, and keep us, <laughs> she keeps us because we probably wouldn't get that done. <laughs> um, we, then, we, we work at the first half. That's true. <laughs> that's true. And I've learned recently that I have some kind of executive energy where um, I could be uh, pretty um, uh, sometimes focus driven. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't know that about myself. <laughs> Amber is a visionary. Gianni is, again, naturally the spiritual plug. And she comes and she's the community um, organizer. She's the, she keeps us, keeps people accountable to the goal. She keeps a of finger the, on the pulse. Yeah. On, on, yeah. Yeah. And of course, um, Coffee, uh, she definitely has her creative aspects. Um, and especially with victim services and different types of recognition for uh, women and things that we can do to honor women. So once we start adding all of our ideas or concepts into things, then that's where all those ideas came from. Y'all just heard from because it was just it's our weekly Zoom meeting uh, where we have fun um, and we sometimes get uh, some of the work that's done. Too. We don't all get there at the same time. The the meeting. The meeting has a start time. We don't all get there at the start time. And, you know, and then we have like some of our group stays up late and some of our group goes to bed early. And um, so trying to find a nice medium where everybody can be cognizant, it can be tough. It can be tough. 
But we so make it. it. Well, it's working. <laughs> of coalition work. I love it, ladies. Um, and yeah, I love I love what you said to Katina about, you know, there can't be individual success without collaborative success, right? Like Eleanor Roosevelt said, you know, the only thing you can do by yourself is fail. The only thing you can do by yourself is fail. Um, that's that energy in. While they throw stuff at you, I got something to throw at you too, Katina. Um, there is this thing that's in this five, fifth year called the Hip Hop Hackathon, and it is crazy big. Like this thing is about to be global, I'm sure, very soon. 20 to 30 corporations have already, like big corporates like Microsoft, Amazon, et cetera, have already thrown a whole bunch of stuff um, in there to award high school students and, and, and collegiate level um, learners with it, with the sole purpose of using hip hop, right, and culture to push more Black people to STEM because only um, I think the latest number is only 1% of us can fill jobs yeah. that are out there. So uh, I'd love to plug you with uh, the rest of the board. I'm, I'm one of the board members, but you would be great to be whatever you want to be. If you want to do a workshop or be a teacher or be a mentor, um, I think you should definitely do that. It is this month. It is live right now. If you want to be a judge, you know, um, but I'll, I'll, I'll plug you to that because this, I mean, you being a part of the movement, I think is, would be huge um, all around. Super dope, ladies. I got you. Let me know. Love it, love it. Love it. Awesome. Um, so there are some women, I am sure, <laughs> who are uh, thinking about collaborating, but different things are holding them back, right? It could be trauma, right? Like old experiences. I'm one of them. It was family hurt that, that had me thinking that, you know, I had to be careful around women, right? Um, some people might be afraid to be a leader, right? Like, I, I think you all talking about your different um, contributions to the group is beautiful because I think people see they don't have to be all the things, right? You, de you be one critical part of the puzzle and everyone else fills in. So I love, I love to hear your tips um, for women who are on the sidelines currently who really, really want to, to collaborate officially long time with other people. Um, what tips did you give them? Uh, Katina, let's start with you. Um. One that, I, that I'm learning is uh, the willingness to be vulnerable and the willingness to trust. Trust that they're going to keep you. Trust that they're going to, that the people you choose are going to hold you, hold you up and they got you when you can't. That's good. That's good. I'll say. Bernice, what about you? What are tips you would offer? Um... I have two, and I hope I'm not sending nobody, somebody else's thunder, but um, one is that we don't do group think. You know, we all have our own individual um, stances and um, personalities. Um, and I'll give an example, you know, um, the polarity of Black Lives Matter uh, or, you know, and the involvement of um, law enforcement. Um, and you know we had conversations about it um but and before when we didn't even know each other like the first year when we barely knew each other i didn't know the history behind the experiences of other people and um obviously they didn't know mine so we had we learned to respect each other's uh boundaries and the things that were important to each other and we don't have to all do the same thing um, and if it's not your lane, it's just not your lane. But what we'll do is like, well, if that, if it's that, if that's important to you, then we'll support you. You know, I'll support you in that in the way that I can. So that was uh, really helpful um, for me. And uh, there's another one, but I forgot. I, I'll let you come back to me. <laughs> 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 All right, look, Mama, we appreciate those gems. Super, super helpful. Kofi, what about you? What tips did you offer to Black female entrepreneurs who are, are hoping to start their own uh, coalition one day or soon? Okay, the first thing I would say is just just to do it because a lot of times um, we hold ourselves back. We um, we have a lot of reservations because we're unsure. Um, we may not have the confidence or whatever. We don't feel like, well, well what will they think? Will they, will they come? But once you build it, they will come. Once you build it, once you step out there, you're gonna find that so many other people are aligned with that same cause. Um, just like I mentioned earlier with the march when I first brought it up, all I had to do was speak it into existence. It, it didn't exist yet. We didn't do it yet. The first year that I did it, I had a team. But when I first spoke it out of my mouth, it wasn't a, it was, it was a idea. It was a vision in my head. So just going, stepping forth. And once you step forth, you'll see other people say, Hey, I'm with that. Or, Hey, I want to do that too. Or I had the same idea. Um, the other thing, uh, I had two, what was the other one? 
um, oh, know, know what your strengths are and lay on, lean into those strengths. Don't feel like, like you mentioned earlier, you don't have to know and do everything. We are a coalition. That means certain things can be delegated to whoever has the stronger understanding of that area. And it's okay. And then be willing to, to step up when it's your turn, when it's like, oh, okay, well, I know how to do that. Boom, then it's you. But just being able to, to understand the nature of, we all, we're, we're all leaders respectively in our own organizations, but we know when this job, this particular aspect needs to be delegated to Tina. I don't know anything about STEM. Or this thing could, me and, me and Gianni could collab on this because we're both poets. So just understanding your place, respecting your place, valuing your place, and also valuing your, um, the other members in your coalition. That's good. That's good. That's, That's good. good. Yeah. That's poets. Okay, okay, love that. Uh, Gianni, uh, other poet, uh, what tips would you give Black women? Um, I would say be okay having the conversations about shared values. Um, we get along around a lot of things, but I think we get along so much also because on a on a on a foundational level, we have the same values around how to treat people, how to move, how to show up, like, and I, I, I would almost even liken it a little bit to, you know, like dating, like in the same way you would a romantic person, you got to date your, your, your friends, you got to date your business partners, whoever you're going to have in your life. Um, and it's supposed to have those hard conversations up front, because sometimes there may be alignment to work together on some things because you got certain things in common or alike, but at, at the heart of it, you don't have the same value. So depending on how long you got to work together, what all you got to do, that thing gone, you know what I'm saying? It, 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 it can come to a head at certain points. And so a large part of that is knowing where you stand around certain things when you come in, knowing yourself well enough to know your own inclinations and proclivities and to be aware of yourself. That way you can help let your people know, you know, I, I'm really working on this right now. I ain't all the way dealt with it yet, but you know, it's in motion. I'm talking to my therapist about it or whatever the case may be, or this is a trigger for me, or, you know, this where I stand on this issue. And I heard you say such and such. And I think we just should talk about it and see how it fares, <laughs> you know, but what I can say with this group is every time we have a conversation around different things, even, even sometimes it's around like working with people, like, you know, how y'all feel about working with these people? Or how you feel about working with these folks? What's your experience like? You know, being able to listen to folk and to listen deeply and intently and to hear and to be able to speak your truth unapologetically, all of those things are important. So I would just say, have the conversations early around what's important. Um, that way, you know, whether or not, you know, long-term you'll be able to sustain things. That's so good. I hope I hope y'all were writing notes on that piece because we have been taught to fake it until we make it, right? And what happens when you fake it until you make it is you are pretending, right? You are performing mm -hmm. until it goes to autopilot, right? But, yep. but what, what Gianni is saying is put yourself in environments that are safe enough, right? For you yep. to expose who you really are, how you, you really are. feel heritage really is what really triggered you about that thing so you can decide right whether this will align i don't think we do that enough because it hasn't been safe for us to do that always we, we've learned other people's cultures to, to navigate their environments um this is so good y'all uh and last but not least amber on this topic what what advice would you give to, to black female entrepreneurs who are who are hoping to and looking to start their own coalition um uh, one i'm under the impression that i don't have to be uh wise if i can just quote people who are um so a lot of what was said was you know many hands make light work it, like we care like we, we give a damn and that's exhausting because it never ends we are fighting so many fights as black women and as black as the diaspora on, on education and health care and economic like you name it by myself it feel it, it feels lonely but having this tribe with me, even if it's just the space to say, y'all, I'm exhausted. I don't have anything else in me. None of my, this tribe doesn't say, well, you got to get up and go. They were, you need to sit down and rest. Like that's important because I feel like we've seen, we've seen martyrdom. We've seen black women kill themselves for every other cause and then not show up for themselves. Um, the, the African proverb, you know, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Like, we're going to slow, we're going to slow down. Um, 
we're going to acknowledge that we're not going to get it all done in this lifetime. The pe we look up to people who didn't get it all done, so there's still going to be work to do. So it's okay to slow down because that doesn't mean that you are devaluing the work that's been done. Um, I think that there are a lot of times that we don't step out because we're afraid, right? You're afraid of being hurt. Well, that, that comes along with relationships, even with sisterhood. Sisterhood is not all bubbles and champagne and fun and laughing. And like sometimes it's you didn't show up for me in this way and it hurt. This is why this triggered me this way. Like, you know, I'm having that conversation and understanding that hurt don't mean hate. Like, I'm mad at you today. And Katina, Katina, she, it's going to make her so mad in the beginning. She will be so mad. And I'll be like, you ready to go eat? Like, bro, you can be mad. But like, this us. We're not going nowhere. We're a unit. So you can eat and you can be mad while you eat. But we're still together. You know, like, it doesn't mean that you have to separate if there is a, a goal. And the goal is literally, I want to see everybody win. But I mean, it, I know I win better when you're next to me. So why am I not going to value and nurture and care for that relationship? Like, this is. It's real stuff. So yep. that, that's about that for me, I guess. That's yep. so that's that good. Is, that is so Dang, um, y'all dope. Yeah. Y'all so dope. Y'all so dope, man. Um, <laughs> yeah. It is powerful to uh witness the vulnerability in in all of your responses, right? Um, I don't take that for granted, right? Um, because our hurt is real, you know, <laughs> our hurt is so real and, and without being prompted, y'all have spoken about how you handle conflict resolution, right? You've spoken about how you not necessarily forgive, but you just realize it ain't hate, like you said, right? Like hurt and hate. I think it's so dope to put vocabulary to it, right? Because, yeah. Like, I feel like people, I love words and language is a, is a, is a labor of love. I think that what people confuse sometimes is transparency with vulnerability. Being transparent does not mean that you're being vulnerable. Being willing to share parts of yourself is just transparency. It's not vulnerability unless there is a responsibility of trust that is in that relationship. You know what I'm saying? Like, unless if you cannot be hurt by the information, then that's not vulnerability. So I think that that is what is most important when it comes to black women, because we are used to being well, even if you are operating the divine feminine, there's a strength there. There's a necessary in order for us to make it through the day. So like, yeah, being able to say, I'm not strong today. Like that's vulnerability, you know? Yeah. And also this Juneteenth, as we, we think about like freedom, there's a there's also an accountability to our freedom that comes into this conversation, right? Because I right. really can decide to move any kind of way I want to. That but part. if I'm gonna if I'm gonna be conscientious about how I'm treating my brothers and my sisters and how I'm showing up and what I'm giving out and my energy and everything else I'm creating in this moment, right? How am I accountable to all of the freedom that I have to really do whatever the fuck I please? That's right? it. How do, how am I mindful of of y'all in in this time in this space too? So you know, it's just a, a little self check. Am I making yeah. sure that I'm not leaving stuff for my for my sisters to carry that I should be carrying? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like like those boundaries, even in the relationship, like even in the say, relationship, I, I'm not, I, I hear you, but I'm not carrying that. Like that's, we say those things. Yep. I can, I can show up for you and not leave with your bags. <laughs> and as we go on to, and as we're talking about Juneteenth and we're talking about freedom, it's the freedom. That means that's a process of unlearning that has to occur at the yep. belief system internally that we have, that we've learned over the years. And, um, and then realizing that Every all of us are on our own journey and have being respectful of that. So you can't carry my stuff because I'm feeling some type of way about my space in life right now as a single mom. I carry that, but this already is already stated to me of like I hear you, yeah. But um, that's something that's a process that Tina has to go. Well, Katina has to go through on her own, and she's working. But you have this dope support system right here. That's like we're not gonna let you fall. You're gonna work through it, but we ain't gonna let you fall. You get what I'm saying? So it's that it's that piece. An unlearning. We're gonna get free. We're gonna get free about what we think about ourselves on Juneteenth. Yeah. And when you tired, put that shit down. Okay. Cause sometimes we be carrying shit that's yeah. to carry. Okay. And, and, and that like 
thank you for the gifts that came from our ancestors, right? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the stuff that we be carrying, they didn't gave us the freedom to, to be able to not have to, right? Mm -hmm. So we talk about rest like it's a, a and I'm not even like rest is a luxury. It's a privilege, you know. See, Take this your is rest what happened. you got to, because there was there was a period where folk couldn't do that. You know what I'm saying? Be okay, see, this is what happened in the business. This is what happened in the business meetings too. We start on one topic. Now we're gonna do a whole end. separate panel. Well, we're we doing a whole separate panel on liberation. That's where we're gonna go. Right I'm I'm free of mind. We both but it's all connected to the original question. <laughs> Yeah. It's connected to why we do it is. and why we are a coalition because we our intent is to, you know, by our example, to show other black women it is possible, to show black girls it is possible. And I don't want my daughter to have to unlearn um negative stereotypes that she, you know, by this example, she sees it already. So she can kind of she can move into it as as she grows older. She and, also um, has a real mom. And I've been so. quoting a T, I've been quoting TG, T D J. Um, I heard him say, uh, "You are the answer to your great 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 grandparents' prayers." And uh, ever since I heard that, I'm like, "Yeah, yeah!" Like I'm living it. I'm living it. That's true. Like the liberation, the freedoms, the choices, and things that we have. The, the, this movement right here, I can imagine. And it's sensitive to me because my name, I'm named after both of my great grandparents, um, Bernice and Nazarie were my grand grandmothers. So I take that um, very seriously. And I feel like doing the work that I'm doing and that we're doing um, individually and collectively um, is paying homage to our ancestors and to our um, offspring that we bring in the future. Our legacy. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, y'all, this was so rich, right? So, 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 so rich. Um, I know that anybody around the whole world can take something from this. Uh, Black women should live in the land of plenty. We should not have to just choose one. <laughs> Scarcity does, does not exist, right? Um, and because you all are doing the work and inspiring more people to do the work, right? Uh, we can live in the land of plenty. So uh, just to cement these learnings, right? Just to um, make it real and vulnerability uh, for people to carry these bricks along the way, I want to ask each of you this question. And if you could give um, your 60 second spill on this, um, it would be powerful, right? Since coming together in this sisterhood, what have you found the strength to put down and not pick up again as a result, right? Of this sisterhood, of, of, of coming together, right? Of your shared strengths, right? What have you gained the strength to put down and never pick up again? Um, Katina, I want to start with you. <laughs> um, I'm the cry. Me too. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Oh, snap. Take your time. <laughs> Take your time, sister. That I um that I'm not doing this alone. Ashe, and amen. Bernice, since joining this sisterhood, what have you gained the strength to put down and never pick up again? Um, I would definitely have to piggyback off of Tina, um, Katina. And um, I would also say um, being over humble, like it's okay to brag on yourself to speak up for yourself, um, to share those authentic truths about yourself and be proud of your accomplishments without being braggadocious and definitely, definitely sharing and affirming other women's 
other women's um, strength and um, their their attributes and their gifts to the world, help reveal and support other people's gifts to the world. Um, and we do it for people quite a bit, but and it's okay to do it for you, for yourself. I, I've heard people say, I don't want to be the best kept secret. And so I'm practicing that more and more, especially uh, with this group, because they're, they're putting the words in my mouth. I'm like, you know what? You're right. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> so, Amber, what have you gained the strength to put down and never pick up again? So your intersection <laughs> and sisterhood with Dope AF. <clears throat> um, the idea that uh, that my worth is only equal to my productivity. Um, I can conflate those two sometimes because of the work and or the or the accolades or you know that kind of stuff. But um, just I am enough. If I if I don't go do anything else with my business, if I just sit on my couch for the rest of my, I am enough. And and my my worth. I'm worth more than what I can produce. Absolutely. Okay, I say coffee. Uh, the 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 genius behind um, the the gathering of these women. Um, what have you gained the strength to put down and never pick up again as a result of the blossoming of this group? First of all, I don't appreciate having to do the shadow work, and um, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> Um, I um, I think that I have a, you know, if I'm just going to be completely honest and vulnerable, um, that I have a contribution and a value outside of wife and mother. I'm in a, the, I guess you could say the second um, season of my life. My kids are grown. I'm empty nesting now. And just knowing that, like, I have something to contribute to this world outside of just those roles that society says this is what you're supposed to do. And after that, then what? And so, you know, I know as mothers, a lot of times we put things down and we, those are our first responsibilities. And I think that this group has given me the opportunity to look and, and decide what is, what is it that coffee wants to do? What is it that coffee enjoys outside of those other things? And um, just even, not just within the work that we do, but also just personally knowing these women and being in their spaces personally, like going to Bernice's house and seeing so much of um, black womanhood and so much of her interest in, in her self-love and stuff. It just inspires me to be like, okay, I don't have to define myself by what I do for other people. That's good. That's good. That's good. Drop a one in the chat if y'all crying now. Drop a one in the chat if y'all crying. All right. And we're going to swerve on over to the lane of the preacher. The, the sister is anointed, okay? Okay. Uh, Gianni, Gianni, what have you to put down and never pick up again as a, a result of being part of the coalition Dope AF? I think it will be the superwoman syndrome. Mm. Right? That I don't have to be all things to all people. I don't have to carry all this by myself all the time. Sometimes all I need to say is, hey, sis, can you help me out? Or do you know anybody who, or, I, I, you know, I don't, I, I've always had a hard time trusting people to carry things with me, right? It, 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 in work, right? Even, even if I'm on a team with people and everybody got a respective role and they supposed to know their parts, majority of the time, I'm like, you, you want me to look over there when you get finished? You want me to, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm always overextending. And I don't have to overextend. Like, I can trust everybody to hold hold their stuff in their place and to, to, to be able to oftentimes have a little more left over. Like, sis, you sure you don't need nothing? Or I can still come through. I can, you know, and that's a comfort in a world where Black women don't have an opportunity to take no, nothing off. You know, we got a gang of roles everywhere. Gang of roles at home, gang of roles at work. If you go to some sort of cultural institution or a church, you know what I'm saying? You usually got several hats on there. You know, it's just always ripping and running and doing and doing and doing. And I don't have to be superwoman. And I'm so grateful because fuck the cape. I can't save nobody. You know what I'm saying? I can be with you as you save yourself. And I think that's what I appreciate most about these women is that 
being present with people is a it that's a ministry okay everybody can't can't be with folk and that's the value of this group for me is that yeah we can be with each other and there is power in that by itself um and, and we ain't got to put on no extras and dress it up and try to make it cute for nobody we just got to be we got to be all that we are and yeah we get the freedom and the space to do that and we deserve that we're worthy of that and not only do we together amongst us but hell we go out, out outside together and, and, and let other people know hey 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 sis you're not alone over here Tell the way to put the to put the put the put, the, put their ticket over here with us. You know what I'm over saying? Here. You know, it, just so people know you you ain't you ain't gotta have it all together. You ain't you ain't gotta do it all alone. Just just be. That's enough. Sometimes they look at us crazy when we leave in restaurants and we be yelling, "Bye, cousins!" But like we mean that genuinely. I mean, like that's you you look like me. It's family until you ain't. Like that's it. I'm just saying, you know, it's like we we as family. Listen, so yeah. well, everyone, black women are dope AF. We we celebrate, we honor, um, and we look forward to, to sticking along on the journey of this coalition. Uh, thank you so so much, Katina. Thank you so much, Amber. Thank you so much, Diani. Thank you so much, Coffee. Thank you so much, Bernice. Um, love and light for the rest of your journey. And everyone, y'all stick around. Next, we have a fireside chat called Cape the Heart. For black women, but we have our first male guest on the lineup talking about how he shows up globally <laughs> to be in the ring punching with us because that's what we need. Y'all keep it locked. Thank you so much for showing up. Love and light to you, ladies. Same to you. Thank you for, for hosting Thank you. this. have rocked with us for all five days of the summer we're almost at the end but of course we had to save the best for last caping hard for black women i am so 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 honored to have uh the first male <laughs> in the lineup in the history of the blade virtual summit the groundbreaker, the groundbreaker. Yeah. y'all should watch his look at his socials and his linkedin he uses it a lot <laughs> Um, but he is a phenomenal co-founder and CEO, uh, the CEO of Hello Tractor, which is essentially bringing Uber to the farms in Sub-Saharan Africa. Okay, um, they essentially take an app that the, the historically disenfranchised can leverage to get tractor mechanization on their farms without having to use uh, manual labor and without having to pay thirty-five thousand dollars for a tractor. Um, Jahil is esteemed all over the globe. He was recognized by Foreign Policy Magazine as the top 100 global thinkers. Um, he actually served during the Obama administration on their advisory council for doing business in Africa. He was the subcommittee chair for technology. And I, I've had the honor of, over the last year of working with him um, in Hello Tractor, uh, really helping them to, to construct this pay-as-you-go finance solution and really bring access right uh to, to people who really really deserve it across the continent so i'm excited to have him pleasure, um, in this conversation today um, and just know that we are really going to challenge you today right because while we are learning a lot about speaking up and having a voice and having ownership in web 3.0 um and and making sure you create room for other people there will be times in your journey case in point where you have to intersect with people who don't look like you right um with people who don't share your same experiences and still advocate for yourself right still advocate for the women that are con that continue to be marginalized within the margins right so we're gonna talk about our own experiences and our own thoughts around how we can um you know just rise above those things Jaheel, if you could tell the people um who you are uh some about you and, and if you could share you know, the intersections of some women in your life that have helped to mold you and who you are into who you are today. Sure, sure. And uh, and thank you, Casey, for having me as a part of the summit. Um, really proud of you and the work that you're doing. Thank you. With Blaze. And I think there's a lot of overlap in our work. Um, we work in Sub-Saharan Africa.
but a big focus of our work is providing opportunities to those who live on the margins um, of, the, of society, of well-established economic structures. Um, while we focus in Africa, I'm originally from Cleveland, Ohio, from the U.S. And, um, but I was raised in a household like many with a, with a strong mother who um, was a matriarch of the family and is still in us. Uh, I got three siblings. Um, the, the importance of, um, first of all, realizing that we all have value. And even when you're in spaces where you might not be represented well, um, your time in that space is uh, to the benefit of those that are also in that space. Um, you're not, they're not doing you a favor. And I think we were always raised to see um, how we spend our time and talent as at a very bare minimum of even trade. <laughs> uh, and so that's, that's kind of some of the guidance that I brought with me on my journey and hopefully some things we'll touch on in this conversation. Dope, dope, dope. Um, I met his mom. She is super phenomenal. So uh, hats off to her, hats off to his incredible wife uh, and, and, and his beautiful, his beautiful girls. Uh, he's surrounded by women, which um, is, is probably why he, it's, it's easy for G Hill to be receptive uh, to feedback and challenge around, you know, creating more and more and more space for women. Yeah. Um, anybody that knows me knows that, <laughs> you know, I'm gonna raise my hand in a heartbeat, for but sure. the people on the other side of the table, it's not always easy for them to see beyond their own experiences, right? Or to see beyond their own privilege at times, right? Yeah. And, and feel like they're giving something up, right, for other people. Um, so Jaheel, you know, one thing that was surprising for me when I entered the ag space, you know, I had, I had played in um, the tech space a bit because that's who I structured loans for in corporate America. I was definitely heavily immersed in the finance space where it is a white male dominated industry. Yeah. Uh, but coming into the ag space, working with, you know, pay as you go and hello tractor, I did not realize in the beginning that it was also a very male dominated um, industry and not to say that women aren't doing the work on the ground because they are a lot of them are right but i didn't see us right in the yeah. advertisements i didn't see us in the in the boardrooms or in the leadership um spaces etc um what is your take uh i guess to start you know on on this imbalance that exists right now for for women in the ag space yeah. um and what are some of the things that you've learned that can be done to kind of bring the balance well there? i think first of all you got to be intentional and this is an area where I personally had to grow. You know, I thought if you just try and create conditions for parity economically, the gender piece would take care of itself. And what I realized and what you confronted me about was the importance of being incredibly intentional in how you even target who your customer should be and not make assumptions about who who belongs in a space, who deserves a certain opportunity yeah. based on past precedent, because yeah. then you're just reinforcing the bias. Yeah. And um, I think back to when we were setting up our credit program and having uh, a clear gender imbalance yeah. in who we were targeting for financing under the assumption that men wanted to be tractor owners but women didn't yeah it's, it's embarrassing to think about it and certainly to share it publicly but um that was a bias that i brought unconsciously to the table and you confronted me about it and said hey look actually um women are overwhelmingly the growers in africa globally there are more women farmers than men um and oftentimes they're at the very back of the line when it comes to opportunities and accessing loans to own tractors yeah. or inputs um they get shortchanged when it's time to sell their production into the market. And you confronted me about that, and so we had to reshape how we target potential customers. And the end result was just overwhelming success in building out a fantastic pipeline of borrowers who are now almost exclusively women. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's exciting to see. And that comes with a lot of business upside. Yeah. And so even when I talk to people about, you know, some of the challenges that we had within Hello Tractor in maintaining that, that gender balance. I like to talk about it with commercial framing. I like to talk about 
the business upside of focusing on women. Right. Women who tend to default at a lower rate than men. Right. Women who, because they've been marginalized, when they are given the opportunity, outperform their male counterpart. Right. These aren't talking points for ESG or diversity and inclusion departments of corporations. These are conversations that need to happen in the commercial teams when you want to drive commercial outcomes and remain competitive. This is this is where you need to focus. And as professionals, as entrepreneurs, as professionals working in large and small corporations and businesses, um, as you think about yourself and your role in these spaces, understand that you are the value add, right? You are the person bringing something new and unique. Um, I am proud to say that at least at Hello Attractive, we now have more women on our, on our team yes. than men. Yes. And the performance of the company has continued to grow um, as we maintain that, that, that bias towards women and not against women. Yeah. Um, and I think you got to bring that confidence with you. Um, I, I certainly do. When I'm going into an investor meeting or I'm going into a partnership meeting, I know I have a strong army of capable women supporting this business objective. And I know they're going to outperform the male counterparts that are on the other side of that table. Right. And the same is true for the customers that we target. And that's a commercial discussion. We're not doing favors over here. We're driving business results by, by maintaining that, that positive gender bias towards women. Super dope. Like this is caping hard for black women, right? And, and I love how Jaheel said, like this isn't some DNI stuff on the periphery, <laughs> right? Like this isn't some some PR good stuff to say about ESG. Like this is this is what it looks like when a CEO puts equality at, at, in the fabric of their company, right? In the culture of their company and and what I would say, you know, and echoing what Jaheel said to you as female, black female entrepreneurs who will lead the world. You absolutely will. You already have what it takes. Don't be afraid, right? Like, even if you are, do it scared, right? Like, you're going to have to go in these spaces that don't look like you still today, right? Um, and, and, and speak up and say what's the obvious to us that is not the obvious to yeah. a boardroom full of men, right? These are going to be your partners. They're going to be your bankers. <laughs> they're going to be your mentors. They're going to be the people that you consult, etc. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it is it is it is so worth it. So that in the next forty years, our daughters can have a different experience than we're having today. Um, super dope, you yeah. do. Actually, let me let me add something because you touched on something. Yeah. You know, um, the importance of of having representation for our world is, I mean, that, that piece I think we, we touched on. But the truth is that women have always been leading, right? Now, women don't always get the credit, right? In business, in, even if you look at the black community in, in the US and, and the, the advancements that we've made across all of our major movements, there, there were women spearheading and pushing those movements forward and overwhelmingly the reason why we've made those advancements now they don't get the credit they're not always the ones out front um so i think that's that's another area where you know there should be some reassurance i think when you when you think about the the successful track record that women already have in executing and get actually getting stuff done right now i think the tweak or the hack is get credit for the work that you're already doing, right? Yep. And so, anyway, I just want to hundred percent. Like, that drop a one in the chat if y'all still with us, because I we're in the vein right now. We about to go somewhere in a second. Drop a one in the chat if you are still with us. I see y'all. <laughs> All right. So, the hack is making sure that women get the credit, right? And that's why this this conversation, cape and harm for Black women, is so important because while we are dope. While statistically we are starting businesses at, at the fastest clip of any other demographic of women-owned businesses, we are we are starting. We are the only demographic as Black people who have women starting more businesses than men, right? In the same race, we don't get the credit, right? We are the the heartbeat of the movement, but it is men on on, on center stage, right? When you're talking about you know um, from a political standpoint, we're talking about from a from a, a an equity or social justice standpoint, etc. Um, which means that we need other people that don't look like us, right, yeah. to, to, to cape hard for us. So I want to answer the questions in a lot of people's minds, because um, I know it, right, I, I, I've spoken with you, I've experienced it myself. 
what do we do in situations where the person we're helping, right, the, the people we're working for, the people we're consulting, don't get it and they refuse to get it and they want us to play the game you know they want us to to, to to do the subtle things like just go ahead and grab the coffee instead of telling the person off at the other side of the table that assume we were the secretary right um when they want us to play the role of you know when somebody says something that is that is a macro aggression in a meeting such as oh i thought casey was a man you know i'm surprised you're a woman <laughs> right um, some folks are uncomfortable with us challenging partners because to them it is, you know, well, that's less revenue, right? Um, you know, Jihad, I want to hear your take on this. Yeah. I will say mine first, you know, um, I, in, in, my, in my business, right, where I do coach black women and I do consult other companies and I do speak for companies, right, Amazons of the world, colleges of the, of, of the U.S., etc., um, I work with the willing and I am willing to walk away 100% of the time or put up boundaries and say I will not do business with this person or I will not interact with this person because I'm going to protect my peace, I'm going to protect my integrity, I'm not going to waste my energy trying to change somebody's mind about me. I'm going to work with the willing, right? Um, so my stance on that is to be radical enough to, to say no, uh, even if it means somebody's sponsoring you but you can't use certain words, right? Um, you need to say people of color instead of black, right? Like these small little things that that make our 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 um, our, our attempts right uh, diluted, right? I'm willing to walk away 100% of the time and, and, and work with the willing because I know there is so much brilliance that's pent up inside of us and nobody's giving us a chance. You know what I'm saying? I know that we're already 10 times as good as other people. How do I know? Because we had to be to get the, the entry-level jobs we got in the first place. Like, we had to be 20 times as good to get the promotion, right? Um, so for me, uh, you know, the answer to that is is, is 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 moving horizontally more, right? And working with the willing, because they cold anyway, right? Yeah. And then rising and creating a new precedent. But, but yeah. how would you say women should handle the situation when they are often in environments where people don't get it? they refuse to get it yeah well i think it's it's hard it's hard to give an opinion uh specifically for on on the gender side because i'm not like i'm okay i'm not a woman but <laughs> um i will say in these difficult moments i think self-awareness -aware first of all helps a lot knowing where your boundaries are help a lot because something that might be a trigger for me may not be a trigger for Casey or may not be a trigger for you. Um, but if, if, some, if somebody is crossing that boundary and they're doing something or saying something that is a trigger, you have to have the self-awareness to confront it in real time. Yeah. And that's where leaning into conflict, and I'm, a, I'm big on le lean into conflict. Woo. I don't have a problem telling somebody, and, and what bothers me may not bother the next person That's good. but the things that do bother me i take enjoyment in letting somebody know hey you crossing the line mm -hmm. right and and embrace that um and sometimes you know what might seem like uh it should be a trigger for you may not be right it, it really depends on the person that's where that self-awareness comes in and you should really sit with yourself and say i know i'm going into a difficult situation I know, you know, I might not be um, well received in this situation, and there are certain things that I need to get out this situation. But I have boundaries, and okay. this is what they are. Because when when you don't set those clear boundaries, and and when you don't make it clear to yourself and others what your boundaries are, um, when people cross those boundaries and you allow that, you have to live with that. Like that that sticks with you Say beyond that. the moment, Say right? Yep. And it. I don't care what the opportunity was it is never worth the cost of your integrity and your character right and so just just having a, a very clear understanding of what that is and for, again for everybody is different if you are, I'm not gonna talk about it publicly but my triggers are very unique <laughs> to me and my experience just growing up low income in a kind of urban environment where there are so many tropes thrown around about the people who come from those environments yep. and when somebody triggers me i take delight in checking them <laughs> yep. and i think and but but i think anybody who kind of settles on like okay these are gonna be these are gonna be my boundaries don't trade those boundaries and allow people to trample on those boundaries um because you'll carry that experience with you and i guarantee you 
10 times out of 10, it wouldn't be worth it. Mm. Uh, and so that would be that would be my feedback. I've had experiences. I come from a similar background, worked in banking. And I remember um, getting into a physical altercation. And this is such a ridiculous story. I'm not even going to go into detail. <laughs> but <laughs> I remember getting into a physical altercation with somebody in my office who was being blatantly racist to not even me. To, to one of my colleagues, it was two black people in the office, and and this person was being very derogatory um, and just blatantly racist. And I confronted him about it, and, and we got into a physical altercation. And I took so much delight in that engagement. <laughs> now it hurt me professionally, but when it comes to my integrity, I, I still think back on that moment with so much. <laughs> So much ridiculous pride, okay? <laughs> now, you should not do that. Because <laughs> you, you might get arrested. However, I didn't. And, um, but I think it's a story that I like to reference, at least in time, I don't really share it much. But I like to reference it because it, it speaks to the importance of, of maintaining boundaries and uh, putting, putting integrity first. That, that's so good, um, Jahil, and, and I, I just want to say this as I'm feeling it. You know, this is leadership, right? Like vulnerability, vulnerability has to be a part of the leadership that 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 we embody as 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 black leaders, right? As black business owners, as as, as black global thought leaders, right? Um, because the status quo won't do, right? Uh, it was Andre Lloyd who said, you know, the master's tools will never dismantle the master's house. So if you keep on playing the game, if you keep on code switching, if you keep acting like this stuff doesn't re-traumatize you and re-trigger you, right? Like the same systems that are in place will continue to be in place, right? It was it was vulnerability that led to tough conversations that Jaheel and I had when, you know, I'm like, you know, I'm just not seeing enough of us. Like, what is this, right? And it was vulnerability that allowed him to respond in a way, right? That because he trusted me, right? Like these these words don't come up enough in leadership, right? But like, like these are the things that that legends are made of, right? Like these are the things that legions will follow, right? Because they feel something. Like like that's that is the audacity we have to have when we're going into these spaces, you know leading with, with vulnerability enough that we create trust, right? Because when somebody does not look like you, I'm gonna tell y'all this, <laughs> you know, and some of y'all know, right? When somebody doesn't look like you, right? And you don't know that they truly empathize with your experiences, right? You don't you don't know if they truly get, you know, what, what, what's at the heart of what your personal mission is. It, it is only trust. It is only trust that'll, that'll, that'll get you to go all in with them and, and them to go all in with you, right? So. Um, you know, for a long time, you know, black women, especially because we've been the last woman on the ladder, right? We have been so guarded, right? And we have been so closed off and we've been so hard to read, justifiably so, right? That we limit our partnership ability. We limit our impact ability because, you know, <laughs> like, like we don't know how to grip people in a way that they follow us. You know, we don't know how to grip people in a way where we change their minds. Not because, you know, in, in traditional corporate sense, we just keep you know, working for free, trying to get somebody, you know, but literally like we, we, we strike him at the core, right? Where a man all of a sudden says, oh my gosh, like I didn't even, re I was making assumptions. Yeah, let's, let's, let's try this out. Let's test it and see what sticks to the wall, right? right. Um, so I just want to underscore that because I think that's a big part of who Jahil is as a leader. You know, um, that, that's one reason I trust him as much as I do, right? Um, and, and it's a big part of the way that I lead. Like, I, I, I always, they, they laugh at me a lot because sometimes we're in a business meeting and I'm like, man, that's so deep. Like, I feel it right here and I gotta say it. <laughs> right, because that means something to me, right? Um, yeah. Thank you and for being here. No, I appreciate it. Um, thanks for giving us a platform. I think the, the, the piece that I'll add to, to what you mentioned, Casey, is um, when, you, when you do allow yourself to kind of live in that truth, mm -hmm. yeah. be vulnerable enough, to say, hey, you know, what you're saying, and it, and it does take trust even to be vulnerable and yeah. share what you said is hurtful. You may not yeah. real, you may not realize this, but what you said was hurtful, yeah. and um, I'm not gonna stand for that yeah. uh, because of how it makes me feel. Um, I think two things happen. Number one, you don't have to live with the baggage of being in spaces where you're not I completely say. accepted, number one. So that that's a benefit. Uh, and then number two, you start to naturally filter people, places to protect your own mental health and well-being by just saying, hey, I told you how I feel. 
I told you that your actions created that feeling yep. and now you have a choice. Yep. You can change or we don't have to engage with each other. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And and what you'll realize is there's a lot of good people in this world. Yeah. There's some not so good people mm -hmm. relative to who you are and what you need, mm -hmm. right? Um and you have to start to do the filtering. And as you as you get better and better at that filtering process, you start to whittle down the people that you engage with and you start to optimize the time that you spend on people that matter, that. right? That that you're in sync with, that um, you can share with and, 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 and be comfortable being vulnerable with. And only then can you even grow, right? Mm -hmm. And so why waste time? with folks that aren't going to give you that space and that courtesy of of being truly who you are and um because ultimately it's gonna hurt you it's gonna hurt your growth and it to, to be honest it's not even gonna help them right it's not even gonna help them because they just put a cap on your greatness that's right and, and so they can't even get as much out of you and that's so right. um yeah just you know again lean into that conflict yeah you know? for real but, though no, but don't, but don't, you know, I'm embarrassed by, let me, let me correct something. I'm embarrassed <laughs> by how far that situation went. And the only reason it went that far was because I let that person make small comments and, and have, and, and these microaggressions added up mm -hmm. and it reached a tipping point to where it was no longer a small thing. Right. For me, it was a big thing and I overreacted. Versus catching the microaggression right there and saying, hey, here's my boundary. That's good. Don't do that. That's good. Um, or I'm going to remove myself from this space. Because I'm talented. I can go somewhere else. Right. right? I have right. options and we all have options. Right. And we all have value that we can bring. Right. Um, but does that person get to benefit from your value? Mm -hmm. If they choose to live within the boundaries that you set, yes, they can. And if they don't, we should part ways. That's so good. If, if any of y'all were waiting for permission, right? We're waiting for permission to show up. Um, I ain't gonna say authentically because they're overusing that word over there in LinkedIn land. I would say in honesty, right? Um, if any of y'all were hiding from being labeled as the angry black woman, as if you don't have something to be angry about, come on now. <laughs> Uh, this is your permission slip. This is your permission slip, right? Take up space. I mean, all of the space, like anywhere that you operate. I don't care if it's at home, right? Anywhere that you operate, take up space, be seen, truly seen, right? Let those guards down, right? Be vulnerable. Give people a chance to, to, to help you. Give people a chance to love you. I, I always go back to an, an analogy with Big Mama now, right? Big Mama, we knew she was so strong, you know? Big Mama had so much love in her heart, you know? But I am absolutely sure that when Big Mama died on her deathbed, you know, <laughs> I am absolutely sure that she died un underprotected, undersupported, underseen, right? Because she never asked, right? It, it, my, my Big Mama, my great grandmother never asked for help with anything, but I know she was tired because she was helping all of us. She was finding money for all of us. She was, she was cooking for all of us. She was bringing people off of the streets, you know, for, for all of us, right? Um, but she never opened her mouth to say what she needed. You know, I know that that big daddy beat big mama But she stayed with him until she died and after she died he got redemption He got saved and I to, to this day. I know my family look at me sideways But to this day, I don't think the, the cost the price was worth it, right? Um, because she needed better. She deserved it better after I experienced domestic violence for myself I said I literally thought of big mama in the moment when he was hit. I was like this this shit is horrible, you know um, so we owe it to ourselves today, to real time, with the people that we love, with our family members, with our, with our co-workers, with our partners, to say real time what we need, right? Real time, you know, how we, how we feel we should be treated. Give them an opportunity to, and I'm telling you, you're gonna be so surprised. <laughs> Give them an opportunity to, to love you better, to support you better, to, to, to show up for you better, to cape harder for you, right? And those that don't, like we both iterated and reiterated over and over again, um, you have full license to walk away work with the willing like like there are so many called people waiting in the wings um dying for you to show up D literally dying for you to show up if, if the internet and all this stuff we're talking about with web3 etc if it has shown me anything it is that there are people that have been out there left dormant waiting for somebody like you with your voice to show up and web3 
gives us the opportunity to serve those niches directly. No middlemen, <laughs> no centralization getting away, no algorithms barring us from no gatekeepers. From, no gatekeepers, right? Um, so do that. I, I thank y'all for rocking with us. Jaheel, thank you so much. So me. much for all of the gems. Um, you are so powerful. I, I respect you so, so, so much. Um, that's all we got. Any mutual. last words? Um, well, the, the feeling is mutual. Um, thank you for the platform and allowing me the opportunity to share. I'm inspired uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing your growth and the growth of this movement. Yeah. Um, we're not asking for permission. Oh, that was yesterday. Today's Same. a new day. Woo. Yesterday's price is not today's price. Yesterday's price is not today's price. <laughs> All right, y'all. Uh, enjoy the last few sessions. Thank you so much for rocking with us. Keep going, sis. All right, my people. How y'all feeling after that? How are y'all feeling after that? Um, and I want to talk to you. We intentionally have a break right now. The summit is coming to an end. Oh, Aaliyah said full. Samia said yes. Empowered. Uh, raise your hand. I want to talk to you. I want to dialogue with you. I want to dialogue with you. The summit is coming to an end. And I do not want y'all to retreat to safety. I don't. Jaheel Oliver is the CEO of my largest consulting client. I consult Hello Tractor. Blaze Group LLC consults Hello Tractor. We designed a revolutionary financial product for their company. There's already been, you know, over a million out there. We're doing another 3 million soon. And what we talked about is the way that I show up with that client, meaning, meaning they know good and well that when any of their clients or their partners talk to me crazy, they already know Casey not with it. We not, we're not doing business with you. Not if she's going to be involved or, or, or they will insert themselves <laughs> to face off. I, I do not put money over my integrity. I do not put um, labels over the advancement of black women, right? Those are the things that we unpacked. That was real when Jahil said Casey confronted me about X, Y, Z. I sure did. I sure did. Because we cannot assume that black women or that women, period, don't want tractors to work their 100 acre fields like our ancestors we talked about earlier this morning. We cannot assume that Women do not just need to see themselves in advertisements in order to feel protected and shown up for and caked hard for, right? So I intentionally, and this was the first male to ever grace the stage because I'm so serious about protecting Black women. This is always going to be safe space for you all, right? But I needed to show you, I needed to show you the importance of holding the people that you are working beside, holding them accountable as well. I promise you it will not cost you everything. I promise you. <laughs> it is what it is the very thing that will make you a global force because you're already ready today. Um, and and I, I believe and I hope, right, that the transparency that Jaheel showed shows that he is human. He has not figured it all out, but he embraces, right? He embraces that type of, of direction and feedback, right? Because he he needs us, right? He said, y'all are the best customers. He said, man, these people doing better in their loans than anybody else, right? So show up, take up space. But I want to hear from you, right? Because literally, y'all, uh, in three sessions, it's over. 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 And it will be your opportunity to take everything that is in your belly right now out into the world and to build and to expand and to speak, okay? Two more sessions. And then I'm doing a, a, a closing speech and it's over, okay? So I want to hear from you right now. Um, what are your reactions to that particularly, right? Um, was it helpful? Um, any any epiphanies, et cetera? Aaliyah, I'm handing you the mic, mama. Um, Y'all can hear me? Okay, I, I'm, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm full off of that. Like I said, I've always been very, very loud. And I do lean into confrontation. But since I'm a ghetto girl, excuse me, I am a trench baby. Like I'm from the west side of Chicago. I don't play that. Don't play with me. I had to learn how to, to be comfortable with checking people in corporate America because the, the angry black woman stigma, stigma was so strong over my life. And this had been generations before me. This is my grandmother. This is my great grandmother. Like your grandma crazy, your great grandma crazy, you know? So we always, 
I was raised up hearing that, you know, like when you check people, they be like, oh, she crazy. But you I learned like walking in my power, being who I am, standing firm on who I am. You're going to respect me. And if you don't respect me, I don't have no problem removing myself because I've never been I've never removed myself from a room that I was not welcome in. And God didn't take me somewhere better. So I'm, I'm strong in my divinity that he going to carry me every time. So, yeah, you're going to handle me with respect. So that just gave me a little more empowerment and showed me like moving in that does not make me an angry black woman and even if i am pissed off i do got every right to be because you ain't gonna play with me so being that and growing in my power and my intellect my voice like to even even to hear from a black man because you know we check them they call us crazy you know so even to hear that it just it, it it um settled something in me that that made me feel like i'm doing the right thing like okay we here i checked you i handled it politely and even if I'm not handling politely, I don't got to make it easy for you to chew. You're going to swallow it anyway. Like, that's just that. So I, I, I felt empowered by that. I really appreciate y'all for bringing us that. I, that was that was much love for me in my in my loud ghetto trench girl, you know. I love that, Aaliyah. I love that. And, and like, your representation is needed. Like, be clear. Respectability politics is bullshit. Let's be very clear because I promise you, even if you have, you have your nails clipped down low and you wear flesh tone stockings and you speak, oh God, this is amazing. <laughs> okay. right? you, will, you are still a black woman. You are still a black woman. So I, I applaud you, Aaliyah, for showing up as your entire self and you're exactly right. Even if you are angry, you are justified in being so, right? So take up space, keep doing what you're doing, sis. I love the energy of the ancestors that are in you. And I'm excited, <laughs> sis, to work with you after this. Yes, event. I'm so excited. Yeah, I appreciate you, sis. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Casey. Super dope, super, super dope. Let's keep this rolling again, right? And I, and I need this feedback, right? Um, some of y'all have been rocking with us for a while, Nina and some other people, right? And so, you know, I really take feedback to heart. I will flip, change, squash anything, right? If it doesn't edify the community and try something different. And this is the first time we brought a mail up, right? So this feedback is very, very helpful. It does not mean we're going to keep doing it, <laughs> right? But this felt necessary. And I just want to understand whether it was effective, right? In the first place. Uh, so Mallory, you are up next, Mama Sita. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, um, I just wanted to say that that was really, really powerful um, because I feel like, um, sorry, uh, ever since I was a little girl, it had always been me and my mom, and it was really the women in the family, but I had never experienced a man who had my back and who was there for me. Um, Cause my father, me and my father really just now started to mend our relationship, but from a young age, I didn't have that all the time. And so to see, to see that um, was, was really good <laughs> to see that there are men who, um, who go hard for black women and who are not afraid to stand up for them and who are not afraid to um, speak up against the injustice that we go through every day. Um, so that was, that was really good. Um, and I really felt that. Um, so thank you so much for uh, having that. Um, and this summit was very, very powerful and very eye-opening for me. So thank you so much. Thank you, sis. Uh, those are really good tears. Those are really, 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 really good tears. Um, because so Mallory, the, the only way through it is through it. You know, going over it doesn't heal it. Going under it doesn't sideways. The only way through it is through it. And I don't take for granted that you just articulated those words on a stage, knowing that you are in front of thousands, right? Like, like that is evidence of something on the inside of you blooming that was always there, sis. So I encourage you to keep opening your mouth. 
Um, I, I believe that the vulnerability that you are showing in this moment is evidence of your ability to continue to love and continue to try and to let in the good people that are absolutely going to continue coming on your path. Um, and I just send you so much love. I, I want to stay connected to you. I, I love your spirit. Um, and I thank you so much for sharing, Mama Sita. Thank you so, so much. All right, y'all, we're going to keep this rolling. This is really good feedback. Again, I take this to heart um, because if it doesn't edify you, ain't no point. <laughs> ain't no point in it. Um, dope. I'm going to bring up Samia now. Samia, any reactions, reflections? Um, what did you feel about this segment, which is very different, right, from anything we've done in the summit thus far? Um, first, let me say, I, I put it in a chat. That's my daughter. and. I didn't know she was going to say that. I had already raised my hand. So I'm a little like, ooh, <laughs> Casey, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I put in the chat, if for nothing else, for my baby to see what she just seen and for her to open up and talk, because she doesn't talk. She's just like me. And I can't thank you enough for just, having this platform. I had no clue. She's in the other room. I had no clue that she was going to say that. So thank you. I can go on, but let me stay on track. Ooh, all right. Um, I, oh, Casey just got to somebody else. I can't even get it out right now. <laughs> okay, Mama, take your time and the tears flow. That's okay. Take your face. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm a, persevere and then I'm gonna go downstairs and hug my baby um that was powerful I so I did not look at the schedule um in full so I I know you kind of mentioned it before we went to it and I don't know what I was expecting I was just like okay that's nice no I think hearing his perspective um and his authority um was enlightening. I needed to hear everything he said, and it it was it felt like extra support. I don't know if that if that makes sense, but it felt like a little bit more, uh, you know, to yep. it. Um, yep. And yeah, I he he was dope. He was dope, and I needed to see something beyond what the status quo or the media wants to reflect about a black man. You, you're seeing someone that was honest and had integrity and is um, succeeding and thriving in what he does and bringing you on side to become even better. Um, because, you know, um, some males, some men, you know, it, it's all about them. So having a female on board, it, it's a whole nother ball game. It's like to some, they view it as, um, a decrease or, you know, something that they shouldn't do. But um, thank you for having him on. I hope you continue to, if nobody else, at least have him. <laughs> you know, I he, he was dope and I learned a lot from that. So thank you, Casey. Beautiful. I um, That means everything, Samia. Um, everything. I mean, from the, from the, point of your your daughter being on first and and showcasing how this is an intimate experience for her you know mm -hmm. like a truly intimate experience for her that means everything and these are the things that are true about intergenerational wealth it is not yeah uh, about money that they printing for us mm -hmm. it's really not for us it is about passing down how to our children how to cope better than we did Right. How to have peace, you know, beyond what we were able to have. Right. How to be vulnerable. Right. For their, the entirety of their lives when we just found in our 30s, 40s and 50s. Right. So um, I celebrate that piece, Samia. Um, and, and this and this second piece that you gave too, the fact that it hit differently than you've expected, you know, um, you know, when I was talking to Jahil about doing this. Um, and again, for anybody who's just listening or just coming in, um, Jahil is the CEO of a company that Blaze Consults. It, 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 they're, they're our largest corporate client, right? Um, mm -hmm. And 
he said, well, Casey, like me, you want me to speak about this? Like, 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 I'm not the expert. And I told him legit, nobody has figured this out, Jaheel. Nobody, no, nobody has figured out how to cake hard for black women, but you doing the work. I know, I know you doing the work <laughs> and figuring out as you go, because I stay on your neck. Right. And you don't retreat, you don't fold, et cetera. So we have a responsibility to be the thought leader since we can't find any. We have a responsibility to talk about what's not working and where we bumped our toe. And, you know, and that's all we did. That is all we did. We just talked about the things that we've done. Some things not right. Some things turned out great. Right. Um, but I, I thank you, Samia, for giving feedback because there is no data on this that it was effective. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and and. Um, I feel you, sis. I, as you were talking, literally, I thought about um, my father, my father, um, and how. Whoa, I'm about to get emotional. Happy Me Father's too. Day to my daddy, and Happy Father's Day to all the males out there. Happy Father's Day to your significant males in your lives. I thought about how I spent my entire life, you know, holding and harboring hurt with my dad about my dad towards my dad right him, him never knowing it mm -hmm. right because I thought that I had to be strong enough to carry it by myself right mm -hmm. but there were things that I was upset about about my childhood there were ways I wanted to be protected after my mother was murdered and I was going from house to house that I felt like he didn't show up for me for right and then when I when I got into um, the latter part of my twenties, after I experienced domestic violence and moved across the country, all these things, I started therapy for the first time. I started articulating in therapy for the first time how I truly felt. I had never done that before, right? Mm -hmm. And it broke something in me. It fractured something in me. And so, for the first time, I started having vulnerable conversations with my daddy about how I really felt. And I'm his baby girl. He still calls me his baby girl, but it was the first time he'd ever seen me upset with him. And I, I was screaming, Samia. I was screaming. I never yelled at my daddy, but I was screaming. I was so angry. That's how much pent up anger was on the inside of me, right? And for the first time in my life, right? And this does tie to the conversation with Jaheel, right? Cape and heart for Black women and, and how he said, you know, lean into conflict and be honest, <laughs> you know? Right. Um, for the first time, Right. I decided that I wasn't going to clean it up on the other side of that conversation. I wasn't going to call after and act like everything was OK. I was going to leave it up to him to decide how he wanted to carry the load, if at all. Right. And months that passed thereafter. Right. We talked less than we had before because mm -hmm. Casey made sure that she did not carry it. I, I, had to, I had to force myself not to put it back on my back. And whatever our relation turned into was going to be the result of both of us showing up. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so after a few months, our conversations picked up, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And then, y'all, it was probably a, a 12 months later in the middle of the night, in the middle of the night, my daddy texted me. And his text read, I'm sorry for not protecting you when you couldn't protect yourself. Wow. Thank you for still loving me. That was it. Wow. That that is why that conversation was worth it. Even though we continued our like he was still evolving, right? So it's not my it, it was not my responsibility. We're talking about black men caping for black women. It was not my responsibility, right, to force him to change. It was not my responsibility to 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 hold his hand and usher him into how he should show up for me, right? That right. real conversation hit something inside of him. And over a 12-month period, he finally got, I know he got it because those two sentences. <laughs> was what I needed my entire life, right? So um, y'all speak up, y'all take up space, you give people the opportunity to decide and whatever they choose to do, whatever they choose to do is not your burden. You lean in if they with it and you lean out if they not. Um, love and light to you, Samia. You too, you too. Thank you, mama. All right, we're gonna keep this rolling. Um, again, we are talking about reflections, reactions, feedback, right? On this session that we just heard, Caping Hard for Black Women, where the first ever male showed up on the stage of the Blade Virtual Summit. I'm kicking it to you, Mrs. Catherine Young. Uh oh, Miss Catherine, Mrs. Catherine, I'm thinking some issues that some other people have been having, so try to, uh, oh, here you go. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Hello? 
Hi. Can you? Oh, I just want to say this has been a wonderful, wonderful thing that I've joined. And this, this, this now you get nervous. But anyway, I couldn't understand why you were so strong. But now that I heard your story, I understand why. Because people with some women don't have boundaries. They've been taught in their young years, don't say anything, shut up, keep it to yourself. And when they don't do it, they get mental illness and they suffer. So thank you, because my mother suffered all her life, okay? Because she didn't speak up for herself. And I did that, come on here to cry. But thank you, because it's hard out there. It's hard for the women and it's hard for the men because they get beat down too. And when they get beat down, they beat down their women. So thank you, that's all I have to say. Thank you so much, Mrs. Catherine. I love you, I adore you. And your story is our story. Your mama's story is our story. I adore you, thank you so much. I'll show you an amen, that was good, that was good. Sierra, I'm handing you the mic. Reactions and reflections to this fireside chat we just had on Caping Hard for Black Women. Miss um, Catherine, I love you. And thank you. I just wanted to start with that. Miss Catherine, I love you. I think we got a meeting scheduled and it's crazy. I just came across her name because I hadn't been seeing it. And I just messaged her. I'm like, hey, you know, so we got a meeting coming up and I love you and thank you. But um, to go from there, um, needed, I feel like, just like how you mentioned in there, you feel like authentic self is overused in LinkedIn. I feel like I will be, I will be overusing it right now because it's like, it's an understatement because in the state that we're in right now, um, there are so many forces that try to put the black man and the black woman against each other. And it's strategic. It's strategic. And um, I'm going to try not to go too deep because, you know, um, I'm celebrating Father's Day with my fiance and we we talking about Father's Day. Um, we talking about a man who grew up with a father and he's raising his first son that was born on his birthday. Come on, legacy. And the way that this man capes for me stronger than I can cape for myself, I just wish that the, that women knew that that was out there. Whether it's not, even if it's not within a spouse or a significant other, it's within a brother that you never got the chance to meet. It's within a cousin. It's within a neighbor. These men are out here caping for us. And I don't want no one to fall into that narrative. So this needs to be seen and it needs to be said because for me, whenever I get to too into my feelings about what's going on around us and i just want to be like you know if anything else that ain't black i have to think about the freedom riders because we didn't we didn't sit at those 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 um we didn't sit at those posts by ourselves there was other white people right along the side of us that were caping for us so we need to know and we need to show that these men are out here caping for us so i needed this we needed this and i'm going and I'm going to show this. I'm going to show this. Y'all need to know that they're out here for us. And please don't fall into this narrative because they're pushing it for a reason. It's, it's strategic because the strength that's within us, the strength that's within the black man, the black woman. And I'm not talking in the relationship standpoint. I'm talking about strictly platonic, strictly cheering for each other, being each other's backbone, falling on each other. Man, that type of strength is going to take over this country. So thank you. So good, Tierra. I feel the fire in your voice. So go forth in the world and take up space, mama. <laughs> Super dope. Um, okay, so I am kicking it over to Nina, my love. Uh, Nina, your reactions and reflections to this fireside chat called Caping Hard for Black Women. Oh, first of all, Tierra just dropped the mic, okay? I don't even know how I'm going to come behind that. All of the women before me have been amazing in their reflections and their responses and so heartfelt. Um, I just want to start and say that Casey, that conversation was so necessary. Um, I put in the chat that he gave me Cory Booker vibes. Um, and it, it took me back to watching that conversation or that, um, statement that Cory Booker gave during the, um, the ceremonies of, uh, Justice Brown. Um, and it's so important not only for us to see and feel and understand that there are black men who are caping for us, but also to show our children um, that we do not have to have the experiences of our grandmothers and our great grandmothers and our mothers 
Um, when I think about black men caping for women, um, my grandfather, I have one had one grandfather who beat my grandmother to she was the blackest color of black and her skin color was the whitest color of white paper. Um, I had another grandfather who stayed on the bottle. He, he died an alcoholic. Um, and I know other stories of, of, of fathers and black men and grandfathers who weren't even present. And so it's so important to have those conversations and to see and to feel and to know that those brothers are there because um, it changes the story, it changes the narrative, and it changes the trajectory of where our daughters are going to go and what they will know and what they will see. It changes the trajectory of where our sons, what they will become and who they cater for and who they cover and protect. Um, as I said, I've been in and out all, 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 all session and you know, Casey, that's not even like me, um, but I, I've been here where I can be here. And I think it's so important that um, we show up for our children. We show up for our children so that we can change the narrative. I'm gonna throw your words back on you, Casey, from last year. You, cho you told us that the gag to the game was to show up and open our mouths. So for my children to see how my husband and I communicate with each other through conflict, through good times, through bad times, through struggle, through, through things that we get right, through things that we get wrong, it's us showing up and opening up our mouths so that they understand how to communicate and to support one another. And it's when we can change that system within our household that we change the community around us. And when we change the community around us, that's when we change the world that we live in. And so I, I take it back to the words that you gave us last year, the gag, the gag gift is showing up and opening our mouths and being examples for our babies that are watching us. They're watching what we do. They're listening to what we say. And so um, it's, that conversation was so necessary. We need more, we need more, we need more of stories like that, of conversations like that to overpower what we've been taught and what we've been um, repetitively shown that our black men are only good to beat us, to drink alcohol, to do drugs and to end up in jail. And so we need these conversations. We have to show up for each other just like that each and every time. Casey, I love you. You, I'm not even gonna you. get into. I'm not even gonna get into your flowers. You already know who it is. <laughs> but I'm telling y'all in the chat, give her her flowers now because she's not gonna hang on at the end of the session to get. I'm gonna it. do it differently this time. I promise. I'm gonna hang on. You, know, ooh, I'm gonna have to cover my face, but I'm gonna hang on this time. I, I love promise. you, Casey. I love you. I love you, and you mean it. I love you too, Nina. Thank you so much, y'all. That's important what Nina said. That is important what Nina said. And it's something that we repeat over and over and over and over and over in the community. That you have to open your mouth. Think about, think about what we learned when around the first of the month, things was tight in the household, but nobody articulated why. So we grow up with these, with these unhealthy relationships. And, the, and these fear-based relationships with, with money and, and bills and, and, and spending and all of these things, think about, right? The conflicts that happen in families and the secrets that are swept under the rug and nobody explains why, right? So think about the complexes that so many people have about not speaking their truth for protection because they got to protect the family name. Think about that, right? Because nobody's talking about this stuff. Nobody is giving vocabulary to these things, right? Our generation are learning words like post-traumatic stress disorder, right? And anxiety and social anxiety and depression. Our parents didn't have those tools, right? So you have to, like Nina is saying, open your mouth, even in your households, right? Have these conversations so that, so that, and that's and again, that is inter intergenerational wealth. That is legacy, <laughs> right? Um, so that the next generation can cope better than we did. That they can have interpersonal relationships better than we did. That they can show up in vulnerability, right? Understanding that yes, your feelings might be hurt, but the ride is worth it anyway. The journey is worth it anyway. So so good. I'm gonna be quiet, <laughs> Gina. I'm bringing you up to hear your reflections and reactions to the fire. Chat that was just had called Caping Hard for Black Women. 
Yeah, thanks, Casey. Um, wow, it's just been so many awesome comments. I'm just like processing them in my head and just even going back to um, this couple of comments that he made. First of all, it was just so awe-inspiring to have a male's perspective and for him to come on and keep it so real, for him to beginning, talk about how he came, you know, from the States and his background. So he'd let you know right away that he, he's not he's not foreign in the sense that he's he's here. You know, it's many more like him here. We can find that. And earlier this week, we talked about finding your tribe or your tribe finding you. If you don't have a male um, ally in your network, keep your network open because that is gold right there. That is gold. The media wants to tell us like uh, one of the other um, women just that media says they're bad, you know, black men, this black men, that. And now the directive is to continually show them what sexual preference they have. They find every male and put them in a skirt, every black male and put them in a skirt or a dress. Well, and, and trust me, I have nothing wrong with people's sexual preference. But what happened to keep that in the bedroom? Why is that plastered for our Black men? Because our Black men are more than that. So they are getting beat up from that angle, testing their masculinity. And when they're hurt and beat up, they're bringing it back to the Black women. And it's wrong. It's a vicious, ugly cycle. So when I saw this man today, he was standing there and speaking his truth. He was empowering women. He was so strong. And then I think about the other network of men that I've seen in my life that are the same way. But yet media doesn't find them. We never see these men. I mean, you got to search hard, hard and low to find them. So for you to find Jalil, bring him out today, it was just really gold. It was good. And for me, myself, I want to continue. I have a son that's 22. And that's the kind of man that I've taught him to be. And I want to encourage him to continue to be. And even my extended nephews and, and those who I don't even know yet. If you have a son, Take that obligation and make him that kind of man. Don't accept just what the media gives you. Don't accept that all it can be black men can be a rappers. No, there's nothing wrong with rap music, but there's more to life. And that's what Jalil was helping us to see. We could get more out of our black men if we work with them. They're allies and we can get farther with them on our side. So yeah, thank you, Casey, for, for bringing that talent to us. Thank you all you women who have shared and supported and gotten emotional trying to get your point across. I love that spirit. It touched my heart. And I'm just really enjoying this whole last four days summit. I'm hating that it's not on tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> because I'm all in. And this has been fantastic. But thank you. Thank you for finding that for us today. We needed it. Thank you, Gina. Such, such, such good feedback. Very robust feedback. So I appreciate you sharing as well. Thank you so much. <laughs> Ah, oh, so good. And and, and I, I agree. Um, and we'll we'll have to wrap this session there because there are, like I mentioned, right, three more, two more talks, and then I'm closing it out. Um, but the nuance is so important, right? We don't need perfection, right? When when I was like to let's do this, like I, I don't need perfection, right? We just we just talk about where we are because there is nuance, even in the black male story, right? Uh, there is nuance, right? Like there are so many terms and opinions around what masculinity is. We need to tell our own stories, right? Not all men <laughs> want to be out there with the toolkit. You know, come on, chefs, come on, come on. Uh, you know, the the bakers, come all of these things, right? Just like women, many women in here, Asia, several other ones, right? We show up in in male dominated spaces, the construction workers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? There is so much nuance to our experiences, right? To our sexualities, right? To our preferences, to our gender identities, all of that, right? Like perfection does not exist. That's what Dr. Cheryl Carr told us today, right? And so um, Blaze is gonna keep creating stages, not just tables, and I, and I challenge all of you to do the same. All right, the final three for the whole summit, not just day five, but the final three for the entire summit, keep it locked, we have two more talks from incredible black women i am closing it out with my closing keynote called why not me and then we will announce the official leaders uh the winners the top 15 um and it's a wrap all right i'll see y'all on the other side love you deep i mean it peace
So I want to make sure that you know how to elevate your business with the Enneagram. And we're going to talk about success secrets so that you can really become the best version of yourself in every way that you operate. A little about me. My name is Kristen Edwards. I'm a speaker and coach. But before I got into this world, I spent my life on the stage as a theater geek. I started acting when I was just five years old, and I loved everything about it. But I specifically remember my eighth grade audition. I went to a school. There were about 25 people in my class. You're automatically guaranteed a role in the play. But I wanted everyone to know that I was the best singer, that I had worked hard for it, that I'm going to be the best actor on that stage. And I remember standing in that audition room consistently determined to say, how am I going to prove that I am capable of what I know I've worked hard for, that I'm capable of sharing my talents with the world. Thankfully, that audition went well, but it was the most nerve wracking event, but it's something that stayed with me my entire life. Whether you've done performing arts or sports or something else, you know that the auditions, the tryouts are the hardest part of the game. For many of you, you've if you haven't done sports or performing arts, it could have been just watching someone on So You Think You Can Dance or American Idol. You see all of the nerves on their face, sometimes physically in their body, as they take everything that they have and they're laying it out on the stage, allowing someone else to decide what their fate might be. And then it continues for us. For me, I was always the youngest, not only just among my siblings, but in my class. In many times, I was one of the few people of color in the room and in my career, too. I can literally think of a handful of times that there'd be more than two Black women in a conference room or any session that I've ever been doing. But I was a very analytical person, and it stayed with me my entire life that, one, I felt like I had to prove that I was special, unique, and individual. So I went to college and decided to become a math major. How else are you going to stand out as a Black woman by running towards the numbers? But how do I explain being a theater lover as well as being a math major? I felt the inner turmoil and I started to accept the label that other people had put on me as being the weird girl. It didn't make sense. All of the other people who did theater were either theater majors or English majors. I was the only one doing anything logically or analytically oriented. Inside that math classroom, again, there were four women in my major. I was the only one of color. And in my career, consistently sitting in a room where I'd be one of the few among 20 or 25 people in a particular team. But I always wanted to know how I could get better, prove myself, and I became obsessed with personality tools from Myers-Briggs to DISC, StrengthsFinder, you name it. But I became obsessed with the Enneagram because it literally read my rights. I saw everything about myself, who I am, and how I'm meant to show up in this world. It explained everything that I thought made me the weird girl. And I learned to own and embrace my identity so that I could now identify as wonderful. Although you'll still hear me call myself the weird girl along the way. But today, I want to make sure that you can take those same wonderful tools that I gained from the Enneagram and allow you to now simplify, magnify, and amplify the work that you do within your business and with the people that you serve. That starts by setting clear intentions. Not just why are you here during this summit, but why are you doing the work that you do? Why did you choose your profession, your career, whether in corporate, on a side hustle, or a full-blown business? It doesn't matter what stage you're in. Get really clear on why does this matter to you. And then you can also use that Enneagram to help you make the next level decisions. Always striving for more, becoming better, greater, more diligent in the work that you do. But it always happens when we trust ourselves and we can trust in our own abilities. So again, there's a lot of different personality theories out there. I studied trait theory, um, actually as I continued in school, changing my major from math to um, a, dropping that to a math and computer science minor, but I had an organizational major. And then on the flip side of it, went on to get my master's in leadership development. And I studied trait theory of personality because one thing that I realized is that when you know your true self, it brings an awareness within you, that you get excited about the growth process, changing for the better, making the world a better place, and obviously getting to leave your mark on how you shine, not just by looking different or sounding different, but really bringing new ideas and making the world what we believe it really gets to be. 
Now there's a lot of great tools out there. I'm biased towards the Enneagram, but whether it's human design or something else, it's completely up to you to choose how you want to apply it. The important thing is knowing that it doesn't put you in a box. It actually gives you the foundation for you to stand on top of that box and embrace your true self along the way. So what is the Enneagram? Because if you've seen it, it's a lot, and I totally get it and agree. Uh, first off, I grew up, like many of you, probably in a Christian household. And these were symbols I was told to run away from. And so it took me some time to warm up and understand it. But this is actually a Greek um, symbol. And the word itself means Greek, meaning diagram of nine or drawing of nine. And the reason it's a circle is because we are all connected as humans we can look like a different number on different days because quite frankly, we are a combination of our heart, our head and our body, right? It all comes together, but you get to choose how you wanna show up. The Enneagram itself defines our personality types. It helps us to describe those individual behavior tendencies, our motivations, our desires, our triggers, and really how we get to choose to show up in the workplace and as business owners. Probably if you've heard of the Enneagram, most likely on social media, it started with dating and relationships. But if we think about where we spend our time, as much as we might love our partners, we spend a lot of our time at work. So why not build the relationships that you get to be strategic and building a business that adds to your bottom line? Now, when understanding the Enneagram, this grid is interesting, and I acknowledge that. But I want to break it down and make it simple for you. And this is where we'll spend the majority of our time today. First off are the Enneagram triads. So there's the feeling triad, also known as your heart triad, again, kind of centered from that emotional state of being. There's your thinking triad, also known as the head triad, kind of grounding everything with your thoughts before your actions or your feelings kick into place. And the instinctive triad can also be known as the body or gut triad. Many times, we will think that we're one thing or another because social media has put us in a box and made us think that one thing. So as we go through this, I want you to think about your true innate tendencies, not what you're doing, but thinking about why you're leaning to do those things. Starting off with the two, and sorry for those of you who like to do things in order, the two is actually the beginning and that's how you know I didn't create this either. But the two is identified as the helper. As a helper, you're known as someone who's always willing to serve, um, giving the shirt off your own back. What can I do for someone else? The threes are known as the achiever, always striving for success and wanting to be accomplished in the work that they do. And the four is known as the individualist, really trying to be unique and different and setting out so that everyone can see how unique and special they are in the work that they're doing. What brings the twos, threes, and fours together is that they're all driven by their heart, their emotions, their feelings. And secretly, all three of these types are people pleasers. I'm helping so that you can see how kind I am. I'm achieving so that you can see how smart, talented, brave, beautiful, whatever fill in the blank is good enough that I am. Or the four is I'm going out of my way to show you how different, how special, how unique I can be in the work that I do. All three of these types, again, are people pleasers in their natural state of being. Now, you can learn to put up boundaries and, and protect yourself, protect your time, protect your resources, which is always a great thing. But a lot of times when twos, threes, and fours are not able to please others by helping, achieving, or standing out, they feel ashamed for who they are and how other people see them. The five, six, and seven, moving over to our um, head triad. So five is known as the investigator. They're usually the researcher, the bookworm. If you know kind of brand archetypes, they're usually known as like the sage. They hold all of the knowledge um, and, and information for what they do. The six is known as the loyalist. They have your back no matter what. If you're their person, if you're in their inner circle, whatever it is, they're kind of that ride or die personality that we're used to seeing. And then the seven is known as the enthusiast, sometimes labeled the spontaneous one or the party animal, but they actually have a really big vision. They just don't actually do anything about the big ideas and the big vision in their natural state of being. The five, six, and seven, everything for them is centralized around their thoughts. I think it's fun. I think it's important. I think this other person 
will see the best in me. But if they're not able to think the most opportunistic ways, they start to go back into a way of finding fear. And at the bottom of everything that we see, they feel scared that people will not think that they're smart enough, scared that people will not think that they are loyal enough, or scared that people will not see them as the fun one in the group. And then you have your gut or instinctive triad, your eights, nines, and ones. Type eight, known as the challenger. They always have a new idea, kind of natural born leaders. Um, they have a, a lot of control issues. And I say that as a type eight myself, we just want things done a certain way. And we want to make sure that there's a clear agenda and mission behind what it is that's getting done. Then you have your minds, known as the peacemaker. They're usually trying to navigate conflict in a way that everyone ends up at a happy standpoint. And your ones, known as the reformer. They have a high standard of excellence. They see the world as right or wrong, black or white, and it takes time for them to develop a sense of seeing gray in the world and the in-between. A lot of times people have thoughts about a type one. We'll see them as pastors, lawyers, teachers. And if you're not striving for the excellence that they have, we'll kind of start to see them as like antagonistic because they have such a high standard of excellence and they want everyone that's around them to also gravitate towards becoming the best version of themselves. We'll also hear people talk about the nines being peacemakers or conflict avoidant, but the truth is the eights, nines, and ones are all centered on that same kind of thing and they want the best for others. And if they're not able to see the best, they'll actually um, develop a lot of anger because they desire justice in the world. And that comes out in different ways, different um, places, um, how they choose to show it. Some are actually like fighting and screaming and others are like, let's go write a new law and present a bill to Congress to create the change that we want to see in the world. We all have one core number. You'll have one core type. Now, if you've experienced the Enneagram, you probably said five years ago, I was a this, and today I'm a that. The truth is your core number never changes. You might come into a level of awareness. You might have shown up a certain way five years ago because it got you the job, it got you through college, it got you through X, Y, Z situation in your life, but were you being true to yourself or were you just protecting yourself, creating a shell or outer exterior to get through the situations you were in in your life? Again, your core number never changes. But what we do have are wing types, growth, and stress numbers to go with it. Using the nine at the top um, as an example, a nine's wing type, your core number being a nine, your wing could be an eight or a one. So if someone says, I'm a nine wing eight, that means at the surface, they're very um, kind of a calm peacemaker, neutral in the way that they see the world and how they want to create peace. However, there are times where if they don't see the peace that they want, they will take control and the situation to create the peace. You can almost think of mom, right? Navigating her children in different things of like, I want peace in this house. So you go here and you go there along the way. That is one way to see like a nine wing eight. A nine wing one is someone who, again, I want peace and justice in my world. Martin Luther King Jr. was actually an eight wing nine. Um, Barack Obama being a nine wing one. So both striving for change in the world of how they wanted to see it and fighting for the good that they believed in. Now, before I get too further, too much further in the growth and stress numbers, again, I said at the beginning of this, you get to choose how you show up in the world. So both Adolf Hitler and Martin Luther King Jr. are Enneagram type eights. They're both natural born leaders. They led a cause and a mission that they truly believed in. I think it's kind of obvious on what those missions might have been, and they chose to lead in very different ways. So you can choose to lead for good or lead for bad. Whatever your innate types, you can choose to be a healthy or unhealthy version of yourself and creating the justice that you believe is in this world. For our type threes, as an example of their growth numbers, when a three is achieving, again, they want to achieve, they want people to recognize how smart, pretty, talented, bold, beautiful, special that they are, and they're always achieving a status. Threes are the type of people that when you hop on a Zoom call with them, you can see all of their diplomas and certificates hovering behind their head because they want you to see that recognition of and recognize what they have accomplished. A three at their absolute best in times of growth is going to use 
their strength, their arrow would go towards the right, looking like a loyalist. And so the three would use all of their abilities and their talents to bring other people together and to create a community. And then we have our stress numbers, that would be a number to the left. So a three, when really stressed out and not able to accomplish what they set out to do, actually starts to look very conflict avoidant and will kind of start to pull back and away from other people who probably could support them along their journey. So again, you have your core number, you can have a wing type that is adjacent to your number. So it is not possible to be a seven wing three or a six wing one. The numbers are in a circle and they stay attached. So it's numbers to the immediate left or right of your circle that dictate your wing. Your growth number is the arrow that goes to the, the right or down from your number. So an eight at their best, although naturally kind of a controller and a challenger to the systems, at their best, they will help and serve and guide and deliver, um, create an impact in the people that they serve. An eight, once stressed, will look like the investigator. They start going out and getting more degrees. They start wanting to prove extra certificates and letters behind their name, how special and brilliant that they could be. And even in my story, you heard that. I wanted to prove what I could control in my life by choosing my major, by getting a master's degree, by earning the role on a particular in a particular play. And I did it time and time again to prove that I was smart enough and capable enough and talented enough in the work that I've done. But as I've realized that about myself and grown into who I am at my best, I now turn around and take the Enneagram knowledge that I've learned and helping others to say, this is who I am, take it or leave it, but this is how I'm going to show up as the best version of myself. And I now use that knowledge to help others in the way that they're doing. So I hope as you look at your core number and also your wings and your growth and stress numbers, recognize how you can change those stressful moments into an opportunity for growth to become the best version of yourself and impact others in the work that you do every day in your business. Now, a reminder for each Enneagram type, and this works for you as an individual, as well as recognizing this in those that you might work with. I always love to kind of know Enneagram types of people that I've been working with on a consistent basis because it helps me communicate in a way that resonates and lands with them. I'm not forcing them if they're like, I'm not into that stuff. It's totally acceptable. And again, you can use this with a lot of personality tools, but making sure that you find a way to say, I wanna make sure that we can collaborate and communicate effectively to always add to the bottom line, to serve our clients, to make an impact or whatever your mission might be as well. So reminders for each Enneagram type. If you're a type one, your success does not define who you are and you don't need to fix everything um, at all. Just let it go. You don't have to fix every single broken system in the world. You can fix one of them. And that obviously is a good thing. We do need to make change for recognizing where you are and where you can serve best. If you're a type two, recognize that saying no to other people will reduce that feeling of burnout and it allows you to then make greater impact aka set boundaries and say no to people. Um, and then for type three, our communication fosters cooperation. And again, it adds to the bottom line. As you communicate your goals, let people know, hey, this is what I'm striving for. Those that agree with you will come alongside you and will give you the boost that you need to reach your next level of success. For type fours, your innovative ideas will spark curiosity in others and again, they'll be able to collaborate with you along the journey. For type fives, recognize that you can take action and learn by doing, and that you do not need to do all of the knowledge seeking on your own. Lean into a community of people that are caring and understanding around you. For type six, your natural loyalty trait allows others to feel safe in sharing their ideas with you, and that allows them to then go out and make their impact on the world as well. For type sevens, your enthusiasm is contagious, but it's also okay to relax and know that you're still valuable. For type eights, your standards give others permission to hold their standards. And for type nines, as a default, you can always blame the contract when people are always asking to add to the scope of work or to add one extra thing, uh, recognizing that you can ask for an increase in compensation or figure out a way to negotiate because it was not in the additional 
um, writings, the guidelines, the contracts or agreements that were written at the beginning. And so whether you are this core personality type or maybe you've been operating your business out of a season of stress. And so maybe it's not your core number, but your stress number that you wanna look at and say, these are changes that I need to make. And then when you work with other people that might be one of these particular types, recognizing that this is a way that you can communicate with them as well to hold to those standards and always achieve the success that you're looking for. Now, always consider how you communicate with other people. Resist the desire to type someone based on common assumptions. Especially as Black women, we like to assume that we're all type eights. Can't tell you how many women of color by default say, I'm a type eight. We have learned certain things based on society, our upbringing, our cultures that make us look on the surface like a type eight. But think about why you do what you do. Is it to get recognition from others? Is it to be validated? Is it to prove that you're smart enough? Are you doing it for justice? Are you doing it out of shame, fear, um, overcompensating for other things? So don't assume you're a particular type until you've really done the research and self-reflection. And also don't assume that someone else must be a type three because they came across in a particular situation as well. You can use the Enneagram to spark understanding of other people, whether in your teams, in your workplace, whether one-on-one -on -one conversations in personal or professional relationships. This is a great foundational setting of saying, how can I support you better? How can I reward your hard work? How can I keep you motivated? Some people are motivated by money. Others are motivated by influence. And some people just want some fame and recognition and the spotlight and attention for five minutes. Recognize what that is and help bring that to that person so that they're always continuously helping and supporting your vision as well. The Enneagram is not designed to pigeonhole anyone. And so again, it is not designed to put you in a box. It allows you to have a platform to stand on, to embrace your natural abilities and show up as your best self. And then use the Enneagram to know how you can serve your clients. If you think about your marketing platforms, if you're a particular type, share that in your marketing to attract those that are going to benefit from the work that you do. If you don't want to become a better version of yourself, I'm not your person. And I say that in how I show up in every single situation of make yourself better so that you can make your business better and continue the impact that you want to make in the world. And so that helps with my core Enneagram number, but also who I am as an individual. And so openly use your the language that you gain from your awareness of your Enneagram type to share that with others in the work that you're doing. And then be sure to obviously not just absorb this information, especially if you're a type five, don't just absorb this information, but activate and accelerate in the work that you're doing. Make decisions on how you can simplify things with clear intentions, with a clear vision, and communicate that vision with others. You can really hone in on what you do and how you do it. Amplify your zones of genius when you really accept how the Enneagram helps you grow your self-awareness. And the best part is that you get to expand and amplify what you do when you have a clear strategy, because you can also use the Enneagram to align to your business goals, to align to your communication. So from marketing to sales, to client and customer onboarding, to the exit interview and all the way through, you can use the Enneagram to build your business strategy. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and I hope to connect with you all soon. Hello, hello. Hey girl, that was so amazing. Like just so sweet. <laughs> yeah, it was so great. Watching this chat has been phenomenal. So thank you all for hanging out on a Juneteenth on a Sunday and taking time to still pour into yourself. So hello and welcome everyone. Ashe, beautiful Kristen. Well, I'm going to make sure they get all of your magic while you're here. So I'm going to flip the first question on the stage, mama. Um, it is from Demetra Lucas and she says, I have been told I'm very my way or the highway. I'm interested in learning more about becoming more aligned to not come off as aggressive and develop my team slash 
or my teamwork slash collaboration skills. Any advice or first steps or four first steps? Yeah. So how you are is who you are. So if you do see things in a very black or white type of way where I'm right and everyone else is wrong, awareness is the first step in every single thing. You can't even make a decision without knowing where you are first. And so it's fine if that's who you are and you're being honest with yourself, but also make sure you take five seconds or five minutes to listen to what the other side is saying. You might hear a new perspective that might shed a light and you're going to say, hey, I actually agree with you, but I was so busy and wrapped up in my own self. I didn't even realize that we have a commonality. Or you might say, let's agree to disagree. I don't see it that way, but how can we respectfully still work towards you know, what keeps us going and what keeps each of us motivated. For one person, it's the paycheck. For the other person, it's the half day Friday and the extra vacation days if you're in corporate. Whatever that looks like, find that common thing that you can work together on and then push forward with that. But I'd say listening and awareness are the two things. And I'll pro you'll probably hear me say that answer again for whatever else comes up too. <laughs> That's so dope. And that's so affirming, um, Kristen. I love how you just keep reiterating because I think we'll have to, you know, hear that a couple of times to accept it, that like you are what you are. Like, do not scrub it off. <laughs> you know, do not do mirror talk to change. Like, it is OK to be how you are and operate in that. Um, I love it. And I want to say, too, once we leave out of here, the chat, um, it's not gone. Right. But yeah, it's not gone. Uh, but I just want to give people the benefit of getting the link if they need it to go ahead and take the test now that you've done. So could you drop that in there? Um, while I bring up the other question, I'll read very slowly so you can concentrate. I know multitasking <laughs> is not the best thing to do. <laughs> no, you're good. I got the link ready. So it is in the chat. Okay. Also, if you go to my like vendor booth, that link is one of my quick links as well to take the free test. So it's there for everyone. Yay. Super dope. Super dope. Okay, so I'm bringing up Tiffany Brown's question, and she asks, does your customer have to be your exact type? No, not at all. So similar to a job interview, and again, whether you work in corporate or you are fully an entrepreneur, if you've ever been on one job interview and they made you take a personality test without ever taking a chance to know you, it's the same thing. So you don't want to decide what someone is before you've had that time to like really collaborate and work with them. So your customers can be any type. If you think about dating, marriage, even a long-term relationship, right? Your person could be any personality type, but you get to choose how you want to communicate with that person. You get to choose to listen to them or not listen to them. And so it's not the type that your, your customer is, but making sure that especially if it is, you know, coaching, consulting, some type of one-on-one, -on -one especially that they know what they're getting into. So like, hey, I'm a black woman. If you're racist, please don't give me money. Like, let's just, I mean, you can give me money actually, but don't try to be my client, you know, type of thing. And it's the same thing. Here's my personality. I'm a lot. If you hit my Instagram, it literally says I'm the Olivia Pope for online entrepreneurship, right? And what I mean by that is if you don't want somebody coming in, fixing problems, calling what it is, telling the truth. If you hate Olivia Pope, I'm not your person. If you don't know who Olivia Pope is, scandal, Shonda Rhimes, go Google it, figure it out. But like that gives people a warning of what my vibe is. I'm not sleeping with a president, but you know that I'm a boss when I step into the scene. And so if you don't want someone to organize, get things done, step back. And so that's what I mean by showing who your type is, but you can still go ahead and work with anyone. I'm going to meet you where you are. If you're in baby steps, we're going to do it in a very different way than if you're telling me you run a multi-billion dollar corporation. So it's the same thing um, in how you do it. You want people to know what they're getting themselves into, but that doesn't mean you stop someone because of their personality type either. That's really good. And I want to tell everyone that, um, Kristen, like she already mentioned, she does work with companies. She has a booth in the exhibit. Um, so definitely check that out. Um, the booth will stay up after this ends too, right? But just, you know, uh, make sure you go because I'm sure she will have a whole flurry of people coming to her. Um, super dope, Kristen. So I'm going to give you another one. This is from our girl, Christina King. And she asks, how much of an impact does following the Enneagram have in each area of your life? 
So it's up to you, right? You always have the choice if you want to apply the Enneagram or not. Now, I said it in the presentation, and I if you have, you know, a preference for Myers-Briggs or human design or DISC or anything else, like the point is that you take the understanding and the knowledge about who you are and how you show up so that you can have an understanding. Um, so you can choose if you want to apply it to your personal relationships. And there's so many people who literally focus on dating, marriage, that kind of thing. I've been seeing a lot on time in terms of like parenting styles. And so you can't type your children, but you can't understand how you show up as a parent um, for sure. And so like that's the way that you can apply it in that. There's things for it's less for friends, but the corporate stuff has been around definitely the last 20 years. There's been a lot on corporate consulting, team development, team dynamics, um, effective leadership, which is, again, my specialty and what I love about it. So you can apply it to every area of your life. There's people who do it in their finances. And I'm like, apply. There's I've seen health coaches with the Enneagram. Like, you pick a thing, um, and there is a way to, the, to apply it. But again, the foundation of the Enneagram or any other personality tool is that awareness of yourself so that you can make very intentional decisions about what you are doing next. And again, examples of Martin Luther King and Adolf Hitler. Like, it is who you are, but you choose how you're going to move forward with that type of personality. Um, another example live, um, 2020 election, our Republican and Democrat nominees, I won't say their names, so it won't get thing, but both of them are actually the same Enneagram type six. Um, and so again, however you chose to vote, which I, I'm hoping is a majority of most of the people here, but however you chose to vote, they actually both have the same Enneagram type, but one is definitely a healthier version of themselves than the other. And so again, you get to choose to apply it. And I actually did a podcast back in 2020 um, episode on, you know, our president elect and vice president elect at the time and how their, their personality types got them elected. So Kamala Harris is a type three achiever to the core. That's why she tells everyone how many times she's worked her way up the ladder. But luckily for all of us, she also wants to make sure that although she's the first, she's not the last doing it. So again, it's always a choice on how to apply it, but you can also say like, I don't want to apply it to a particular area as well. That's so interesting. And, and Kristen, I'll tell you, um, I was familiar with and love that had been my, my favorite um, thus far with Myers-Briggs. I was familiar with Strengths Finders. I found a lot of truth in both, but um, you know, you introduced me to the Enneagram, right? Um, I know you kind of hit on this before. What about, I guess a two-part question, what about the Enneagram really resonates, uh, I assume more so, right, with you than the others? And then the second part, you know, do you leverage this heavily in the way that you do business with your clients? Yes. Yeah, so all of my clients have no choice. We do the Enneagram at this point in time. Um, when I actually started, I used to do Myers-Briggs. That's actually the first thing that I was trained in um, my senior year of college, and I used it throughout grad school. Then I became certified in DISC when I started my HR career. And so that's what I was using um, as a recruiter and part of our retention planning. I found the Enneagram actually when my marriage was on the fritz. And, you know, I was like, oh, this is interesting. Oh, this explains a lot. <laughs> um, let's not waste time in dragging out this divorce and hurry up and sign it. But then as I dug into that and understood more about it, I was like, this explains more about me than all the blame that I wanted to pass at the time. I was so excited to have personal development in a way that, again, like first time I took that quiz, I was like, who, how? Who, who wrote this? How you know? What's going on? Like, I had all the questions. Uh, so if you've never taken an Enneagram, like, it reads too many of uh, things about you that it might be a little scary. But it was also so true. And to take some of the, like, little tidbits and tips that I've seen along the way and apply it, I became obsessed. The one interesting thing of uh, the Enneagram versus others, your, your Strengths Finder, your DISC, your Myers-Briggs, several of those can change over time. So depending on things that are happening in your life, depending on your corporate job, your disc can change because if you're not the boss, you don't get to show up like a D in the workplace. If you are the executive assistant and have to be compliant, you'll look more like a C. And so a lot of times your disc type will look like the corporate role that you have and will flex depending. Your Enneagram type, people have likened it to like the human design where it is who you are. That's the end of discussion. Your core type as an Enneagram will never change in your whole life. 
you have healthy and unhealthy versions of yourself, the growth numbers and all that stuff that I was explaining to show the ebbs and flows of life. But at the core, it talks about what triggers you. It talks about what motivates you. And at the end of the day, those things will never change, even if it looks different in a various season of time. So that's why I love the Enneagram more than anything else. But I, again, will acknowledge I'm obsessed and biased. They are all good tools that are out there. But yes, all of my clients use the Enneagram um, with me. And I've also helped them. Like if they're comfortable with DISC, I'll be like, here's how your Enneagram and DISC type work together to explain that. But Enneagram is what I do. That's so enlightening. Um, I'll definitely have to, I was sitting here guessing. And I'm going to tell you, sis, you, you stepped on my toes because you know, as you were presenting, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm an eight. Yeah, yeah, I'm a challenger. And, you know, when we know in my, at my best self, oh, yeah, I'm a helper. Yeah, that's me. Um, but you stepped on my toes and you said most Black women say they're the eight, right? Um, and we have to ask ourselves the, the, the question of why, right? And I, and I definitely have been trying to save myself. And I've been very, the rage piece is real, right? I use a whole bunch of emotion to back up the force in what I'm saying. Um, so I have to... <laughs> Definitely sit down and um, see if that's true. Uh, so I love that challenge for sure. And I'm not saying you might be an eight. Like I, I am an eight. And Olivia Pope's character really is an eight. An eight. So, like, so okay. I'm not saying that you're not an eight. But a lot of Black women, because of how society has treated us in America specifically, will say I'm an eight because... I like what I like, but do you like to be successful so people like you? Or yeah. do you like to be the life of the party and you're just a party planner? And so again, we show up differently in different situations, but it's about getting down to what motivates you and not just how other people see you. Yeah, that's good. I think that's really good. All right, ladies listening, we have Kristen right here, but if there are no questions now, uh, then, wait, okay, we got some more, okay. So this one is coming from Samia Mosley, Kristen, and she asks, could you expound more on the stress number and how to utilize it? Yeah, so it's not about using your stress number. It's about recognizing your stress number. And so if you know your type, can you drop your type in the chat and I'll give you a little bit more of a concrete example. Um, but I'll use myself until I know what your number is. So my core number is an eight. When I am stressed, I look like a five. And so... Again, many of us have done this and, you know, statistically black women are the most educated group in America. Why? Because we're trying to prove that we're smart enough that we deserve the raise. So we go out and we get more degrees to prove so that other people will give us the dollar. But tell me why the high school dropout makes more than the black woman with a Ph.D. Another story. Nobody has to answer that right now. But, you know, just those kind of things. And so when I'm stressed, I find myself starting with a Google article. And then I end up, you know, watching a YouTube video. And then I've signed up for a demo, a demo of something else. And the next thing I know, I'm looking at MBA programs. What? Why? <laughs> like, I don't need another degree. But we're constantly looking for something and saying, I'm not able to control what I want to right now. And so I'm feeling like I need to go get certified or do, you know, something that's going to say I'm accomplished and worthy of the things that I've honestly been doing since I was five years old. I geeked out on all these personality quizzes in the magazines we got in the mail back in middle school. But then I went out and felt like I had to get MBTI and DISC and Enneagram certified in order to be smart enough and a master's degree on top of it in psychology to prove that I knew what I was talking about. But like, I've been doing quizzes my whole life. Um, and then you just said that you're a type one. So thank you. So a type one at their best, very high standard or their, their core number, right? Very high standard of excellence when they're stressed out and they're not able to, you know, get other people to be motivated, to get other people on their level to that standard of excellence that they have. They start to say, well, you know what? Let's just go have a barbecue. And not that fun is a bad thing, but you kind of realize that you're saying, I surrender my ideas of fun. And so I'll let someone else take the reins. I'll let someone else be the visionary, even though I have a lot of ideas, even though I know how to make the world a better place, even though I want to be, and a lot of times ones are lawyers, teachers, doctors, ministers, they're in the military leadership, like that kind of a thing is just what they're naturally drawn to. So when they give up and they say, well, let's just go have a party and kick back and relax, not because they're finding rest, but because they're saying, 
I can't make the world a better place. So I'll just raise a glass and give up, you know, kind of a thing. And so, um, and, but that doesn't mean that sevens are bad, right? So sevens actually have a lot of great ideas. They just don't write them down. Um, but sevens have a lot of great ideas. They have the big picture vision. They just need to partner with someone who is going to write it down and get them to implement a three great partnership for sevens and threes, right? So there's so much you can do with that, but sevens are naturally a life of the party where a one only becomes the party animal when they've given up and surrendered. So that's how you start to recognize. Um, but it's not utilizing it. It's saying, oh my goodness, I have given up. Oh my goodness, I'm looking at MBA programs again. Oh my goodness, I'm doing something that's putting me in a sp stress spiral so I can stop myself, ground myself and get back towards my goals or take a nap, right? Sometimes you just need a nap and reset but recognizing it so you can move forward. That's so good. That is so good. Now my mind is turning. I'm still thinking I'm the eight, but we will see. Like that you might be. I know you gotta, you gotta let me know afterwards when you take it. I do. I'm gonna hit you up, Kristen. Um, okay. So for anyone who needs it. <laughs> um, so this one is from Dr. Alexis Davis, and she asks. How do you suggest to utilize this as a way to enhance sisterhood? Forgive me if I missed this. I don't think I covered this one. So that is an excellent question. Um, I actually don't know if I've ever gotten that question before. Um, so I do talk about team dynamics in general. And so usually whatever your core team looks like, that's a small business and there's five of you. Or if you work in a corporation, like the core, you know, seven to 10 people that you work with um, day after day, that's usually who you want to focus on, you'd start with communication strategy. So here's how I communicate. Here's how I share my vision, but here's how I'm also going to enhance my listening skills to hear how you're articulating your vision, getting behind the intention of something and not getting on someone's tone like they usually do for us black women, right? Not getting a, like, oh, she's too much because her tone is a certain way, but what's the heart behind what is being said or just as much as any other stereotype that we've kind of experienced in our life. It's not about what, it, it's recognizing what's being said or what is the intention behind what is being said. Not everyone has a PhD in English to have this very poetic way of, of presenting an idea, but recognizing, hey, this is what they're looking for. This is what they're getting at. And how can I you know, find that common goal so that we are building this business, that this team is achieving its initiatives whatever that might be. In terms of sisterhood, that community is always great. You don't want to build your community based on a personality type because a bunch of eights in the room isn't going to be good for anybody either. A bunch of threes in the room is going to be a whole lot of bragging and still not accomplishing um, just as much. And so you want to say, hey, there's a little bit of all of us and recognizing how can I build you up? I mentioned the the seven and three partnership, recognizing the same way that there's like opposites attract in, you know, romantic relationships, opposites are going to attract in professional relationships as well. And you want your friend group to be a little bit of everyone, because that is how you each can edify each other. That's how you each can support each other as you're kind of in that journey of life as well. So good. So good. Um, and then we have a question of clarification from Demetra Lucas. She asks, what do you mean when you're stressed, you look like a five? I thought you said that you can't be a core eight and a wing that isn't adjacent. Yes, got it. So you have your core number. So again, using myself as an example, your core number is as an eight. My wing type is a seven. And so like I was a cheerleader growing up. I was a theater girl growing up. Like I just want to have a good time and like have fun, you know, while we're doing things. So I like control, but there's also a very part of me that's like, I want you it's literally like how I've branded myself, right? Create your best life. So have a plan so you can go have some fun and live the life of your dreams. And so thinking about it in that kind of way, but when I'm stressed, I'm going to reduce myself instead of being how I naturally am. I'm reducing myself and jumping down the circle. Um, and that's what those lines and arrows and stuff, if you Google, what it is looks like. And then you also have a growth number. So the number to my growth at my best, I'll look like a two and I'm serving others. But when I'm stressed, I'm looking up how to get another degree um, so that I can be qualified enough for something. Um, happy to give you um, an example of, you know, your core number um, and what your stress growth and wing numbers could look like as well. 
And Kristen, I can, uh, let me do this very quickly. I can show that graphic again, even if you want to talk through it, but just so she sees those, those arrows you're talking, or those lines down that you're talking about, I'll make it really quick. Um, okay. It's not cute, y'all, but here we go. Can you see it, Kristen? I don't see it. You don't see it? Oh, it's coming now. There you go. Okay. Yeah, so all those lines that you see coming from the core number, again, the number that goes to the right or down is your stress number. The number that goes to the left or like up um, is your growth number. So a five in stress will look like an eight, but an eight when stress will look like a five. And this is not like the everyday stress of like the kids are fighting kind of a thing. I'm talking like stress, like to the point of, you know, let's go get our mental health checked out. Um, and that ebbs and flows in different seasons, but you see, you say kids and they, they show up. Um, so, you know, ebbs and flows in different seasons and what it looks like, but recognizing again, hey, I'm not doing well or at my best right now. So I need to, you know, go center myself and get back to what I'm meant to be in this world. Perfect. All right. And then you need some water, Kristen, you're good. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Because you, you've been going for a minute. So I got you if you need if you need some water or anything. Okay. So this one is from Jasmine Prince. And she asks, can you talk about how you use your Enneagram number to build great teams and partnerships as an entrepreneur? I'm a 2W3, by the way. Awesome. So you're type two at your core. You want to help and serve. I would recommend that you partner with someone who's willing to do the research like a four or a five, even a one, they're going to want to do the research and get the facts, the information, the financials are going to be in order. So you don't get to give everything away as a two. And then your three type, you know, your three wings, sorry. Um, you naturally want to achieve and be successful. So you're like, I want to help people. And then I want them to turn around and thank me for helping them recognize that sometimes making an impact goes without a thank you. Um, you know, give people their flowers while they're alive is definitely a thing, but it's also not everyone's thing. And so one, have that awareness that ev not everyone does that. And so maybe you have someone on your team who is not like a yes person, but every time they do see your success, they will reward it in some way. And so maybe having a nine on your team, um, because they're a peacemaker, they're also going to kind of recognize and neutralize situations. So she just did a lot. Thank you so much. Even though you're the boss, you know, type of thing um, might be a good balance for you to have on your team. Also twos and threes, natural hard workers, kind of head in the sand and getting it done. So maybe having a seven on your team is going to be like, hey, let's go to happy hour. Let's just be happy. Can we put 20 minutes on the agenda where we just talk about each other's lives and not work, 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 grind, grind, grind all of the time? So again, when I mentioned having, you know, a sisterhood with a little bit of everyone, as your team grows, not that you go down the list and say, we're missing this type, we go, we need an extra one, but recognizing, again, this is what we need and that balance. And if you recognize that in yourself, even if it's not in business, go text a friend and say, hey, I need you to check me you know, text me every three weeks, please put it in your phone and make sure that I come back and, you know, find that balance that I need. And so again, it's not about choosing someone based on their type, but as you know, each other's types. Um, and what I usually tell people, because there's less about the Enneagram in business than there is about dating and relationships, but your business partner, again, is a relationship you spend a lot of time in. So go ahead and Google the way that a four and a seven looks in a marriage is how your business partnership is going to look in a marriage. Take out the intimacy piece, right? But how do we communicate? How do we understand each other? How do we encourage that person towards their goals and keep them motivated? And so look at some of those Free, there's a lot more free tools when it comes to dating and marriage with the Enneagram and understand how that's you're still going to be communication in what you're doing in business as well. So, so, so good, Kristen. Um, and we'll have our final, final, final uh, question slash response because Gina has raised her hand. So I'm going to bring her to the stage. Uh, you are a trooper for, for navigating this. And this is a complex um workshop, right? Probably the one of the most intricate ones. So I appreciate you for rocking with us for this long in the Q&A. All right, Gina, you have the mic. Hi, thanks, Kristen. Thanks, Casey. So in keeping with the title, Blaze, right? I'm thinking about building leaders. So if you're considering yourself a leader 
in this case, and you see that you might be, like you said, missing some numbers that could enhance your team, do you find it advantageous to maybe try to switch up and be that missing piece and, and kind of move around or, or more to what you said, you are who you are, stay true to who you are? Absolutely stay true to who you are. So there's, you know, of if, if you're a solopreneur and you have to be your financials and your tech person and your mm -hmm. admin scheduling, that's going to look very differently. And so Google your way through the things that you need to, to bootstrap a business. But as you're definitely at the level of growing a team, whether that be in corporate or online business or something else, it's not about changing who you are, but saying, this is my zone of genius. And I need someone to support me where I don't have that expertise. So if I need tech, I'm going to call Casey because this summit is like dope on another <laughs> level. Right. So if I need that, I'm going to say, you know, Casey, who's your, who are your people? Or do you want to jump in on this? Because I need my technology to get to a certain level. But when it comes to systems planning operations, I'm that person. And I know that. So I can say, here's the vision, here's the plan, but I need it to be executed. And I know Casey's my person. So it's about finding that balancing act, but never changing who you are at really the core. That. Yeah, yes. because otherwise you find you're burning out. And that's what Absolutely. you're trying to avoid too, the burnout. So thank you for, for sharing that. Absolutely. Great question, Gina. Thank you so much. All right, ladies, uh, please clap it up, emoji it up, uh, the little party confetti thing it up. Uh, Kristen, you are so incredible. And, and honestly, this was a very well-placed uh, workshop because you are now giving us the tools, not just to do all these things on the outside, but like you said, like to tap into our zone of genius, to be very, very um, self-aware. That is very hard for a lot of us particularly because we don't take these tests, right? <laughs> um, so I think this is so critical because I think it enforces why we need other people, right? We need to operate in our zone of genius. We don't need to waste energies in areas that, you know, we are not off the chain in so we can find, we can find them people. Uh, thank you so, so, so much, sis. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me and everyone. I'll, I mean, I'll be watching and listening in, um, but you know, enjoy the rest of your June team. And Casey, thank you so much for putting this together for everyone. Thank you. Beautiful. I appreciate you so much. All right, y'all. Uh, that was incredible. Again, make sure you visit Kristen's booth. She is, I mean, y'all have seen it, right? She is absolutely brilliant. Um, and in her brilliance, she still finds the best ways to edify who you are, right? And remind you over and over and over again, not to be anyone else, right? That does not come a dime, that does not come in plenty <laughs> all the time. She's gonna change a whole lot of people's minds, but as she's doing that work, as she is doing that work, she is definitely standing out, right? As, as a very unique individual. So definitely hit her up. I want to um, take this time to highlight people who are currently in the running to win prizes. Again, the top 15 win prizes. Um, that is just how we do it. The Blaze Virtual Summit happens every six months. Yes. Uh, <laughs> some of you might be surprised about that. We don't do this once a year because we do not believe in Blaze that you have to wait a whole year for Master to let you get together with the, with the other 10 people that look like you. Um, we want Black women to live in the land of plenty. There are plenty of us out there. We're just fragmented, right? Um, so we do this every single, every six months, right? This, this, the same length, it is fully five days. Uh, the quality ups, honestly, every single time. Um, and just, I would just tell you now, folks were fussing at me in December by not saying, by, by saying like, why did you tell me to take off? I'm going to tell you now. <laughs> um, you definitely want to have a space put in your calendar for the first week of December. That's when we do it. And it is always about lightning a load. We do not believe at the end of the year that it's time to hit that last target at the end of the year, trying to stack it up or like, oh my gosh, I don't need to be a better me in January. No, nah, cuz you would have spent a whole year striving, right? A whole year achieving, a whole year growing. Um, so we definitely, we definitely bring in the experts to help you de-stress, um, to help you lighten the load, to help you unpack the traumas and the hurts and the frustrations that have happened. So I want y'all to be there um, for that. Now, 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 um, shout out to my leaderboard people. Let's see, it is refreshing. I wanna do the latest and greatest. Okay, number one with 8,435 points, we have our girl, Demetra. demetra has been coming to the stage, raising the hands, going inside of the booths, commenting, chatting, emojiing it up. 
Uh, I've been seeing you, sis. Uh, and again, the way you move in here is the way that you move on the outside. Mean that, right? Same big thunder energy. Um, so you're holding down number one right now. We will announce the winners right after um, the closing uh, keynote speech. That's coming very shortly, actually, <laughs> in about an hour. Um, Tiffany Brown, you are number two. Tierra Davis, you are number three. Chandra Mayer, you are number four. Aaliyah Young, you are number five. Samia Mosley, you're number six right now, mama. Number seven is Courtney West. Number eight is Andrea Kwok. I hope I got that right, sissy. Um, number nine is Shayla Terry. Number 10 is Gina Green. Okay, Gina. Uh, number 11 is Janae Wiggins. That's Raven's girl, so you're my girl. Uh, number 12 is Demetria Williams. Number 13 is Monet Esby. Number 14 is Dana Stancil Jones. And last, but definitely not least, right now, number 15 is Wendy Dorsey. All right, one more session. It is a workshop. It is coming from our girl, Jasmine Prince also known as Jazz. Uh, she is doing the last workshop of the entire summit for summer 2022. And it is called Pushing P, a formula for a community. I'll see y'all over there. Peace. There's Queen, Blaze, a tribe, and a family. I am so excited to be with you today and to share a little bit about community building. My name is Jasmine Prince. If I haven't had the chance to meet you, I am the founder of Magnolia and Pen Consulting, and I absolutely love talking about community. When I think about the seasons of life that I have been in and that I'm currently in, I would not have gotten through, would not have found success if it was not for a thriving community. And so thank you for joining Pushing P, a community formula. So I work on a college campus with college students. And so if you're unfamiliar with the term push and pee, it's okay, because my students gave me a little insight about what push and pee actually means. So it is a song by Gunna, but ultimately what pushing P means is really attributing um, positive characteristics like loyalty and ambition to people. And so I thought it was a perfect title when I think about talking about community. So before we dive in, I wish that I could be with you in person and I'm crossing my fingers for the day that we could have the summit in person. And I thrive off of audience energy. And so since I cannot hear you um, snap and say yes and see you shake your head, um, what I need to do is to engage um, through all of the various features that are available via AirMeet. So in the chat, using the reactions and we're gonna practice just to make sure y'all are with me and that y'all are gonna give me the energy that I am gonna give you and that y'all are gonna return it back to me. So if you are ready to get the show on the road, I just need you to type in the chat, pushing P. I just need a few people to type pushing P in the chat before we get started. Okay, I'm seeing a couple of folks that are ready. And so we're going to dive right in. So earlier this year, I was at an event with a colleague and he said this quote that like rocked my world and has been stuck in my head ever since. And when I thought about what I wanted to share with the Blaze tribe and all of you, I immediately came back to his quote. And Dr. Malone, my brother, my friend said, you are the product of the people that you place in your presence. You are the product of the people you place in your presence. I'm going to say it one more time for good measure. You are the product of the people that you place in your presence. And so when I think about a formula for a community, um, this is exactly what this formula is built on. And so we're gonna spend some time with each one of these elements, helping us to think through how we engage in community and how we create community as well. But before I get started, I just wanna take a quick pulse to make sure I'm in the right room. So how many folks in here have ever been in relationship or friendship or community with Black women and it has gone 
horribly wrong. Like you were burned, bridges were burned. Like you don't mess with them people no more. And if you see them in the streets, they might get their hands. And if that's you, I just need to drop, need you to drop a one in the chat. Okay, so I see a few people who might be ready to run some hands with some folks, and that's cool because the girlies do like to tussle. Now, I want to talk to people who maybe are on the opposite end of the spectrum. Drop a two in the chat if you have a friendship with one person or a group of people that is older than 10 years. So you've been friends with these people 10 years, 15 years. 20 years, 18 years. And if that's you, drop a two in the chat. So I recognize that two things can be true at once. So you could be on both ends of those spectrums or you could live somewhere in between. And I wanted to hold space for both of those realities and all of the realities in between because community is complex and it is messy because as humans, we are complex and messy people. And so I hope that wherever you are on the spectrum that like, you're like, I don't even really wanna be in community or like, oh my gosh, I cannot do life without my ride or die or you're somewhere in between that you are able to take a nugget of gem or find some value in this presentation um, really to help you show up in community better and also to evaluate and assess the people that you are choosing to put in your community. So we're gonna keep it moving. We're gonna talk about the very first part of this formula, which is you. So, when I think about community, I think about it in two ways in relation to the individual person. So the first way that I think about it is that each of us has a role to play in a community um, and to recognize that we exist in multiple communities at the same time, but we all have a role to play. And so my question to you, you can jot it down on a piece of notebook paper or what you got laying next to you, or if you're brave, you can type your response in the chat. My question is what role do you typically play in your community and why? So what role do you typically play and why? So I'm the leader in my community because oftentimes folks are not gonna step up to lead. I am the empath in my community because I am able to help other people get out their big feelings and make sense of them and give them language to be able to use to have a productive conversation. I am the comedic relief in my community because we all need to stop taking ourselves so seriously. Whatever it is, whatever your role is, think about what role you typically play and why you play that role. Excellent. I see some folks in the chat. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all so much. So the second way that I think about how individuals show up in community is that there's often a goal for being in community, or at least there should be, that we should not be aimlessly in community just because someone told us that community was a good idea. So I'm gonna encourage you in the chat to finish this sentence. I know that I found my tribe when. And I want you to think about it in a couple of different ways. I know that I find my I've found my tribe when and you think about what does finding my tribe sound like? What do the people in my tribe say that affirms that I found them? I want you to think about what does it feel like when you found your tribe? How do you feel? How does the world feel? And I want you to think about what it looks like. So who's in your tribe? What does your life look like? This may be different. So I'd love for a few people to finish that statement. I know that I found my tribe when, and you can drop your response in the chat. I appreciate y'all so much for blowing the chat up already. I feel your energy and I appreciate y'all. So when I think about our roles, our roles as individuals in community, I'm a firm believer that being in relationship with someone else means that there is a reciprocal exchange of energy, ideas, time, and intentionality. It's reciprocal, which means that I am both a consumer of community, but I am also a cultivator and a creator of community. So as much as I receive, I also give, and I expect that it is a balance, a healthy balance of giving and receiving between all the folks who make up my community. Then also think about our individual goals for community. So you can have a lot of different reasons why you choose to be in community and maybe what you need from your community. But a few things that I think all communities should have as a common goal is that your community should reflect your core values. 
It should affirm your presence. And the folks in your community really should champion your wildest dreams. And I really wanna harp on this idea of like affirming your presence, but also championing your dreams because as black women, there are very few spaces where we can show up, we can exist and our presence can be affirmed and people rally behind like the vision that we seek to create. And so when you find that, like I hope that all of us get a chance to experience what it's like to be in a community that thrives in those ways. Okay, so I told y'all this was a formula. So if y'all don't walk away with nothing else, by the end of this, you need to be able to say this quote, okay? You are the product of the people you place in your presence. So as we continue to move through the formula, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what are some of the products that being in good community produce? So the first product that being in good community should produce or can produce is that good community should help you stay in purpose on purpose. So being in a good community with like really dope and dynamic people, they should be reminding you of the responsibility of your calling and your gifts. If you know anything about being in purpose, you know that purpose is expensive, that it is not cheap. And because it is expensive, the people around you need to one, help you to protect it, but also need to help you operate in it and to find ways in which it feels good for you to operate in your calling and in your gifts because they recognize like the world needs all of what you have to give and they wanna make sure that you are in a space where you can give what the world needs. Another product of good community is that good community helps you endure the process. I don't know about you, but my journey in entrepreneurship and life in general as I have emerged as a young adult has been difficult and challenging for a lot of different reasons. And I am thankful to have a community that has shown up for me in those times when it has been difficult because they have allowed me to borrow their strength they have allowed me to borrow their courage. They have um, loaned me prayers in the midst of me being in the trenches. And when I think about good community, I want to know that the people around me are going to be in the trenches with me and they're going to not only help me get through, but they're, they're not going to let me forget the lessons that I learned in that process as well, because we know that like it is a journey and we're not, we're not like on a destination, but that like, that doesn't always mean that the journey is easy and we need people to go along their journey with us, both in the good and in the bad. Another product of good community is that good communities help you to work towards progress. And there's something about being around like dynamic, dope Black women that are like on their shit because when Black women are on their shit, like what happens is that the world begins to change because we hold so much impact. Um, the solutions that we're creating through our businesses, the ways in which we are showing up in our communities, like has exponential impact um, at all levels in so many people's lives, whether we know them or we don't. And when you're in good community, there are so many people individually that are focused on creating impact and that creates ripple effects. And it also creates just like momentum as a community to be able to create impact that lasts far beyond um, one particular season. And then lastly, good community should always activate your potential. Um, the folks in your community should be able to speak life into you. Um, but what I really think that the folks in your community should be able to do is they should be able to call out the untapped potential in you. There is something very special about having folks in your community who see something in you that you do not see in yourself and who continue to call that thing out of you until what they see on the inside of you is an actual tangible element or characteristic that exists on the outside of you. And we all need people who see something in us that we don't see in ourselves and remind us that we have the potential and the capacity to be those people. So these are just some of the products of your community. If you're still with me, drop a P in the chat one time. Okay, y'all still pushing P with me, so I'm gonna keep it pushing. All right, we back, we're back to the quote. By now, you should be reciting it with me out loud. You are a product of the people you place in your presence. So we've gone through who you, the individual, we've talked about some of the products of good community. And now we're gonna spend a chunk of time on the people because 
it is people who make up our communities. And so I believe like this might be one of the most important elements of the formula altogether because there is no community without the people that make up the community. So if you are like me, you maybe have heard of this concept of like having a personal board of directors. Maybe you're familiar with that language um, because of business, but essentially your board of directors, whether that's like in your personal life or within um, the aspect of like business is a group of folks who have input, influence and impact on the ways in which you move and make decisions. They help you to make logical decisions, to make wise decisions, to think about like where you're investing money, where you're investing time, where you're investing energy and resources. I love the concept of having a personal board of directors because they hold us accountable. But what I really think that every CEO and founder needs is a board of dreamers, very similar to a board of directors and that they these are a small group of folks who have permission to have input, impact and influence in the ways in which you show up as an individual, but also the ways in which you show up as an entrepreneur. And so as I talk through some of the roles um, on a board of dreamers, I would love for you to think through who in your community fits this role and if they would be someone who would serve you well to have permission to have input, impact and influence in your business. So one of the first dreamers that you need on your board of dreamers is a visionary. I love visionaries because they live at this level of like 60,000 feet. They are big picture thinkers. Um, it, they like to hell with the details. Like I can give you, I can give you like a fully actualized vision, but I don't know if I got all the details that you need. And what I love about these folks is that you can give them an idea. You can give, you can even give them a an idea that's not fully developed. And a visionary, what they will do is they have the capacity and the capability and the ability to think through and to see, like without a shadow of a doubt, the most actualized, realized, biggest, most evolved, effective version of an idea. And they are able to hold on to that vision for a long time. And so the benefit of having a visionary on your board of dreamers is that they are the people that help you to think bigger and better to create solutions that are stronger, that are better, more effective because they can see the end result. I'm not gonna say that you have to necessarily count a visionary to be the executor because sometimes they have it and sometimes they don't. But what they will always have is the ability to like really, really help you dream big and dream wide and they will hold on to that. And because that's where they live and breathe, they love, that's their bread and butter. The second person you need on your board of dreamers is a storyteller. Okay, so I just got back into reading. I love a good plot line. I love like the dynamicity of characters and the development over time. I am a movie goer. I love a good like movie with a good plot with all of the things, all of the stories that are interconnected when it comes to movies and books and TV shows that like we love. You need a storyteller on your board of dreamers because what a storyteller really does is they serve as a historian for your experience. And so when you have a storyteller on your board of dreamers, they are the person that's able to tell you where you've been to where you are. They're able to tell you about all of the different storylines that come into play, but they're really the people who help you to see the process and the journey that you've been on. Because often when you're in the process, it is hard to remember like all of the details of the things that happened. Sometimes it's hard to even remember like what lessons did I learn? What lesson am I currently learning? And the storyteller is there to remind you of those things, but they're also really great at being able to help you to think through like, what's the message, right? So if I had to tell this story to someone, else? What would resonate with other people? What's the similarity that you share with a lot of other people who maybe have a similar experience? And so you need a storyteller on your team because they're going to remind you like we used to be in the trenches and maybe we made it and we're going places and I need you to tell the world that like we made it and we're going places. The third person you need on your board of dreamers is a connector and I love connectors because they're the plug, <laughs> the literal plug. So connectors, what they're really good at doing is being able to connect concepts and ideas, but also people and resources. And connectors are not just like, 
I know the resource and like, maybe I'll connect you. If they say they're going to connect you, they take much pride and much joy and can in actually connecting you. Um, sometimes I feel like connectors are the people who like went to school to get all of the knowledge that everyone else missed. And somehow they always have a whole lot more information about the thing that I need information on than I do. And they are always just willing to share, to connect, to say, hey, the resource is here. Would love to introduce you to this person. Oh, have you thought about partnering with X, Y, and Z? And so you need a connector because it helps. They're helpful in helping you one to like bridge the gap, but also they're excellent community builders. Then the last person that you need on your Board of Dreamers um, might be my favorite person on the Board of Dreamers, I'm not even gonna lie, is a disruptor. And let me talk about these disruptors. The disruptors are the people who shake shit up. They're also the people who are with the shit at all times. And you need a disruptor on your Board of Dreamers because they are not satisfied with the status quo. And because they're not satisfied with the status quo, they do not let you get comfortable because comfortable, comfortability and status quo go hand in hand. So they're the people that are always going to push you outside of your comfort zone, asking you to do this scary thing. They are also the people who ask some of the best and most critical questions. And one of their favorite questions to ask is why? Why do we do it this way? Why have you not thought of this? Why hasn't this changed? They are, they're incredible at asking questions that call that cause you to pause and reflect about how you're moving and why you're doing it that way. My best example of a disruptor that we all know and love is Casey Richardson. She is a disruptor. And she like owns the fact that she's a disruptor. But when you think about what Blaze is, what this summit is, what she has been able to create, right, as a disruptor, then you understand why disruptors are necessary to have on a board of dreamers. And so I hope as I've talked through who the board of dreamers consists of, the types of roles that people play, that you've been able to identify some folks that are already, that are already in your community who potentially could serve on your board of dreamers. I also hope that you have taken a moment to think about what role you play because you should fall into one of these four categories as well. And if you're like, Ugh, I'm missing a few folks, then maybe you should be thinking about as you build community, are there people that I can bring in the, into this community that I feel confident and comfortable with as I get to know them and giving them permission to have input, impact and influence in the way that I move as a woman and as a founder and CEO. Okay, y'all still with me? Y'all know what to do. Drop a P in the chat and let me know you're still hanging out with me. Okay, I see a few P's in the chat, so you know I'm gonna keep it pushing. So at this point, you're likely saying one of two things. You're either like, okay, cool. I got my board of dreamers, like we're good to go. I got my people, I know where I fit, fit in with that. Like my tribe has always been really solid, so we Gucci. But I kind of like want to have some other folks just as a part of my community, right? Um, I want to be able to connect and engage with other people. And I'm looking forward to doing that. Or you're saying, Jasmine, like this whole community thing is new to me. I'm not even really sure where to start, but I know that I want some good people, but I just don't know where to start. And if you're in either of those two spaces where you're looking to build an even better community or you are looking to start building community, I'm going to share a few places where you can find good people that likely would align with the goal of community. So y'all stay with me. I got a few spaces where you might be able to find some of these people. So the first place that you can find good folks to be a part of your tribe are at events. So that's in-person events or virtual events. And events are a really great place to find people to be in your tribe because when you attend an event, two things are true. Event attendees, always share a common identity and a common goal or purpose for why they are attending said event. So take this summit. Everyone attending the summit is a woman. 99% of us are black women, common identity. We're also in business or looking to get into business. So we identify as founders, entrepreneurs, CEOs, right? 
So shared identities. Our common goal is that we are invested in developing both personally and like growing and learning for our own personal development, but we're also invested in ensuring that we are committed to learning and growing so that our businesses can grow and develop shared goal. And at events, you have increased access to people who share common identities and common goals. And so when you think back to earlier, I said the goal of community, one of the goals of the community is that they're, they're aligned with your core values. And so shared identity and common goal means that there is more likelihood that these folks are going to be aligned to your core values. And so events, both virtual and in-person, are great ways to find your people. I also think about Think about communities are another great way to find, our, to find our people. And when I say communities, I'm thinking about um, these business experiences that you invest in. So a mastermind, a business intensive, a course, or a paid community experience where community sort of is built into the experience that you are purchasing. And, and communities are helpful and beneficial in helping you to find your people because they're for extended periods of time. So either you know exactly when it ends, it's a six week business intensive, it's a nine month mastermind, or it's a membership that you pay for so then you can opt in and out when you get to decide when you end it. But the same people begin to show up in the space over and over again. You get to know them, you get to trust them, you begin to like them. And then when you're ready to engage, there's like very little pressure because you've spent so much time with them already and you know a little bit about them, about what they're all about. So it helps you to get in and to engage, but you get to observe folks over time. Third is networks. And so I say networks like your personal networks. So the virtual introductions that your friends do, the shared mutual connections that you've made because so-and-so knew so-and-so who also knew that girl and all y'all are now connected. And I love finding my people through my personal network because there is an element of shared trust. So there's at least one person who can vouch for good people on both sides. And I don't know about you, but my friends don't run with no raggedy folks. So if I have a friend that's going to vouch for you, I know at, at baseline, you've got to be like quality and you're going to be dope because that's just who my circle runs with, right? Um, it's also helpful when there is sort of a mutual connection because it sort of sometimes expedites some of the like weird awkwardness of like building relationships as an adult because we're not going to slide past the fact that it is sometimes awkward and odd to build a relationship with new friends as an adult. And then lastly, social media. And I think sometimes people be sleep on like social media friends because they're not the same as in real life friends. But what I love about social media is that you have unlimited reach. Like literally people all across the globe are clicks away. And it can be really easy to begin to build relationships with people on social media. It is as simple as commenting on posts and commenting on or like engaging in the stories. And maybe it starts with a DM conversation, but there's so many like small ways that you can build up into really having someone that's really dynamic, really join your community and be someone that you engage with often. So th these are just a few of the places. So if you're looking to broaden your community, to grow your community or to start a community, start with some of these places. This summit is a great place to find really dope women to be a part of your community. So I hope that you're engaging with these folks, right? Because we have a shared identity and a shared goal. All right, you know, we're back to the formula. <laughs> you are the product of the people you place in your presence. So now we're going to talk a little bit about place. And when I think about place <clears throat> in relation to this formula and the idea and the concept of community, what I'm really talking about is the season of life that you're in. The place that you're in is the season of life that you're in. And when I think about seasons, <laughs> is that we evolve and we change, right? We grow because we are dynamic folks and we are committed to our own growth and development. And so that means that like, we are constantly evolving, which means that like our community could and probably should also be evolving. And sometimes that gets a little tricky. And so I'm gonna share a few thoughts on questions that maybe help you to reflect on the season that you're in and what you need from your community in this season and in future seasons. So 
the first part of understanding this evolution of community within different seasons is just a level of awareness. I'm a firm believer that like self-awareness is a tool that a lot of people sleep on, but it is an incredible tool when you are self-aware. So I want you to think about who am I today? Like who am I, who am I today? What kind of woman am I today? And not just like, what am I doing? What is my business doing? But like, who am I at my core? How do I show up? What do I value, right? What does my presence and my energy say about me? Who am I today? I'm gonna give you a few minutes, not a few minutes, a few moments. If you are brave, you can respond to this question in the chat. If not, jot it down anyway, and take some time over the next few days to reflect on who am I today? Who am I today? So the next part of understanding the evolution of seasons is really just like recognizing that there is an evolution that is going to take place for yourself individually. And the question you ask when you recognize and you understand evolution is who am I becoming? Who am I becoming and who do I want to be? So who do I want to be three months from now? Who do I want to be a year from now? Who do I want to become three years from now? And again, not what am I doing? Who am I becoming? What characteristics do I have? What are people saying about me in the way that I move? It might include like, what am I doing in my business? But it doesn't have to, and it shouldn't start with that. So the first question, who am I today, is going to give you a very good gauge on like today, in this season, who I am. The second question is around the seasons that you foresee you walking into at some point later down the road at a said later date. And they're all about you. The next two questions are specific to your community. So when you know who you are, you also can show up better in community. So as you think through like this season of evolution and what evolution means for your community, I want you to reflect. Reflection is also a tool that a lot of people seek. And I really want you to ask yourself, how does your tribe, how does your community reflect the woman that you're becoming? Because I think oftentimes we have community that fits who we are today and it doesn't fit who we're becoming. And then as we evolve and become more self-aware, more engaged, more profitable or prominent as a business owner, whatever it is, as we evolve and become, we often are looking shocked and we're blindsided when our community then begins to shift and we have like an immense amount of hurt and just like confusion around it because we did not take the time to think through who, I'm, who am I becoming and does my tribe reflect that? And so if your tribe doesn't reflect who you're becoming, I'm not telling you to cut anybody off. I'm not telling you to cut anybody off today. But what it helps you to do is to say, if I'm becoming someone different than what my tribe reflects, there is a potential that these relationships will begin to look different. And you can prepare yourself for the emotional and mental tax that that will require when that time comes, right? I'm not telling you to cut nobody off. Just know that like, as you evolve, if your circle doesn't reflect that, then your circle will evolve and that is okay. Like we all have permission to evolve and that is okay. And then the last element of this idea of like place and seasons and evolution is the concept of advocacy. So you know who you are today, you know where you're going, where you're headed, because you know who you want to become. You also know how your circle reflects the woman that you want to become. So the future you, how it can serve both the present you and the future you. And then the last thing is, if we know all these things, then you know what you need from your community as you evolve. So oftentimes, Black women, I've fallen into pray to this as well. We show up as superwomen. I'm a recovering superwoman. I put my cape down. Sometimes I pick it up every now and then. But I am learning to say, I am aware of your needs, but I also need to tell you what I need to. 
I think Black women, we've got to get comfortable with asking the people who love us, who we have chosen to be in community with, we have got to start getting comfortable asking them the things that we need, particularly as we are growing and evolving. Because what I've learned is that people will go to the depths to give you what you need if you simply ask them. And because I don't know any mind readers, y'all might know some, but I don't know any mind readers, then I know that if I need something, I have to open my mouth because no one is reading my mind. And so I wanna give you permission. If you don't feel like you have it, I wanna empower you today, like ask for what you need from your community because the community needs something from you, but you also need something from the community and it is okay to ask for what you need to get to where you wanna be. Okay, if y'all still with me, you already know what I'm gonna ask you to do. Put a P in the chat if you still with me, you still rocking with me. All right, I see some P's in the chat, so you already know I'ma keep it pushing. Okay, we're at the last part of the formula. And if you haven't said this quote out loud, I'm gonna need you to say it out loud with me right now. You are the product of the people you place in your presence. In your presence. Um, and so we're gonna dive in. We're gonna talk a little bit about presence. So first I wanna say your presence matters. Your presence in this world matters, but particularly when I think about the communities that you exist, the community exist in and the communities that you cultivate, your presence absolutely matters. And because it matters, I believe that your presence should always add value to your community. And adding value will look different for every community and for every person. And so I just want you to think, you can jot this question down, you can drop your response in the chat or you can just spend some time reflecting on it later. What does adding value look like to you in practice? What's the tangible act of adding value? What does it look like for me? Because I want you to know what it looks like to add value in my community. And I can't tell you what it looks like specifically for the communities that you exist in. I can only tell you that you should always be adding value to your communities. So I'm gonna spend some time talking about positive, powerful presence. I believe that there are a few prototypes for having a positive, powerful presence. And I say positive because you can also have a negative, powerful presence. But if you're adding value, you default mostly to having a positive, powerful presence. So as I talk through these five types of presence, if one of them resonates with you, let me know in the chat. So the first type of positive, powerful presence is a calming presence. So these are the people that can walk into a chaotic room, a chaotic environment, a chaotic situation. And because they walk in the room, the chaos starts to recede. They're the people who like can keep a cool head under all kinds of pressure. But when you're around them, you also just feel calm. They're the people that I love to talk to when I am stressed or I'm in a high pressure situation because they're the people who are like even kill and they're gonna bring my temperature down. So calming presence has the ability to shift the ways in which chaotic situations, experiences or environments feel. A controlled presence, not a control lean, a controlled presence. I also like to call this the bad bitch presence because people with controlled presence, they just always to me are the folks who are like, um, just like they, they got it together and they are thoughtful in their responses. They're the people who are proactive in the way that they're responding. And when they have to be reactionary, they are very thoughtful about the way that they engage in that. They're the people who often just like, you can just see them and be like, yeah, it just looks like you got your shit together. Controlled, right? So they're, they're not reactionary. They are thoughtful and they are proactive, which helps them to have just a control around their emotions, around like their emotional intelligence and ways in which they engage in a space. Controlled presence. I think about an empowering presence. And an empowering presence, these are the folks who like gonna hype you up. They're the people who are like professional hype women. They're gonna gas you up. They're gonna tell you your hair looks nice. They're gonna compliment you on your lip color. 
Um, they are the people who really like have the language of affirmation. They have the language of belonging and the language of inclusion. And so when you are around them, you feel like you're a part of something. They draw you in to be a part of a community. And they and there's no question when you're around them that like you are supposed to be in that space. Then I think about a light presence. And I use a light, sort of talk about it in two ways. So I think about folks who have a light presence are, the folks who like, you can just look at them and it's like joy just like radiates from their being. Like, it's just like, they've got this like inner light that just like radiates out. They're the people that like, when you're around them, they feel warm. I don't know if you've ever been around someone who like makes you feel warm, but like it's, they like make you feel warm, right? And their light is what you see. This is what radiates out of them. But the, the duality of having the light presence is that I've often found folks with a light presence also make life light. They're the people who are always laughing, who are cracking jokes, who like are, their energy is just like contagious and it is childlike and it is playful and it helps you to like not take the world so seriously. They're the people who like are just like loads of fun to be around because they don't take themselves too seriously and they don't take anything else too seriously. And they're light. So the weight of the world feels like it just sort of falls off of you when you're around people that are light, like you feel lighter because of them. The last presence is a present presence. These are the folks who like, when you're talking to them, it feels like it's just the two of y'all in a room by yourselves talking. Like they're the people who are just so intentional about when they're somewhere and they're in the moment, they're in the moment. And you can tell that they're in the moment, the way they move, the way that they, they speak, the way that they engage with other people lets you know that like, they're mentally and physically, they are so in the moment. And there's something so powerful about all of these presences, right? They have the potential to shift the temperature of any environment and they can add value in any space. And so I hope that you were able to identify one or more of these presences as a way that you actually show up, that you authentically show up in the spaces and the communities that you occupy. And then my last thing I'm gonna say about presence is that it is to be protected. Like, presence and your energy, it's to be protected. It is an expensive resource. And once you give it out, you don't get it back. It's like time. Once you give it, you don't get it back. And so I would urge you all to be aware of how you feel, what you think, the language that you use, and how your body is responding when you are in the presence of certain people. Because when you're in the presence of someone with a positive, powerful presence, you feel different. And when you're in the presence of someone with a negative, negative powerful presence, you also feel different. And we have to be aware of when we can shift where and, and who we give our energy to. That being said, if you got your phone, <laughs> you should probably screenshot this. These are just some green flags for people in your life, right? Some positive green flags for building community. All of these proceed with all of these people because they likely will have a powerful, positive presence in your life and in your community. So I'm going to leave you with just three final thoughts on how you can be pushing P in your community. The first is practice. When I think about practice, what I recognize is that intentionality is against the nature of who we are. We are by nature selfish people, and that's okay. That's how we're wired. It takes a lot to get out of that. There's a practice of intentionality that we should all be looking to develop, hone, and train. We think about intentionality as a muscle. It is something that can be developed and trained. And so I ask you, what does intentionality mean for you and community? How do you give it? And what does it look like when people are giving it to you? Make sure that you have a pulse on your community. Our communities are living, breathing organisms. And because they're living, breathing organisms, that means they are growing, they're evolving and changing. People are leaving, um, coming in and coming out for various reasons. And that we should never be afraid to let someone drift away from our community that no longer needs to be there and to bring someone new in. So I want you to think about who do you want influencing your life with their perspective? Who do you want influencing your life with their perspective? And then lastly, Pursue people and pursue the challenge of what it looks like to nurture relationships with people. As I was talking today, hopefully you thought about someone who does community really well for a variety of reasons. Maybe it's your mom, maybe it's your line sister, maybe it's your auntie, maybe it's your business bestie who does it really well. 
whoever it is, think about someone that you know who does community really well and identify what about their actions is important to you. And what's something that you can take from them and make it your own, make it authentically you to help you show up in community better? How can you implement it to make it your own so that you show up in your community better? I'm gonna leave you with this. And I hope that you stand on your feet and you say this with passion and with pride. You are the product of the people you place in your presence. Thank you. Woo! Yes! Hey! So good, sis. Hey, hey, hey. Happy Freedom Day. Happy Independence Day. Happy Juneteenth. All the things. Sis, how you feeling? Um, yeah, it's always so wild to watch myself on screen. It's always like a very surreal experience um, watching myself like trade and educate, um, mostly because I don't think there are many spaces where I get to look back on like what I've done. Um, I'm usually just like, all right, training done. And then like, I'm out. Um, and so it's always really surreal to like watch myself, but also watch people respond to like what I'm saying in real time. So I appreciate y'all for engaging in the chat. Um, the chat was blown up, so I really appreciate y'all. Did it feel good to see all that affirmation? It did, always. Yeah, you deserve, you deserve. Um, y'all, Jazz is super dope. She's actually spinning the block um, for the second time uh, this summer. Uh, she is one of only two who, who is spinning the block. So like Akia, who literally started it off <laughs> with the first session, and Jazz, uh, who is, has done the last session of the summit, um, I couldn't have, have imagined anything better uh, from the vets. Y'all y'all definitely killed. Um, all right, so we have Jazz right now before the close of the summit. The summit is ending, okay? You're not going to the metaverse tonight to talk to her. You're not going to the fluid space. No one-on-one, uh, -on -one, you know, speed networking. So put your questions in the Q&A or raise your hand. Right, so that you can crystallize these gems that um, Janice has given. First up, we have Aaliyah. Hey, uh, Jazz, thank you so much for coming to the platform, talking to us. That was great. I'm so cool. Uh, don't mind my sister, she playing her music in the background, pregnant lady. But uh, <laughs> I had in this season of life, I just relocated to Texas from Chicago, but friends that i've had i'll say since maybe i was 13 14 a lot of those i'm gonna say like 80 percent of those relationships dismantled when i say it got ugly it got ugly like back talking behind people back and like me hearing stuff from people that we all connected to you know mutual friends and i'm like what's going on i'm confused you know i was heartbroken and it's not to say that I'm 100% innocent. You know, everybody play a role in, into fallouts. But I was heartbroken that I felt like me and my sisters don't want to fight for me. You know, we've been solid for 12 years. We not big, we not big enough to let's talk it out. Let's, let's hash it out. Let's discuss it, you know. And hearing you say, you know, the, the peace. I can't even get the sentence out. The enemy that stole my tongue. But um, hearing you say that, though, it just it brought a sense of a peace of mind over me because realizing what mindsets are you connected to, what perspectives are you connected to. I'm I'm, a, I'm big on Michael Ty, Pastor Michael Ty. He always says whatever has your ear has your faith, and you know sometimes you have those people who are 50-50. They not always positive, but they not always negative either. They just riding the fence. You know, I really know what I'm doing, and to be around these type of women that I've I've connected to during this summit. When I've, I've been on my social media going crazy about this summit. This is my first year figuring it out. I found out like two days before it started. This has been a powerhouse emotionally, mentally, spiritually, you know, business wise, even academically. They didn't inspire me to, you know, go ahead and finish out your degree. Like, just get it over with, get it done. So to see and be in this space to connect, to hear you say all the things that you're saying, I thank you for that. It confirmed something in my spirit that was that has been disturbing my sleep, you know. 
that I, you know, it's okay to disconnect from those that you've outgrown. I'm not the same Aaliyah no more. I'm not the trench baby Aaliyah no more. You know, we've grown in ways. And it's not to say that those people haven't grown. They have grown in their own ways. It's not to speak against any of them negatively in no kind of way. I'm just saying the rules of engagement has changed. I'm ready to get in the winning circle. I'm ready to network where it's plenty. And um, I thank you. Thank you so much for um, confirming that in me. Like, I'm, I'm happy you're here. Like, I needed this. I, I had a good service in church today. Y'all been on fire today. Thank you so much, Casey. I love you. I can't wait to work with you. I'm just excited about this. This is a good time, you know? Yeah, I love you too. You're in the land of plenty. Go ahead, Jazz. I love that. Um, okay, so first I want to, I want to apologize on, the, on behalf of the friend group that probably won't ever tell you that they're sorry. Um, because like friendship heartbreak is a different kind of heartbreak and it it hurts mm -hmm. like a like a breakup when you're dating but it hurts i think it hurts worse because there's just like a really um true and authentic love um that's pretty close to unconditional like in in solid um female friend groups and so i have been through that hurt and i recognize like how challenging how challenging that is particularly when you're already in a season of shifting um that like those two things happening at the same time um, is that can be really hard. And so I want to apologize on behalf of the people who probably don't even know the ways in which they've impacted you. Um, and to tell you, like, you're part of Blaze. And I know Casey talks about this all the time, that like, we're a tribe and we're a family. And I hope that you've seen this even in the chat, right? But like, I have. Blaze is like a true tribe. And so you may have lost some folks that you really thought was going to like go to distance with you, but know that like because of the summit, you have gained so many women who are rooting for your success, who want to be in the trenches with you, who are going to support you and root for you. Um, and Ka when Casey says she got you, like that's a real and true statement that like she mm -hmm. says from the bottom of her soul and not just something that she says, but that she also backs up with action. And so now like you have found your home and-, and Okay, welcome home, you sir. You are, in a, you are in a place where like the people that you need to be around like are in this space. And so I just want to affirm that like, you are a part of the tribe and like the tribe is going to do what the tribe going to do. And it, it's just, a, it's just legit. I love it here. Thank you so much. No Thanks, Aaliyah. Thank you, Aaliyah. Jay, you might make me cry now. I'm trying to hold it together. Jeez. How many times am I going to cry today? Uh, <sighs> all right. We're going to keep it rolling. We're going to keep it rolling. Thank you. Sis. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. The next one is coming from my girl, Shaniki Amiz. What's up, mama? You're on mute, Shaniki. I hope you can come off of you. Okay. There. Can you hear me? I guess that was good. Um, I'm at work today, so don't pay no attention from whispering just a little bit. <laughs> because I was listening to this, but I was like, you know what? This is confirmation again, because yesterday I was just talking about, you know, Sometimes we outgrow people and we still want to hold on to them. Like, it's not a bad thing that they don't grow to their full potential. They grow to their potential and they stay. But then what happens is sometimes you become stagnant with them and you want to stay too. And you have to go because you start feeling bad because you're like, oh my God, why, why, you know, they got this, they got this, what I need, but they don't have everything. And they make you feel kind of crazy because you want to move. So when you're trying to tell them your vision or your dream, they make you feel bad about it. Like you like, well, maybe I shouldn't do it. So then that's a fear of theirs This, you know, put onto you. And it's just like your body starts feeding off of it. You're like, yeah, you're right. So I'm just, I'm going to just stay right here because they my friend and they know better, you know, or they my family member and they love me. So they know better. But at the end of the day, they don't know what's good for you. And then that's why like me dealing in mental health that's why your mental health gets out of whack because you still trying to search for yourself but you holding on to what they saying to you and you just stuck in this bubble feeling lost so i just felt good when you was talking about this today because it was confirmation because i was talking to somebody earlier that was the 50 percent person that i was sitting here thinking wow they make me feel sad when i talk to them. <laughs> when i talk to them like why am I talking to you? Because a parts of you are good. That's great. But I think I'm going to have to move on from this. <laughs> I can't stay stuck with this. And you confirmed that today. It was another confirmation because I've been feeling like, you know what? Don't feel bad when you got to let people go. But you do. You can't just keep settling and feeling like that's what all you deserve. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, that we can <laughs> release other people from a relationship and still wish them well um, and still speak well of them. And it just means like this is not the right season for you. And it doesn't discount or discredit all of the previous seasons that we have had with them and the value that they may have, may have added in a, in a future season. And so glad that I can add some confirmation um, to what sort of like you, what you already know, right? Um, and what yeah. you've already been processing through. So I love that. Thank you so much, Shanikia. Yeah, you can just call me Shy. That's what Casey calls me. Okay, thanks. thanks <laughs> so, shy. So, beautiful. so beautiful. I had to move out of the way because I knew Jazz was about to be preaching for a second. Um, very good question, Shy. Very good question. Um, all right. I'm going to I'm going to pop a question on the stage real quick, Jazz. And this one is from our girl Nina. She asked, she says, um, Jazz, can you share tips on how to manage slash nurture these relationships long term if they deem necessary? Um, I sure can. Hey, Nina, girl. Um, so I I think at the very end of, of that session, I talked about the idea of practicing intention and. I honestly think like intentionality does wonders for relationships. I'm learning that in my own relationships. And so that's a lesson that I've learned, right? Um, and so I think that one, recognizing if you're in a relationship with someone else, recognizing like what season you are in and what season they are in, because oftentimes like the seasons that we are in don't, they don't always align, right? So I think about, I have good friends. All of my good friends are in, long-term relationships or they're married with kids. And that is not my story. And so like our seasons look different. And because our seasons look different, like the, the ways that we engage with, the, with each other look different. Like the things that they're working through and what I'm working through are different. And that doesn't mean that one is better or worse. It just means that my expectation of what this looks like in this season may look different than it did when like we were 18 and all of us were in undergrad and we were all in the same season. So I think that's key, being aware of like what seasons folks are in and how they may be different um, and just like how to better navigate that. I think too, just being honest about like what you need um, and what, not even what your expectation is, but like what you desire, right? So I hope that we can be business besties or I'm just looking for a big sister. I need a mentor. And like, just, just name that, right? Because I think it helps to, one, it helps you to articulate a little bit of the expectation and helps the other person either choose, like I want to do that or I don't want to do that. And I think a lot of our relationship hurt comes from, we have expectations of other people that we never voice to them that they're unaware of, then they move outside of the expectation, then we're upset, but they didn't know, they didn't know that, that they were your business bestie because you never said that. You never asked them to do that. So now when they didn't miss two weeks worth of meetings with you because life, like they don't know that they're your business bestie unless you tell them that. And so I think like name what you want the relationship to be or what how you have valued it in your life, because I think that's important for other people to also attach a value to it. Um, and then I I always say, I said this about like most things in life, just give people grace. Like life is happening at warp speed for everyone. And like, there are days when, you know, I'm on it and I'm like, I'm a good friend. I'm checking in with people. Like I'm the one that's being proactive. And there are other times when it's like life is happening and I can't communicate in the same way. It doesn't mean I love you less. It just means like I, le I need a little bit of grace in some seasons. And so I think, um, giving folks grace allows you to sometimes lower the expectation of like how you think people should be behaving in experience. Um, but I, I'm just a firm believer in like asking for what you need and ask for what you want, right? Um, if you and speaking the value of a relationship to the person, right? So like Casey is my mentor. She I also look at her as my big sister, and I tell Casey often how much I value our relationship, right? Like how much our relationship has done for me personally and in my business and professionally, right? And so whether whatever happens with me and Casey, right? We we locked in for life. But if if that were to be untrue, like Casey can walk away or I can walk away from this experience knowing like there was a lot of value in this season. And so whatever, whatever happens, like I know that this season was valuable and I can live like okay with whatever happens in a relationship when I know like the people in this relationship knew the value of it while they were in it. And so if you choose to be outside of it, that's cool because we both know, like, this was some good shit while it was good, okay? That's so good, Jess. That's so, so good. Um, all right, Tiffany Brown, I'm bringing you up, Mamacita. 
Jasmine actually kind of an already answered my question, but I just wanted to say that um, I really enjoyed your session and I did love the board of dreamers. It really um, sparked my creative juices back up. So I didn't have, I was kind of like going to like just let go of the whole being an entrepreneur thing um, after I had back surgery and um, and I was just having a hard time recovering and things weren't going well. But this whole, between this session and the whole entire summit really just sparked my creative juices to get back into what I am meant to be doing. So I just want to thank you for that. Tiffany, absolutely love that. Um, and glad that you're here. Uh, I, in December, had a very similar experience as a speaker. I was like, I'm about to quit. Like, this, the year is going to come to an end and I'm going to be done. And I found Blaze and life has looked very different since then. And so know that, like, again, the the tribe is here to support and asking for what you need. And, like, folks are going to pull up and do what they can do to make sure that, like, you have what you need to thrive. Yeah. And thank you, Casey. Also, this is I feel like this is really a truly meant to be moment for me. So. Yeah, I, I feel that way as well. And I thank God for uh, colliding our paths, Tiffany. I'm, I'm so, so, so grateful to be in connection with you. Thank you. All right, y'all. Well, that is officially uh, the end of all sessions tied to the summit. Jazz, you know I love you so, so, so much. So thank you for holding it down as always. Love you too. Thank you so much. Of course, of course, always. All right, ladies, so um, we have the very, very final segment. The very, very final segment. Um, I will be delivering the keynote speech to close out the summit. I will officially announce the top 15 winners, um, reiterating the prizes that they walk away with. Um, and that's it. Now, now ain't gonna get me if I don't do this. So I'm gonna... <laughs> I am going to uh, definitely give the opportunity this time for anybody who wants to say anything, okay? <laughs> because last time I shut it down, I really did. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll do that as well. So I'll see y'all on the other side. Love and light. <laughs> Even me, Lord, even me, even me, Lord, even me. They used to say, oh, Lord, wow, thou art passing our blessings, let some drown, let some drown, let some drown. Please let some fall down on me. Let me go again because I was muted. Even me, Lord. Even me. Even me, Lord. Even
When I was a teenage girl, I I aspired to be a chief financial officer. Okay, because that was higher <laughs> than I'd ever seen a black woman go. And and something in me, something in me told me that that Casey, you could do it. You could be the the, the chief financial officer of some huge company one day. And so, and so I, I, I made sure that I got the grades and, 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 and I majored in corporate finance. And then I took myself <laughs> uh, to corporate America to learn how to be a CFO. Right. Mm -hmm. And then um, I started working in Charlotte uh, at, at Bank of America at the headquarters. And uh, I was in the chief financial officer group. I was in the CFO group of the company, uh, working on the floor with all of the executives. And I was surrounded by white boys. There were no black people, OK? Uh, there were a, a few white women, right? But I was surrounded by, um, by white boys. And I, I learned there that I was really good. I was cold. I could, I could run circles around them, right? So then. So then <laughs> I, I thought bigger, right? I thought bigger. And I said, actually, I could just run a company that's huge, right? I'll be the CEO of a company one day, right? I'll be the CEO of a huge company one day, right? And so I started asking people questions, right, about how to get there, right? And they had answers for me, right? And they told me, well, Casey, I mean, if you want to be a CEO, then, you know, you can't just be over here with us spending money, right? Because, you know, risk management doesn't, doesn't generate money. Um, you have to go and understand the products that make money. So I said, okay, 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 cool, 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 cool. And um, so then I started seeking out roles where I could be you know, closer to the product, right? Not top of the house where the CFO sat, right? But literally in the business, right? Um, and uh, as I started doing, you know, conversations, you know, pitching myself, et cetera, right? Um, somebody said, okay, so you actually need to, you know, know how to structure the product. You need to go in credit first. You need to go in credit first. I'm like, okay, okay. Mind you, doing these small steps, you know, I will find out later, that was easy for them to tell me to do because they didn't see me doing what I was talking about in the first place, right? And I still thought <laughs> I needed somebody to give me what I wanted. Yeah. So I joined credit, right? And it turned out I was really, really good at that. I mean, every 18 months, I'm getting another promotion and another one and the money going up. And like my, my, my income is going up by 100K, right? And still... I'm running circles around folk. Only black girl, right? Right? So I talked to my manager one day, right? And I said, hey, <laughs> I want to be the CEO of a major corporation one day. And I need to make sure that all of the next steps I have get me there. Now, here we go. Uh-oh. Now we're running into friction now, right? Because at this point, I'm a vice president, right? I'm not the little girl from South Carolina with a, with a, with a Southern swang, a twang who's not a threat anymore, right? And my manager looked at me and she said, why the CEO? I mean, I mean, maybe you just want to be a, a market manager of Northern California like my mentor is. And I said, no. Yeah, threatened. Yeah, that's the word. Scarcity, that's the word. Insecure, that's the word. And I said, no, 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 no. Like, I, I literally, I literally have the chops to lead a, a huge organization like this one right here, like the CEO of a top company in the, in the globe, right? And literally perturbed, like, why does it have to be? Okay. <laughs> so then, Right. I said, OK, like I've done this entire journey. I said, oh, OK, let me talk to somebody else, because, again, these steps, I have to get these steps in. Right. But I was still <laughs> thinking I had to 
have it handed to me. I, I, I thought that I needed permission from somebody. I thought that somebody had to um, endow me <laughs> with this thing that's been in my belly since a little girl. So I went to <laughs> talking to some other people, right? Even some people that look like me, some, some black men from Charlotte who, you know, were around executives and have even uh, achieved some level of middle management stature by then. And they said, well, Casey, they said, well, Casey. Now I could still see in their eyes because they had been working there for 40 years and, and never, never scratched the surface, right? But they said, Casey, you have to you have to be able to prove that you can sell enough money to keep a company alive, Casey. It's like, yeah, you you structuring a product, but you're, you're not out there selling it, right? You're not out there talking, you know, to the people making them buy it, you know, bringing the money in. So I said, okay, 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 cool, 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 cool. Because I'm not afraid at all <laughs> of any of this stuff. So I then had a conversation, y'all, with a man, a white man, uh, who was the head of middle market business banking right middle market banking the people who sold these big sexy banking products right uh to people out there in 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 california and i said and literally I, me i'm just like i could do this my eyes closed i've been i've been structuring multi-billion dollar deals every single week you know i'm talking to cfos and lawyers and and, and ceos every day it's easy i'm, I'm dealing with people with Two billion in revenue a year up. You're doing 500 million to two billion. Sure. So talk to him, y'all. The same level of confidence, right? Having done so many incredible things, right? And I said, I want to be a CEO one day. I literally told him this, right? And in order to get there, I understand that I need to sell products and prove that I can generate enough money to keep a company alive. <laughs> and he said to me, he said, you wouldn't be any use to me until at least three years in. He said, because you have too much to learn. You wouldn't dare come in here and pick up accounts. You wouldn't be, he said it. He said, you wouldn't be of any use to me for at least three years. I said, all right. I ended the conversation right there. All right. All right. So then I changed my tactic again. Now, definitely, definitely seeing that these people don't see me, cuz. <laughs> like, like y'all don't see me, cuz. But that's okay, right? Uh, so I changed my reach. And I said, and when I say I said, I literally said to my boss and my boss's boss and my boss's boss's boss that I need to get a bribe within the next 12 months. And if I can't get it here, then I'm gonna go somewhere else to get it because I know that I will leave the globe one day and I need the reps to do it. Now still, <laughs> I hadn't fully realized <laughs> that I am depending on people to give me the keys that my soul has always been yearning for. But nevertheless, I'm still reaching. And these people, these people, uh, big ups to the higher ups. <laughs> uh, these people were definitely like, well, man, we want to keep her. If nothing else, we do want to keep her, right? So there were some conversations had in Singapore. There were some conversations had in London. There were some conversations had in France. Some conversations had um, in a few places around the world, right? They came to me with the options and I chose London. Okay. I chose London because London had this group that I would step into as the vice president of um, that was called Leverage Finance. And y'all, Leverage Finance was the was the tough deals. That's the Warren Buffett stuff. Those are the deals you work on when a company is sinking, like already drowning, right? And you structure a financial package to pull them out. And it might not work, but if it does, man, you Wall Street Journal in this bit. <laughs> Right. So I said, oh, that's the answer. Right. Like, I got to get over there. I got to get I got to get over there. And I, and I got to prove myself to these people who don't see me that I can that I can literally do deals where companies are already drowning and be on the Wall Street Journal. And that will be my ticket to being the CEO of a huge company one day. OK, so the date was set. OK, I was starting April 2020. Uh oh, <laughs> uh, 
I was starting April 2020. I was moving March 2020. So by February 2020, I had my stuff packed. I turned 30, y'all. I had a book release uh, party and I said on the mic, they said, well, what's next for you, Casey? What are you? And I said, I'm going to London to impact the world because I'm going to be a global leader one day. And then in March, the pandemic happened. And the company, like many others said, we can't take the risk of an international relocation. So we have put all international relocations on pause. And you can't go to London in April. And I was crushed. Hear me, because I had this thing in my belly and I've been reaching for it and I've been proving and I've been running circles around folk. And I've been going higher and higher and higher every time somebody chose not to see me. But how, <laughs> how was I going to put my dukes up against a, a panini panorama pandemic, right? And so I was stuck, right? And then during that time, a few things happened, right? Breonna Taylor lost her life and Amar Aubrey lost his and Christian Cooper almost lost his in the park and, and, and protests happened and I was in the streets you know what I'm saying? With my fists up, shouting every single night. And I and I got so emboldened because I felt like, wait for what? And I started telling my boss, <laughs> um, if I get locked up, you're not going to see me tomorrow morning. But I'm out here like, oh, something started riling up in me. Right. Something started, like 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 I can't I still can't find the words, but but something switched on the inside of me. Right. Um. And during that time, during that time, I was tapped, y'all. I was tapped out of my role. I was, I was, I was in Oakland, California, poised to go to uh, London, but on hold, right? And I was tapped. And what they said to me was, Casey, Casey, <laughs> um, this thing called the PPP has rolled out and we have a mandate to get loans and forgiveness, right? To hundreds of thousands <laughs> of businesses around the world in your segment, right? Global banking and markets. Can you please come over and, and manage a team and help stand up the organization and help? And then when I got there, y'all, I was literally, right? But, but by this time, to the people's credit, they knew, they knew enough, right? <laughs> Uh, to know that Casey wanted to be a leader now, ASAP, blah, blah, blah. So they tapped me for this opportunity to do in, in, for the interim before I went to London. And when I got there, I was literally surrounded by, obviously nobody looked like me, okay? <laughs> but I was surrounded by people who were 30 years my senior and 20 years my senior, who were, they didn't look like me, who were leading countries, Okay, and, and, and whole halves of, of, of the United States, et cetera, et cetera, right? And I, you already know this, ran circles, yeah, around them. And they tapped me again. They said, Casey, can you lead the pilot program for all of the, 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 the global banking and markets, the first global banking and markets people that we pull through this PPP loan forgiveness system? So I stood up the lawyers and the players and the reviewers and the checkers and the, the, the infrastructure and the rules. And I was teaching them how to change policy and the tech and all of these things with my eyes closed. It was easy, y'all. But then I said, Excuse me. <laughs> so what does this mean for me at the end of this? Because these people are, unless they're, unless they're not, right, tell me. But these people are more senior than me. Um, they're making more money than me, I'm assuming. Are y'all about to promote me uh, before the end of this or something? Am I going to London uh, higher than the VP? And what I was told was, <clears throat> on your worst day, you are twice as good than anybody next to you. But there is no way in hell that we are going to be able to promote somebody who's only been a vice president for a year. That's what I was told, right? But that time, y'all, <laughs> but that time, I no longer believed that they had the keys in the first place. I no longer believed that I needed their permission to give me what my heart had been yearning for. Whoa! My entire life, like I finally got after 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 getting in the streets without permission and marching without permission and feeling something rise up in my belly. I no longer believed <laughs> that 
that they had the keys to what I needed. And I said, okay. He said, wait, what, what, what? I said, now I have enough information to make a decision. <laughs> and I and I ended that call. And that Monday, I slid my resignation. That was October 2020. I slid my resignation. <laughs> Blaze is not five years old. It is not 10 years old. <laughs> we're not even, <laughs> we're not even a year and a half yet. But in October 2020, I finally realized <laughs> that the answer was always on the inside of me. And the things that I could do inside of those walls, it, it, it had nothing to do what I was going to do for my people outside of them. And so <laughs> I took myself abroad. I took myself abroad. I went to Dubai for a month that November because I needed to show myself that I was as limitless as I felt. And I ideated dreams, baby. I wrote down business plans. I got my thoughts together. And then I went to Zanzibar <laughs> that December. And I built out the Blaze Business Intensive. <laughs> and I started marketing myself with no email list. This is December 2020. <laughs> because I realized that I never needed them to endow me with anything that was always in here. And then I launched <laughs> that course. That's all it was in the beginning. I launched that course in June of 2021. Mind you, we just in December 2022. Okay, somebody with me. <laughs> And then in February, I got on a one-way flight to Africa because I said, I decide, I am the ticket. This global thing that I'm talking about, I, it's already inside of me, right? Instead of waiting for somebody to tell me that I'm a tech founder, I told myself, why not me? Why not me? Instead of waiting for somebody to tell me that I am worthy of being the CEO of a huge corporation, I told myself, why not me? It was in February of 2022, after I got on that plane, that Blaze was born, that the acronym Building Leaders and Accepting Zero Excuses was born. <laughs> that December... I did the first Blaze Virtual Summit, December 2021, and we won a Webby Award Honoree Distinction for Best in Business and Finance in the Globe. In the Globe. <laughs> one year later, one year later, after I wrote the business plan out for this thing that didn't even have a name yet. And here we are, 18 months beyond that point of, of me writing this thing out. <laughs> For this course of the first product and the first business tool, this thing that I kept trying to ask somebody to let me sell so I can prove I can make enough profit to run a company, to keep a company alive. Y'all, y'all, do y'all hear me? Y'all hear me? It was always <laughs> inside of me. I just didn't know that Blaze was. <laughs> the huge company that I would be the CEO of one day. Why not me? And NFTs will come, hear me. Millions of black women owned businesses will be mature as a result of the leadership that Blaze is executing in the world, hear me. <laughs> in this company, women will always have time off of their menstrual cycles every single month without question. Push the meetings. Tell me you can't make it. Tell me you need to rest. Why not me? Why not me? <laughs> and I don't know what your path has looked like. I don't know how many no's you have gotten. I don't know how many years you have spent trying to change somebody else's mind. I don't know how much money you have wasted on their degrees and their programs and their accreditations just to still be othered in their rooms. 
But what I am telling you, <laughs> what I am telling you is that it's already on the inside of you. There was no code switching in this summit on purpose. The DJ was fire, both of them, both of them on purpose. The way that we speak absolutely gives world-class knowledge that is better than anything else out there in the way that we speak. Why not you? Do not wait for permission. Do not drag your feet. Do not wait for perfection. You build it. You create it. You name it. You trademark it. You create that community. You nurture people. You protect them. You have everything that you need on the inside already. I promise you, cuz. That is my story. That is my why. That is the inception of this thing we call Blaze Virtual Summit that happens twice a year for Black female entrepreneurs around the world. It is a story of me going from person to person and higher and higher saying, please pick me, please pick me, please see me until I realized, <laughs> until I realized that I always had what it took to start this movement called Blaze. So what is in your belly? What needs to be birthed out of you? And I need you to ask yourself the question, why not me? I think about our ancestors that we can name, that sung songs to God, saying, oh God, while you're passing out blessings, please, 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 please let some drop on me. Think about the lack that they had, the, the, the lack of control, the lack of decision making, the, the lack of safety, the lack of ownership, the lack of love and humanity that they had. And I, and I then juxtapose that to all that we have in our hands today, all of the knowledge, all of the resources, all of the tech, all of the tools, all of the people, all of the connectivity. that we have today. <laughs> and I pray that same prayer. I sing that same song while standing up and acting because faith without words is dead, baby. So I still know where my help comes from. I still know that there is a God in the universe that loves the hell out of me. <laughs> I still know that I was always destined for this path, right? But I do the work every day. I show up in lack. I show up in plenty. I show up um, scared as hell. I show up in confidence, but I show up every day. And I am telling you that you can do the same. You can do even more than me. I promise you. Just start somewhere. I love y'all deep. I appreciate y'all for rocking with me. That's all. That's it. <laughs> Um, but I honor every single one of y'all. I honor every single one of y'all, every single one of y'all, and um, I'm done. And usually, 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 <laughs> I close it out right here. I announced the winners and I close it out, but I do want to allow folks to um say anything they want to say right it doesn't need to be flowers <laughs> i know y'all love me and i love y'all but anything you want to say um definitely raise your hand and i will uh let some folks come on the stage and um ensure that we close the summit out together um while people are queuing up in the uh hand raise section i'm going to announce the winners okay i'm going to officially announce the winners, okay? All right. Number one, everyone, we have our girl, Demetra Lucas, with 8,570 
points. Come on, Demetra. Uh, Demetra has been absolutely killing it. I am so, so, so thrilled for you, Mama Sita. And you win a very, very, very special prize from Podium, which is um, their Shaker plan. It is free to you for one year. And on that plan, you get unlimited courses, paid or free. You get unlimited um, coaching sessions uh, via video chat, paid or free. You get unlimited webinars, um, paid or free. And every single webinar that's done live will automatically save the recording and continue to charge for access to that content. You get unlimited downloads to offer to your people, um, paid or free. You get a community that has no cap. You can have as many membership tiers as you want to, paid or free. And <laughs> you get an affiliate um, program where you can have as many people as you want to sign up and they will they will sell your product to all of their communities and automatically get a commission. Um, for every sale that they make. So that is um, something that Pody and I wanted um, you to have, you, specifically you, Demetra, um, given that you have worked so hard to um, secure this spot. <laughs> and um, just to let you know, it is a powerful tool. The Blaze Knowledge Academy, the Blaze Knowledge Academy, we have a membership community of 5.6 thousand people today. Um, we have about 1.6 thousand um, customers today of people just buying different products or downloads or whatever. Um, we have some affiliates, maybe 50 affiliates in there today. And I pay, I pay Podia 0% on any sales I make because I'm in the very same plan you're in. So it doesn't take off any margin from any sales. Um, so it is a beautiful launch to a, a business or an extension of the business you already have. Um, but definitely utilize this to, uh, get it popping in your first year. All right. <clears throat> So proud of you. I wish I could see the uh, chat right now, but I can't because I have the winners big on the screen. I hope y'all can see it as big as I can. It's pretty cute. All right. Number two. I'm going to say all of these, y'all. Okay, let me say number two. We have Tiffany Brown. Tiffany Brown. But I'm telling y'all, all, all the rest, y'all get a, a super dope prize. We have number three. Tierra Davis. Number four. Chandra Merritt, come on now. Number five, Aaliyah Young. Number six, Samia Mosley. Officially number seven, Courtney West. Okay, Court. Number eight, Andrea Kwok. I hope I'm saying it right, Mama Sita. Love and light. Number nine, Shayla Terry. Number 10, Gina Green. Number 11, Janae Wiggins. Ravens girl, who is my girl. Number, number 12, Demetria Williams. Number 13, Monet Edby. Number 14, y'all, Dana St Stancil Jones. Oh my gosh, and number 15 is Jazz, Jasmine Prince. Super, 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 super dope, ladies. Um, and what you all get in spots number two through 15, hear me clearly, and I'm telling you today, even if you don't understand this concept, this thing is going to pay dividends for years to come. What you all get is a very, very, very intensive, deep dive, customized automation audit for your business. And in that audit, you're not only going to be able to talk about what exists for your business today, but you're going to, you're going to articulate all the dreams that you have, all of the dreams that you have that exist and do not exist. And then each of you will receive, it will be pages and pages long, a customized strategic document that gives you tips. Everybody's will be very different on the tech, the tools, the solutions, et cetera, that you should use. Each of you will have your own customized one to actualize everything you listed and everything that was audited. Okay. You will receive a customized strategic document that tells you how to automate all the pockets of your existing business, right? And your dreams. Um, so just to give you some context on what this can do for you and will do for you, right? Um, on Zapier alone, right? That is a tool. I automate about 3,000 tasks per month, per month, per month. It saves me hours every single week, right? 
um, across uh, social media type stuff, right? That happens. I automate about 799, that's the average um, activities per month, but I use probably like 40 automation tools today. <laughs> Okay, so literally, I mean, like definitely even my consulting clients, they're like, how are you, do you know, but like, I'm chilling. I take a nap every day, cool. Uh, the Blaze the Blaze Virtual Summit, we plan this thing from inception to, to launch in 90 days every time. Like 90 days, not a day over, not an hour over that. Uh, so you will get all of that game, which will pay dividends for years to come. Um, so I hope you enjoy it. I hope that um, it edifies you tremendously. Um, and and again, I want to remind you all that at midnight, the 50 percent offer for the Blaze Business Intensive expires at midnight. The 50 percent offer for the Blaze Business Intensive expires. The code is summer 2022. Go to go to BlazeKnowledgeAcademy.com to check it out. BlazeKnowledgeAcademy.com to check it out. But I teach that myself. I teach it live. I teach it live. You have unlimited, unlimited feedback from me on anything you need help with um, via email throughout the entire six weeks. We get together every single Saturday and I teach the cohort for six weeks. You get lifetime access. I'm saying that word again, those two words again, lifetime access to uh, wind down Wednesday office hour so that during the course and thereafter, any questions that you have that come up in your business, you, an alumni, only y'all, ever, <laughs> will have access to that weekly wind down Wednesday office hour with me. You get tools and resources such as cash flow projection templates, uh, business planning templates, budgeting tools. Um, I mean, you get so much competitive analysis, uh, template, a whole bunch of stuff, okay? Um, and you obviously get to uh, learn alongside a, 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 a tribe of your peers, a, 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 an inner tribe of your peers. So you see a lot of um, former students in here, right? So y'all really do rock together. Um, but that expired on midnight. At midnight. You can still enroll, right, up until July the 7th because the course starts on the 9th, right? But that particular um, special, right, uh, discount expires tonight at midnight. That was an interesting sound. Okay. See, this has been a long five days. My body checking out on me. Um, all right. So now this is the end. Like, let me make this clear for y'all though. But I'm not gonna close the mic, okay? Because folk was folks was hurt last time. <laughs> but then I went into the replay and saw how hurt folks were. Um, but this is the end. So, y'all, after you finish talking, I need y'all to get this. Let this let this resonate, let this sizzle in your spirit, okay? So y'all don't be mad at me. After y'all finish talking, it's over, okay? There will be no more sessions, okay? I'm not going to be back on the stage. I'm going to see some of y'all <laughs> in the Blazers Intensive. Love y'all. I'll see the 15 um, in the, the strategic doc, you know, audit session. Uh, Demetria, I'll, you know, I'll definitely facilitate the podium gift to you. But that's it now, okay? Now the community still gets down, but you know, this ain't happened again until December. All right, I think I've beat a dead horse. <laughs> yes, I have to prom y'all, Jazz, because y'all be fussing. All right, um, so now we are going to give our um, reflections, right? Um, anything you want to say? The mic is yours. All right, Aaliyah, you are up, mama. Yeah, y'all can hear me. I know yeah. I talk so much, y'all, but this that's my tea. I'm gonna be a, a world a global renowned speaker, y'all. That's gonna be that's my lane. I've been doing this since I was a kid. I'm stepping into my power. But my reflection is I have not taken this lightly. When I say everything has been happening in my life in the down order, all the way up until me getting here to Texas from Chicago. If I was in Chicago, I wouldn't even been able to make space to make this space. So like I say, everything happened for a reason. I'm happy to be here. I am on cohort six, so I'm gonna be a future alumni. I'm gonna be back in December with my powerful testimony. Y'all gonna be like, my good sister said she was gonna work these six months and she showed up, I'm showing up. I'm not taking this lightly. I'm taking me a rest day today because I need to digest everything and get my brain right and get it ready for when I rise at five on Monday for prayer and then, you know, get into my day. I'm coming to my meeting, Casey. 
equipped and already ready. You finna see so much of me. You gonna be like, my little sister is so irritating. I am y'all. I'm just, I'm clingy like that when I love you. Like, girl, I need that power. I need you to keep feeding me. I need all y'all to keep feeding me. I'm following some of y'all on social media. I've replied to everybody direct messages. I've exchanged phone numbers. Thank y'all for my tribe finding me, for me trying to find my tribe. Even the friendship does not foster from this space, just the connection, just to know you all, just to have experienced you all, to hear y'all, to know some of y'all stories, partially meet with people. I thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Casey, and I cannot thank you enough. Like I said, you're going to get tired of seeing me at this point. Then when y'all see me on y'all TV doing my book tours and stuff, y'all going to be like, my sister told us. She came and told us my foundation. I even changed my social media names to my foundation name already. It ain't even, it's just written out on paper, just the name. I ain't even got the whole plan yet, but we going up anyway, you know? I love you, Casey. Yay. I thank you so much. I'm, I'm happy to be here. It's, it's going up. I'm going to see y'all in December. Mwah, 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 mwah. Mwah, 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 mwah. It's up, sis. Uh, I say an amen. I say an amen. I love it. Okay, Dr. Alexis, I'm bringing you up, Mama Sifu. All right, I gave him more time this time. Now, I don't see Dr. Alexis up. Okay, there we go. You hear me? Yep, I hear you. All right, good. I just want to say to you, you are a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful jewel in the gym that we have all been blessed to experience and hold space with. I give thanks to you for creating this space and following your divine gifts. I give thanks for them people telling you that a truth about you, which it wasn't the truth about you, and you finding your own truth. I give thanks for all the beautiful women queens, goddesses that came and support you and that will continuously support you. I give thanks for the generations that we won't even be alive to see that will still benefit from the planting that you've done in this season of life. I give thanks for all of the abundance that you're going to receive and be poured back into you. The rest that you will get after this conference and this summit, the continual support that you will get after this summit. I thank the most high for you and I love you. I just want you to know before this summit, I was in a whole nother space. And after this summit, <laughs> your girl twerking and ready to work. So I'm giving so much thanks for you, um, all the sisters in this space. And let's just continue to be blessed, continue to walk in our purpose and just slay every damn thing we touch. All right. Ashe, Ashe. Thank you so much, sis. Uh, I love you so much, Dr. Alexis. <laughs> I love you so much. <sighs> Y'all are so sweet. Okay, Raven, uh, you don't got to show your camera, but I got to bring you on stage, mama. Um, I got to give you your flowers for sure. Um, Raven. I'm in here doing my hell, listening. <laughs> Raven, I appreciate you so much. Sis, I appreciate you so much. I trust you immensely, and that means everything to me. I trust you with my businesses. That means everything to me. Um, I trust your, your intuition. Um, I trust you with my eyes closed, and I appreciate you for being my right-hand woman um in this in, in a space where we've collaborated with over 40 businesses and to, to to put on a huge production and i did not worry one bit <laughs> at all sis um you have killed it you have executed um at the utmost level of excellence you have done everything you told me you would do you have put your authenticity into this thing you have affirmed me behind the scenes uh you affirmed me on stage and made me cry <laughs> and um even if you don't do a single thing more raven even if you don't do a single thing more i am ooh, so grateful for everything you have sown into me into my life, into my company, into all of the women present here. 
I thank you for your answer being yes <laughs> without hesitation. Um, and I thank you for trusting me the way that you do. Um, I don't take that lightly. Um, so I just want to honor you for that. You've done an incredible job. We've, we've done it again, sis. Of course. It's been a long journey. Um, I feel very honored sometimes. I just sit behind the scenes and let other people love on you because you know, I'll be like, you know, I, I get her all the time. <laughs> and um, I've known you for so long. and But I just be thinking, I'm like, damn, like, and we don't been through a lot <laughs> together um, these last few years. And I know listening to um, Jazz message, the one about, you know, community hurt, I'm like, eh, I'll be like, fuck them bitches. Like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't like them bitches. Like, I'm still not there yet. But I'm also like, at the same time, you know, if you don't, release what's in your hands you won't have empty hands to receive and that was me I know that my hands were full with so many people who um did not value me but I was very useful and I think coming from uh, being a little girl you know my story being adopted and you know always just looking for somebody to embrace you and say like I love you like I just was always looking for you always and I don't mean that lightly always and like now just knowing that I can I have you like I can just shoot a text and I don't have to sugarcoat I don't have to you know I voice message you crying and like while Leo was talking like you gonna get sick of me she don't. You never made me feel that way. You never made me feel like I was a burden or you was tired of me. Even when I would talk about one thing a million times until I could process it, you just sit there with me. And then when I'm like, I think I got it, you're like, yeah, you got it. I remember a year ago. Like, so just being here at the summit, what it bought me, what I'm like, damn. On the creative side, I'm like, oh, I'm ready to tell Casey about <laughs> what I want to do for Blaze and what we can offer on this new area um, for Web3 for people coming in. Like, everybody might not want to build their own community. They might want somebody to design that shit for them. I'm like, I would love to do that all day. Like, you just tell us what you need. We'll make the office. We'll make the space. Like, um, I never wanted my own business. Honestly, I did. I never wanted to be a CEO. I always wanted to work with a team. I'm a very team person. Um, I'm the person who, you know, I spent my money looking for you, sisterhood. I spent my money looking for you at USC, you know, so many times. So now that you created it, it is my honor to work under you, aside you, around you. Um, to build this like it's my it's my dream this is what i wanted to do since i was little and it, it saves me so much money because i don't have my full degree and i don't be like oh i need to go back and get it i'll be like oh, okay i'm gonna find a, a class and teach myself i'm gonna teach myself you know i'm gonna i'm gonna do it and so i'm here with you until until the end of times um i was thinking i was like damn in december i'm gonna have a baby <laughs> Cause my baby, uh, I show my, my little baby <laughs> My baby due in October, so she'll be here, and I'm I'm just so excited. You was talking, I'm like, girl, you didn't even tell you that your man is in Zanzibar, girl. You leaving out parts of the story. Don't do G like that. Do not do G like that. Like shit really came full circle for us, and you already know how I feel. Without you loving me. It helping me heal, I wouldn't have been able to receive all the blessings that's coming into my life. So I love you deep, 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 deep. And you know, we in this credit to great. <laughs> we are, sis. I love you too. So, 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 so much. Thank you, Raven. <sighs> 
All right, so good. All right, uh, so Mallory, I'm bringing you on the stage to share whatever you want to, right? Reflections um, before we close down the stage. Uh, it's the Mallory and then Jasmine and then Tier. Okay, hi, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. Um, I just wanted to say that this summit has really just opened my eyes to so many different things, um, to the things that I want to do, because there's so many things that I'm passionate about, but I can never find a way to um, put, you know, put a business aspect to it and be able to make money off of what I love. Like I, I was never, I never thought about it that way. So to hear the different types of ways I can do it and hear the, and just, and not just the business aspect, but my own lifestyle and how I can lead my life, just different things was just amazing. And it just, it really helped me open my eyes to see like what I want to do, because I was just talking to my mom earlier and I was just like, as much as a nine to five job, like that can work for other people, but I don't want, I don't, I don't want that for the rest of my life. I want to be able to, you know, not work 24 seven, wake up and still have money in my account. Like that's, that's what I want to do. And I, and I've been knowing that from a young age, but I didn't know how to push that forward. And so now that I know, I'm so excited for what what I can do. So I, I really appreciate this and I really love this. Good. I'm excited. For, oh, she she was like, Paris. Um, I'm excited for you, Sam Mallory. Uh you have okay, she <laughs> she listened like again. Um I'm excited for you, mama, and I am rooting you on. Uh, you got this, and if you ever need anything, you know, you got folks, sis, so you just let us know, okay? Yes, of course. I'm sorry. I didn't even know. I was trying to mute myself, and <laughs> it just went off. I was like, oh, my goodness, <laughs> but thank you so much. You're welcome, beautiful. Thank you. All right. Next is Jazz. Okay. Hey again. <laughs> um, I always um, am appreciative of like the spaces that you create in Blaze, but particularly the summit. I feel like the very first summit left me or met me in a place where I was ready to shift away from business altogether. Um, and this summit is meeting me in a place where I'm shifting closer to like what the dream really is. And, um, and so I'm just thankful that for whatever reason, God keeps aligning Blaze to, to be aligned with shifts that are important um, in that matter in business. Um, I think about um, just as you shared your story that you, I think this, this summit particularly, right, like speaks to the little girl in all of us, um, the little girl who had big dreams and wild dreams and who through life and people like was taught that like those dreams weren't practical, they weren't logical, they didn't matter, that they were not attainable. And I think that you call like that little girl to the front to sit down and like just listen and learn and like be poured into. Um, and I think for Black women, like as we enter these soft eras and like I'm all here for that, that like we need to, like the little girl in us needs to be able to like sit and appreciate like these spaces um, because I think it is monumental for like our healing but I also think that it is monumental for like all of the generations that come after us right that there's something about us healing the little girls in us that allow us to speak to actual little girls with such grace um and with wisdom and with love and affirm like who they are and who they want to be without abandon and so I appreciate this space because it makes me think very differently about the ways in which I affirm my students and the ways in which I affirm my niece and the ways in which I will affirm my daughter um, because I want them to believe like their wildest dreams are always possible and that like the thing that they want to do, the thing that they want to produce, like it is 
inside of them and no one has to give them permission to do that thing, to explore that thing, to find that thing that like by nature of them wanting it, like they have the permission. And so this is a space that always just like speaks to little girl in me and just invites her to like be present and to be a part and to have fun and to laugh and to like just be at peace. And so I appreciate you for creating a space that is soft and that is black as fuck and is communal um, because th this is these are sacred spaces for black women and we often don't have these. Um, and so it is like always sacred ground and sacred time when I get to spend time at the summit because I just know for myself and for so many other people why this matters more than I think you will ever truly understand. And so, you know, I got big love for you. We locked in for life, but thank you so much as always. Thank you, Jazz. And I just want to tell you that um, you are so worthy of all good things. You are worthy of all good things. You are worthy of ease. You are worthy of praise, you are worthy of support, the, the, the support that is going to rush your way now that you have figured out, <laughs> right, um, that you want to go on. So please accept it with open arms. Don't run from it um, in a personal, in, in the personal realm, um, on a business realm, on a professional realm. Do not run from it, even at times where it feels foreign to you. Um, you are so deserving of all the soft Beautiful love and good things that will come your way. Well, all right, y'all. Um, next up is Tierra. Hey guys, the one to hey. turn on for the last moment. Um, Casey, girl. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna do too much because I, I know how it feels to have your eyes all cried out and your cheeks hurting and stuff, but everything they said about you times 10. Um thank you. Thank you for allowing me to um and helping me to not only find my voice, but then giving me a space to use it and actually feel heard, right? So um I talk with purpose just from these last couple of days. I'm talking with purpose every time I leave because right now it's four. So when I'm leaving, it's four o'clock and I'm going and I'm walking out to the street. My posture is a little different be because you told me to take up this space. You told me to stop scooting over on that sidewalk. You told me to stop walking with my head down and put my shoulders up and I'm going to do that. And I'm going to do that. And I, and I want to thank you for that. I want to thank you for reassuring me. Even though I shouldn't have needed the reassurance, I want to thank you for reassuring me that I am enough, I've been enough, and I will continue to be enough, right? And in some moments, if I come off to be too much, then they are not enough. And it's not a me problem, it's a their problem. And I ain't adjusting shit. I want to thank you for letting me know that it's okay to to be unapologetically me and to live within the insecurities that I have, the flaws that I have and to, and to stay in them, but not let them take over me and to let them empower me. And I want to, <laughs> I, I, I just want to thank you because when I say I'm walking with purpose now, I'm talking with purpose now. And I know it's kind of crazy to think, cause it's like, girl, it's been a couple of days, but you would have had to see me before these couple of days. You would have to hear how I talk before these couple of days to know why I'm coming. I'm coming right now. And I thank you for that. I am unapologetically passionate. I am unapologetically committed and I am going to be unapologetically intentional with where I'm putting my energy. And that's because of blaze. Okay. So thank you. Thank y'all. Thank you for letting me share this space with every amazing speaker that was here. Y'all, y'all done done it now. <laughs> thank you. Man, Tierra, big founder energy is all I can say, Claude. Big founder energy. I believe everything you said, sis. Um, and yeah, Erica said y'all done done it now. She, she said it. You heard it. Um, Walk in that, but also, sis, forgive yourself for what you did not understand, okay? Forgive yourself for what you did not understand. It, there is no such thing as you should have already known. We are victims. Don't, don't, don't victim blame. We are victims to a system that works overtime to keep us bound, right? 
and, and working as the last rung, rung on the ladder and, and, and to be the ones that always show up for everybody else and have no energy to show up for ourselves, right? So forgive yourself for what you did not understand. Walk in this. <laughs> can't nobody take it away. This joy that you have, the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. Love you, Mama Sita. All right. So next we have Christina King. You are on the stage, Mama. Hello. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. My daughter's right next to me. Um, first, I just wanted to say that this summit really felt like a summation, just a lot of things coming together um, to work for the greater good. I wasn't necessarily sure what I was expecting. I didn't know what to expect. I had never heard of it. I had never seen it. I just saw someone clicked it on Instagram. And like I said in the comments, I just kind of ran away with it. What has transpired over the past five days has been, you know, <laughs> it renders differently how you move, how you think about yourself. Um, as a Black woman, we don't, we collectively know that there are others of us that are like us, that are like minded, but you would be, I would be remiss if I didn't say that there are other forces that work overtime to make you feel like there aren't, that we are a thousand black women away from another black woman like us. And that's just not true. And I've shared these videos and everything that I've learned. I have been texting and my tribe personally is very, very small. Uh, just me, my daughter and my sister, I lost a younger sister, but the five days I spent here made me feel like the embodiment of my sister's spirit. I've seen across feeds and booths and platforms and just all of the aspirations that these other women are moving forward with. And I just wanted to give everybody a round of applause. I've just been awed uh, from beginning to end. And you personally, seeing you be vulnerable, um, set such a precedent for myself as a reminder that we, we are so much more than our trauma and we can move beyond that. And not only can we move beyond that, we get to turn around and help someone else move beyond that. And um, it's just been an amazing, an amazing time. And I'm just, I know I'm no more appreciative than anyone else. I can tell from the accolades, but um, for all of us, um, I just think it's been an amazing thing. You've been like a beacon. And uh, I just wish everyone ultimate success in everything that they're doing. And thank you for this Blaze Virtual Summit. It's been very, very, very self-affirming. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, so, so much, Christina. Um, you are life. Uh, your words are so thorough. I, I know everybody has spoken, but something about you, the way you deliver, um, deliver your message is so pure um, and, and, and sweet. So um, that is such some very deep parts of my being. Um, I'm so happy to know you now. Love and light on the journey. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, y'all. All right, y'all, and we have one more, okay? Um, my girl, Nina Scott. All right, so first I'm going to speak to all of my beautiful Blaze sisters who I now um, claim, I love, I now support, I now love, honor, and am now a part of your family. Uh, I want you to know that watching this summit as an attendee um, versus a speaker from the first summit just put me in a completely different space. Um, I feel like a true big sister. And I want each and every one of you to know, um, if no one has told you in a while, but I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you for showing up. I'm proud of you for talking in the chat. I'm, I'm proud of you for DMing and making appointments and visiting booths um, because they told us that we aren't supposed to do this. And so Casey, thank you for um, opening up this space and allowing us to do this. Um, I want y'all to know that Casey is a woman of her word. Um, Casey, I actually found something 
uh, from the beginning of our relationship that I did not even know that I still had um, years ago. And so, ooh, that took me back. But I want y'all to know that Casey is a woman of her word. Um, and to echo Raven, um, it's some things Casey told me that I was supposed to do a long time ago that every time I know I'm going to be in her space, I'm like, oh, she going to ask me about it. And she never does. All she does is open her arms up and, and brings me in and gives me the biggest hug. Um, so know that you are in, a, in this space uh, for a purpose um, and don't allow it just to be a moment. You will get out of it what you put into it. And so I say that to each and every one of you who um, are here in the space, who are going to watch the replay, um, you will get out of it what you put into it. So, so continue to show up, continue to drop DMs, continue to ask questions, continue to ask for help. But the most important thing that I want you to do is to continue to take care of yourself, give yourself grace. Y'all will see and hear later that I'm, I'm one of, of, of the heart I'm one of the, the care for yourself first, no matter what the situation, no matter what they tell you, um, take care of yourself first. Now, Casey, I'm going to speak to you. Um, I'm not going to take up time to say um, how much I love you because you know that. Um, but what I want to take up time to say is thank you for giving us the space this time to give you your flowers because it's so, so, so important. Um, hearing it and reading it does two different things for you. And so I hope that you, um, as you, you know, decompress and as you walk away and kind of reflect on this particular summit, I hope that you find value in this moment and continue and continue and continue to give us um, opportunities to say thank you, to say thank you. Y'all can hear, I'm, I, I wish I could see this finger snap and these eyes that I'm giving these kids in the background. They wait till I'm on the call. But Casey, thank you for this moment. Thank you for being obedient. Thank you um, for flipping the table and for creating this space because it's necessary. You are necessary. You are so vital. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. <sighs> I love you too. So, so, so much. You see, I listened now. The last time, nine of us did me bad, y'all. I mean, literally, I wasn't paying any attention to the, the chat, y'all. Nine was writing in the comments. She was writing in the Q&A. Like, I know you're not about to close this out. She about to close it out. Y'all do something. And I'm over here in Tanzania. Well, I was in Tanzania last time. This time, I'm in Kenya. Um, but nobody can do anything because I'm literally... <laughs> Not at arm's reach, but uh, I listen, sis, um, and and I, I'm appreciative to you, number one, right? I'm appreciative to you, number one, for um, that's what I call feedback, right? Uh, for giving the feedback, for um, making sure I heard you, <laughs> and um, being part of this very sacred moment right here, um, because uh, it does mean so much, and y'all do pour into. Ooh, I'm trying to stop crying. Y'all do pour her into my spirit. Um, and, um, you know, even big shout out to, to cohort, cohort three and her friends. Because I feel like some other people were mixed in there too. But big shout out to cohort three and their friends who um, literally showed up for me when I really, really needed support at the top of this year when I moved um, pretty quickly from Cape Town, South Africa to um, Nairobi, Kenya. And um gave everything I had to continue pressing on with my dreams right um and I think I think this this piece is pretty important too right so when I left corporate I mean something that I mentioned to the story I invested eighty thousand dollars of my own cash in myself right I, I said bump what y'all talking about <laughs> like bump what y'all talking about I ain't even about to wait for no loans or no no's like I invested eighty thousand dollars into my business and then the rest I just uh, used to live off of, and, and I just believed in something, right? Something that I couldn't see. Um, and the first year was absolutely beautiful, right? Um, and 
um, at the top of the year, you know, every round goes higher. And I was, you know, making another transition, another costly transition, um, this time actually moving into an empty apartment, like literally setting up residency here. Um, and, and there were a lot of expenses involved in that. And cohort three went behind my back <laughs> and um, sent over some cash do my daddy. Uh, they coordinated uh, behind my back, but literally got my entire office set up um, in, in, in some very important things around in my living room. So, um, I mean, that's what this is about, y'all, right? Like, that's what this is about. Um, showing up for each other, um, being comfortable enough as well, right, to, to say, hey, I need this. Or, you know, that's one thing we do in the, in the Blazers. It's intensive every week we share our sweets and our showers. And they took my sour and did something with it without my permission, right? And that's a beautiful thing, right? Showing up without permission. So um, if y'all can take anything from who Nina is, right? And the way that she shows up, I think it is that because I absolutely admire that about her. All right, sis. Thank you so much. I was obedient. <laughs> um, all right, y'all. So that is it. Um, this was absolutely amazing. Absolutely incredible. I appreciate every single one of you who have poured into this summit from um, the 40 businesses that we collaborated with um, for speaker sessions to the sponsors who, who gave generously um, to, to cape very, very hard for Black women. Um, I thank Raven again for being my production assistant who I can always depend on. And now she has productized this. I can't wait to hear her ideas. <laughs> um, I, I, I thank the attendees you all are literally the spirit of the summits right what you do in the chat the emojis um that you place on the screen um the the, the dms that you send um real time the way that you show up in networking um the way that you start coming in and say what's up biz besties i mean you say it with your chest right because you mean it and that changes people's lives right so i apply all of you for um being part of the fabric Right, for being part of the fabric of what makes this work. And I got to shout out my boo, y'all. <laughs> um, people don't realize this, uh, but I actually hired about four different people in 2021, no shade, right, uh, to, to really figure out. And I'm very particular about the vision that I have. My visions are already... I mean, my visions are always things that are beyond what people can see, right? Beyond, beyond what, people, what, what, what exists. And I hired about four different people in 2021 to get our social stuff um, right and, and literally have a, a, a vibe, a voice, a, a, a tone, a culture to it. And yeah, it just kept falling flat, right? People just didn't get it or they're like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like how many times a day? Like what's the, you know, whatever. And then um, in October, <laughs> in October, I looked at my boo. Now, my boo, y'all, I met him in Zanzibar. Raven was mad. I didn't say that. Uh, but yeah, in my trip, solo trip to Zanzibar, when I quit my job, that's when I, when I met him. Literally, uh, God had the two of us meet, literally, right? Like, we have very similar journeys, we have very similar personalities. Um, my soul knew him when I saw him, right? And his soul knew me when he saw me. I had... I hadn't been in a relationship for five years since my marriage because I refused to. I didn't trust myself enough to pick a partner, right? Um, yeah. But anyway, in October, I said to my boo, you know, just desperate. <laughs> boo, you know, can you be, can you, can you manage this right here, right? And this man is a freaking genius, y'all. He... <laughs> He's a genius. The way that he put out content and studied the audience, he literally studied the audience. And um, when he got the when he got the the audience, um, it was about 230 folks, right, um, on a single platform. We hadn't even done all the other things, right. And then he started nurturing, right, and putting out stuff and looking at the data, et cetera. And then he figured out, you know, it's some about black. It's some about black celebrity speaking like the auntie vibes the grandmama vibes and then like for me it started clicking like oh my gosh like like those are our heroes like we like we like it's not business behemoths right because they don't exist like those are so he you know he started putting out more of that and then the people started coming right and then literally i think it was probably at the top of february right we've gone from two, 200 to about um 
to about like 1,000 maybe. And that was cute, right? That was better than anybody else had done this far. And then he started he started flipping the content, the snippets from these, these black women to black and white, right? And something about that hit, y'all. Something about that hit, right? Literally, and he and I, I'm not having to do anything, right? Um, and whole suite started emailing us and saying, you are literally the top 100%, like you're doing better than 100% of business on social media. I was showing on my stories a lot, like every single week they would send us that, right? Um, and then, so March 27th hits, y'all, and it's literally the same day I started marketing behind the scenes for the summit because that strategy too. I literally only market for two weeks <laughs> because I want everybody to be excited and it works, right? Thousands of people came. But anyway, the point is, y'all, on March, on May the 20th, seven we had 1375 followers okay it's mostly many of y'all know this in the last two weeks now three almost three we have 15,000 because like 15 not y'all can scroll the people these are black women i mean they're commenting like hundreds like these are not bots but because he studied like caping hard for black women like that's the energy man that is the energy he studied us Right. He studied the nuances. He studied the comments. He said, I mean, he studied us and he and he and he gave what we wanted. This is my boo, y'all. <laughs> and then and then I said, OK, right, I'm not a marketer, but I said, OK, I'm going to take what you did. And I'm going to put that in the ads. A lot of y'all in y'all last time I just saw an Instagram comment. You don't know how it came to you. I said, I'm going to take what he did and I'm going to put it in the ads. And I told the ads what my boo G figured out that black women want. I literally, and it had nothing to do with business. Okay. Let me tell you, it had nothing to do with business. But I said, let me try this. <laughs> and as soon as I started running the ads, it was hundreds of people registering every single day. And then Facebook sent notifications that we were, some of y'all saw this on my story, of, we are above average in engagement, above average in conversions, and above average in the quality of the content. So verify your stuff. Uh, a very long-winded way, I didn't mean to talk that much about my boo, but a very long-winded way of saying thanks to that man. I love that man. <laughs> um, and um, it, I think, underscores, right, the importance of vulnerability, the importance of asking for help and letting somebody show you what they're willing to do. Because, yeah, uh, he, 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 he tanned it up, y'all. He tanned it up. So uh, love and light to y'all. Uh, baby, they saying you cold and all kind of beautiful things. <laughs> um, all right, ladies. Um, I appreciate you. I, I wish you well on your journey, right? This is officially the end. Um, make sure that anytime you want to see a replay, uh, you go to blazevirtualsummit.com. Blazevirtualsummit.com. You will be able to come in here and watch the replay. Will your cousins be able to come in here if they have not registered? No. So you're going to have to share your screen or something, sis, okay? Um, but they can't. So anybody that has registered up until this very second can come in and watch the replay. Just come to blazevirtualsummit.com and you will be able to get inside. Um, but anybody that has not registered thus far, you can't. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you in December. All right. Love and light, y'all. Take care of yourselves and each other. Bye.